A very good morning, everyone. Before we start with our session, I request everyone to turn on the cameras and stay on mute. I welcome you all to the Start Hub Journey from Innovations to Entrepreneurs in Herbals, organized by Association of Pharmaceutical Research, APR, and D.Y. Patel, deemed to be University School of Pharmacy, Navi Mumbai. Before we start with our session, I request everyone to turn on the cameras and stay on mute. I welcome you all to the Start Hub Journey from Innovations to Entrepreneurs in Herbals, organized by Association of Pharmaceutical Research, APR, and D.Y. Patel, deemed to be University School of Pharmacy, Navi Mumbai. Before we start with our session, I request everyone to turn on the cameras and stay on mute. I welcome you all to the Start Hub Journey from Innovations to Entrepreneurs in Herbals, organized by Association of Pharmaceutical Research, APR, and D.Y. Patel, deemed to be University School of Pharmacy, Navi Mumbai. Before we start with our session, I request everyone to turn on the cameras and stay on mute. I welcome you all to the Start Hub, Journey from Innovations to Entrepreneurs in Herbals, organized by Association of Pharmaceutical Research, APR, University School of Pharmacy, Navi I think, uh, hello, am I audible? The speaker is not audible actually. 
If someone can confirm, please. Yes, sir. Now you are audible. No, but the speaker is not audible. I mean to say, who uh, the anchor who started? Yes, sir. The host. Uh, actually, it is some uh, echo is happening, so they are rejoining again. Just two minutes. Acha. Okay. We are sorry for the inconvenience. Good morning, so much, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. Thank uh, you. So good morning, much. sir. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, sir. We have uh, an inspection going on for the you know, you know uh, NBA. Oh, NBA from today? Yeah, in fact, uh, they are about to come. Anyway, no issue. Yeah. We'll, we'll free you at the earliest. Sir. Make you free. Sure, sure. No issue, sir. Yeah, Mr. Rudra, what's the problem? Shall we start? What is the issue? I don't know. My team is checking. Wait, let's wait. Yeah. So this this inspection is for a, a B farm program or master's program, sir? No, B farm B farm program. I thought ICT is beyond the purview of MB and all those things. No, nowadays actually uh, these are all compulsory thing. If you want to get a grant actually from any government agency, these are all essential things now. True. true. We get only only uh, advantages we get for the little longer period. Uh, uh, may I request host if uh, things are not being resolved? Let us start. I will start with my. Within five minutes, we are going to start it, sir. One five minutes, you want? Go to the next topic. 
Most kindly mute everyone. Uh, we are so sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, let's start with our session. Uh, once again, very good morning, all. I welcome you all to the Start Hub journey from innovation and entrepreneurs in herbals, organized by Association of Pharmaceutical Research, APR, and D.Y. Patel, Demet to be University School of Pharmacy, Navi, Mumbai. Association of Pharmaceutical Research is one of the world's leading professional associations Association of Pharmaceuticals and Life Science Professionals Caring for People. APR is a non-profitable professional association meant for research and development in the field of pharmaceutical science and technology. APR is an international forum for researchers, academicians, doctors, and practitioners for sharing knowledge and innovation in the field of pharmaceutical sciences and technology. APR aims to bring together worldwide researchers and professionals, encourage intellectuals development and providing opportunities for networking and collaboration. APR meets with its objectives through academic networking, meetings, conferences, projects, research publications, academic awards and scholarships. APR strives to enrich from its diverse group of advisory members APR connects pharmaceutical professionals, researchers, exchange global innovations, and access bridge between researchers and academicians by organizing international conferences, world conferences, faculty development programs, international workshops, seminars, guest lectures, short-term training programs, providing memberships, establishing chapters, faculty exchange programs, implant training, and much more. Biolix Wild World is a not Profit professional association which prominent promotes research and development. We at BioLeaks have brought a revolution in the field of worldwide conferences. BioLeaks worldwide conferences bring together professional wizards and leaders who have explored all the avenues to reinforce the field of life sciences and medical technologies. BioLeaks Worldwide conduct events worldwide, which helps in enhancing the skill set of people from diverse industries and also form a common platform for eminent personalities, physicians, researchers, doctors, and academicians, professional business figures, and much more. BioLeaks Conference encourages better comprehension about improvements and progressions over the world through worldwide conferences with the speed of science and technology. We work with our motto of creating a better tomorrow by organizing conferences and creating a network which will help grow a better tomorrow with the help of advanced technology and achieve sustainable development. DV Patel, deemed to be University School of Pharmacy, looks forward to establishing itself as the center of quality education and industry-oriented training in the field of pharmaceutical sciences. As the Indian pharmaceutical market is growing day by day, and India has been providing to the world's leader in various segments of pharmaceutical industry, D.Y. Patel University School of Pharmacy, looking forward to establish ourselves as a center for industry academia collaboration. D.Y. Patel University facilities 
human resource and ethics are fully aimed at 360 degree development of students. Devai Patel University wish to establish the School of Pharmacy as the epicenter of knowledge and human values. Thus, students come, coming out of this institution would be known as the best pharma professionals with high emotional quotient. Innovations being known as best pharma professionals with the high buzz world around, DY Patel University intend to take focused efforts to promote and nurture a culture of innovations among the budding pharmacists so that they can play an active role in improvisation of healthcare arena of nation. DV Patel's university firmly believe that success of our students is our success, and hence we are committed and passionate to provide the best of best within us and ensure we contribute positively to human resource of the nation. Association of Pharmaceutical Research, APR, and Devi Patel, Dimitubi University School of Pharmacy, Navi Mumbai, organizes the Start Hub journey from innovation to entrepreneurs in herbals, which is scheduled to be on 14th and 15th October 2022 in the live on Zoom. Start Hub, a journey from innovations to entrepreneurs in herbals, aims to bring together leading academic scientists, researchers, and research scholars to exchange and stay, share their expertise and research results on aspects of medical and nature products. It also provides a premium interdisciplinary platform for researchers, practitioners, and educators to present and discuss the most recent innovations, trends, and concerns, as well as practical challenges encountered and solutions adopted in the field of natural medicine. This conference is a multidisciplinary program with broad participation with members from around the globe focused on learning about pharmaceutical sciences, research methodologies, formulations, manufacturing, and its advances. We invite all the speakers and delegates from all over the world to attend this conference. It creates a perfect podium for global networking and it brings together renowned speakers and scientists across the globe to most exciting and memorable scientific event filled with informative and interactive sessions, international workshops, world-class international exhibitions and poster presentations. Wig Health Products. Wig Health Products are pleased to introduce themselves as a pioneer in manufacturing of pure vegetarian sweet taste jellies, which are soft and easily chewable for all age groups with sugar, as well as sugar-free, depending upon choice of the valuable clients with the motto, eat medicine with taste and enjoy. Dava Kalo Kel Kel Me. Wig products. Recent research on stevia proves that it is very useful in treatment of varial viral diseases. Wig products are FSAI certified small scale industry and currently working with many pharmaceutical companies. With most of the products are plant based and natural. Wig products have come with a formula in 100% natural herbal for increasing immunity in the body to fight against virus. All the products are included with the ingredients like pectin, sucrose, stevia, glucose, stevia, gel, citric acid, natural flavors, and food colors. They are fortified with multivitamin herbs, chavanprash, curcumin, habla, highly enriched with vitamin C. Big products works as third-party manufacturers for big pharma companies and can make any products in jellies as per customer's requirement. The benefits of Wig Healthy Gummies improves digestion, acts as immune boosters, very nutritious and helps in weight management, rich in antioxidants, minerals and DHA. They are also a source of multivitamins which provides energy and improves skin, hair and nail health. Now I would like to welcome all our honorable dignitaries. Chief Patron of our conference, Dr. D.Y. Patel, Senior Vice President, Founder, D.Y. Patel deemed to be University, India. Our Patron of our conference, Dr. Vijay D. Patel, Chancellor, D.Y. Patel deemed to be University, India. Conference Chairperson, Dr. C.S. Thamai, Chancellor, D.Y. Patel deemed to be University, India. 
our conference convener, Dr. Rakesh Somani, Dean of D.Y. Patil, Demet Tobi University, School of Pharmacy, India. Our conference secretary, Dr. Shafali Thakar, Assistant Professor, D.Y. Patil, Demet Tobi University, School of Pharmacy, India. And our founder and CEO, Mr. Rudrabanu Satpati, Technorate Groups and APR India. And eminent keynote speakers, Dr. K.S. Ladda, Professor from Institute of Chemical Technology, Matunga, Mumbai, India. Dr. Jobna Moda, Deputy Director from Institute of Teaching and Research in Ayurveda, ITRA, India. Dr. Sandeep Arora, Professor and Director from MIT Institute of Pharmacy, MIT University, India. Dr. M.C. Sabu, Professor and Principal from yeah. Tambika College of Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research, yeah. Kerala, India. Dr. Lee Singovei, Association Associate Professor from University, Malaysia, Kalantan, Janti Campus, Malaysia. M.S. Mamta Vasin, Director and CEO from Mekoksha Ayurveda Wellness and Retreats, Gargan, Haryana, India. And session chairs, Dr. Rokia Sultana, Professor and HOD, Department of Pharmacogency, Yanayappa Pharmacy College and Research Center, Bangalore. Dr. Giriraj T. Kulkarni, Professor and Principal, Department of Pharmaceutics, Gokaraju Rangaraju College of Pharmacy, Hyderabad, India. And Professor Jagannath Rao, Pro Chancellor, KL Demet to be University, Vignan. Uh, Vijayawada, Andhra Pradesh, Distinguished Professor, National Science System, INDI, CASAT, ATPI, Republica, Panama, and DK, uh, Dr. K. Lakshmi, Professor and Dean, Chetinad School of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Chetinad Academy of Research and Education, India, Dr. Asin Sriharsha, Principal and Professor and Research Director, Hillside College of Pharmacy, and Research Center, India. Dr. A. Kishore Babu, Lecturer, School of Pharmacy, KBJ University, College, Malaysia. Dr. Sailendra Gaurav, Professor, Goa College of Pharmacy, Goa University, India. Dr. Atrei Ghosh, Sister Nivedita University, India. For joining us even during the situation and imparting their expertise with us, I would also take this opportunity to welcome all our presenters across the globe who have shared their valuable time in enlightening us with their latest research studies. I would also like to welcome all the attendees in joining us today. Uh, once again, I welcome you all to this international conference, Start Hub. Now, I call upon Dr. Rakesh Somani, Principal of D.Y. Patil, Demet Tobi University, School of Pharmacy, Navi, Mumbai, India, to give the welcome message. Sir, please. Uh, good morning and Namaskar to everyone present on this platform today. Sarve Sukira Santu, Sarve Santu Niramayaha, Sarve Badrani Pashantu, Makashid, Dukkha Bhag Bhavet. That is how our entire uh, Indian system of knowledge, Indian system of medicine aims for. And I think today's conference, the startup, also aims for the multidisciplinary approach to be developed for the, uh, for the health of each and everyone. Let me welcome on behalf of G.Y. Patil University School of Pharmacy in Navi Mumbai, all our keynote speakers, including Dr. K.S. Ladda, Dr. Moda, Dr. Arora, Dr. Sabu, Dr. Vai, and Dr. Vasan. I also welcome all our session chairs. And I'm sure, most importantly, the participants who are going to be benefited out of this uh, particular deliberations happening today and tomorrow. I'm really thankful to APR and Mr. Rudra Satpati and his entire team for collaborating with G.Y. Patel University School of Pharmacy and organizing such an excellent uh, conference. Uh, my dear fellow colleagues, you will agree with me that the, uh, the theme of the conference or the title of the conference mentions about journey of 
uh, journey from innovation to entrepreneurship is herbal. We have been doing lot of innovations, but whether those innovations are converted into entrepreneurial mindset or entrepreneur successful entrepreneurship or not, that is a question which I am put forwarding today. And I'm sure our keynote speakers our and other dignitaries will address that issue. Once again, on behalf of the entire team and my coordinator, uh, Mr. Shefali Thakkar, I welcome the entire uh, uh, the gathering over here, the scholars over, uh, on this particular platform. I look forward to have such kind of deliberations in future too, particularly on the physical mode in years to come. Thank you so much once again for giving us an opportunity to host this particular event. Thank you. Over to you, please. Thank you, sir. Now, I call upon Mr. Rudrabanu Satpati, founder and CEO, Technorate Group and APR India, to give the inaugural message. Very good morning, everyone. Esteemed dignitaries, respected speakers, inventors, sir, I request to unmute yourself. Yeah, Mr. Rudra, you are mute. Yeah, please. Yeah, I'm really sorry. Esteemed dignitaries, my most respected, our thought provoking speakers, inventors, innovators, and startup entrepreneurs, office bearers from both these esteemed organizations and counterpart association for pharmaceutical research organization and DY Patil University School of Pharmacy, organizing committee members. and all delegates attending this conference from nook and corner of the world and the nation. My dear friends, today, 14th October is World Standard Day, where the entire globe is focusing on standardization of products and creating enormous impact in economy of world. So at this point of time today, from Association for Pharmaceutical Research and DOI Patil School of Pharmacy, when we are streaming Start Herb conference that has been focusing on naturopathy, Siddha, homeopathy, Unani, Ayurveda, and many more aspects of alternative medicines, we feel really privileged and determined to address the audience today with opportunities of globalizing their ideas and innovations. Whereas few chantings from Charaka Samhita is reverberating in my mind. Dirgam Jibite Manavicham Bharat Dwaja Upamagata. Our nation has been a leader in scientific achievements over eras and histories. In pharmaceutical world market, our country ranks third in volume and 14th in value. We have more than 3,000 plus registered enterprises and companies and over 10,500 plus manufacturing units. And we are successfully contributing more than 5.85 billion US dollars of products, out of which 20% of generic medicines are being produced. In production of the generic medicine, we rank 12th in position of the world. And we have a very wide market segment as well, out of which 70% of 1.11 billion population of India are dependent on non-allopathic medicine. Thus, this creates a very vibrant market for potential buyers and manufacturers of herbal medicines in our country. This is the purpose World Health Organization in collaboration with Government of India established global center of traditional medicine. 
at this point of time, being very responsible organization, we both organization jointly decided to organize the conference that would create the opportunity of entrepreneurship and startup scopes for young researchers, students, and everyone working in field of Yunani and Ayurveda as well as herbal medicine. Because entrepreneurship is the solution for tomorrow. And entrepreneurship is, has been also included in the accreditation parameters of different government accredited agencies. And it is a big fact of concern that not a single university of India is within top 100 universities of QR ranking. So we have started planning our proposals for that. We are connecting with universities already since last over three years and four years. We have been supporting institutions to groom them, to understand them, to be uh, strong in uh, terms of uh, knowledge, some in terms of international networking, innovations, quality of education, faculties, through our FDP programs, through our skill development activities we have been doing. Moreover, we are trying to focus now towards QR ranking part because it is extremely important to uh, contribute to universities and education institutions and pharmaceutical colleges, particularly in India, so that they come up with better additions of two important factors. One is globalization, what we call internationalization. And another thing is innovation. So these two aspects has to be included along with the accreditation guidelines we follow for the NAC and NBA so that we can be competitive in international market and come up within top 100 universities. And we do have a grand potential also. And we are the uh, second largest populated and the largest democracy. So I don't think it is definitely a problematic thing. And, and we need to rigorously work about it and we need to address this matter as well. Traditional medicine, if it comes into Indian Drugs Act, I personally believe it will definitely enhance the national GDP. Expertise for trails and human resource buyers capacity is so wide that the productivity being a solution towards the requirement of the world needs in traditional medicines could be resolved by the nation. And we could be one of the largest exporter in that also. And we do exist in the current scenario also. To, comp to be competitive in global market, we believe our young researchers, entrepreneurs need to come forward. Students should come forward. I'm really glad to see we received more than 245 abstracts and we have shortlisted, I think 180 plus abstracts we have shortlisted. And there are of wonderful qualities, a lot of innovations and thoughts were there. We have some participations from international also abroad as well. Continuously, Asofarm Research Foundation is trying to connect with everyone and make them connected with each other so that a proper networking of individuals and organizations happens. We are continuously connecting with institutions and universities and upscaling them, upgrading them to global scale through our schemes and policies of capacity building because capacity building is a very important factor. We have been connecting universities with universities because another vision says if institutions and universities get connected in a single platform and the requirement needs and ideas could be inculcated that will definitely make wonders and will move the world towards sustainable development goal, SDG. We are also rapidly connecting institutions with industries. And I do believe there needs an implementation part in that. And there do exist a gap. When we think of gap, we frame our new vocabulary. Global Association Program. 
where industries, universities, research centers, associations connect with each other with a particular platform that integrates ideas on basis of special interest group SIGs, or we call them purpose-driven community. We are scaling and planning to move our networks, move our communities to particular directions, particular social interest group, professional interest group, developmental group that is incentric and directed towards a particular problem of world that could be challenged on result through the solution of science. Over the period, organizing this type of conference, we have been doing since last nine years and within another year we'll be completing a decade. We are committed towards community to bring best scientific content, ideas, innovations, irrespective of being developed state or developed countries, irrespective of developed institutions or developing institutions, ideas should be evaluated in a proper platform. So we always try to create a platform where people come up with ideas and share. Our next responsibility is towards moving for implementation and capitalizations of idea. My research and development team is working on it to create a platform that will come up with the alternative and next solutions after the post presentations and the conferences. We have world-class speakers with us, a lot of learning opportunities. We have wonderful sessions coming ahead. We have great contents coming in these two days. I believe this conference will be a worthwhile and valuable event for all of us to learn, leap and network. I wish everyone a best wishes for this conference and I hope our team of both these renowned institutions will meet your expectations and make this conference worth of attending in those, days, in those two days. Wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Now, next, I would like to welcome our keynote speakers of today. Now, I would like to welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. K.S. Ladda, Professor, Institute of Chemical Technology, Matunga, Mumbai, India, to deliver his keynote presentation. Sir, please. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I hope I'm audible and uh, steady. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very All well. right. Thank you very much. Uh, I welcome all of you for the start of conference and uh, journey from innovation to entrepreneurs uh, in Herbalis. Now, the theme is quite nice, actually, very apt, actually, for the today's circumstances. And uh, as per the theme, I will be taking you to the various sectors where there is a scope actually for uh, research development and of course then it will lead to the further uh, you know, uh, coming out with the entrepreneurship opportunities. So I will take you to some of these uh, areas where I believe there is some scope actually to work in the herbals and uh, which will definitely have some commercial uh, opportunities in those sectors. Let me just begin with uh, herbals and the botanicals. Since this conference is mainly been confined to the pharma, normally we have uh, this thinking in the mind that uh, herbals are extensively being used only in the pharma sector or maybe in the nutraceutical sector. But it is not so. There are various other sectors where the herbal products are being used, whether it is, I mean, uh, perfume, lubricant, flavor industry, uh, uh, spirits tanning or the leather industry, biofertilizer, pesticides. So these are the various sectors where the herbals are being used. And a lot of people uh, are working in that direction. And I think uh, there, is a, there is a scope actually where the pharmacy graduates who are pursuing, they also need to look 
besides supports you know, I mean medicine and and uh, and nutraceutical uh, in the process there are many challenges but the challenges also open up a lot of opportunities if you look at the sector there are challenges when it comes to agro technology because still it has been confined actually to the to the traditional farmers there are not many inputs which are going on of course there are few things which has materialized like sincona has been materialized actually wherein the yield has been increased actually of the of the alkaloid, alkaloid because of the scientific input in that because otherwise normally the pharma people do not undergo actually or undertake this kind of work uh, some of the government agencies those are specifically instituted for that. They are undertaking this kind of work. But yes, there is a scope actually to get into that. Raw material analysis, QC of the raw material, the formulation remains a big question mark. Though we have many pharmacopoeia or the many books actually of the monograph, but still, uh, I don't think it is mandatory at this moment. And neither it has been uh, you know, well practiced by the agency or by the by the companies also. And with the result, many times it face problems. Extraction with cleanup technology, yes, over a period of time, we have improved a lot in the terms of the extraction. What we had once upon a time, 5% sinusite, today we are able to offer 95% sinusite. So when it comes to extraction and cleanup technology, we have certainly made many progress, but yes, it needs further, uh, because out of almost 35 to 40 alkaloids from the Ralphia, only one or two became actually a reality uh, as a medicine. So I still believe actually there are many scope uh, many alkaloids which are present in that they will have a, a scope of commercialization phytochemicals remains uh, a major uh, attraction actually for the pharma graduates or the postgraduate because uh, farmers phytochemicals are the one which provides a lot of opportunities isolating new needs definitely in fact uh, this is something which is not uh, happening to a great extent in the academic though some of the uh, government agency which are instituted for the research they are undertaking this but by and large, we have not made much uh, impact actually in this particular field, which provides a lot of opportunities. Pharmacology and clinical studies, well, industry is under, undertaking some amount of uh, clinical studies, but uh, again, that is mainly to support their product rather than uh, very uh, wholeheartedly uh, or the, I'll put it actually very robust uh, clinical studies. Modern development of the modern dosage form is another sector wherein actually the generation has changed a lot from traditional system to the modern system. And uh, to keep pace with the time, I think the traditional system has to understand that uh, the newer generation will not like the old traditional product. You need to uh, convert them into the modern dosage form to make them more attractive. Then only the usage will increase. These are some of the uh, challenges as well as the opportunities. I will just take you through some of this. Uh, phytochemicals, as I told you, remains actually the major uh, attraction. And uh, these are the various terms by which the phytochemicals are known. When we talk about the phytochemicals, let me just give you some examples which have been used in the different sectors. So these are some of the drugs, whether it is atropine, digoxin, reserpine. These are the drugs which have been already been obtained from the plant and they are still used actually. Even today, they are continuing to be used like taxol, uh, digoxin, hydroposide, morphine sulfate injection. They are still continuing to be used. Some of the phytochemicals are also been used actually uh, as a functional food because uh, as on today, their exact function has not been able to be established with a, a well-designed scientific model. And with the, with the result, actually, they remain uh, into the pharmacy, I mean, a phytochemical as a, as a functional food or, or as a nutraceutical product, which includes curcuminite, where the largest exporter. Elagic acid from the pomegranate remains another important uh, constituents. Of course, what is going on in the market is more... 40% rather than the pure phytochemical. Uh, for scoring, 5 to 10% has become very popular to promote actually a uh, body lean mass or as an anti obesity agent. Piperin, by and large, has been used actually uh, as a as a improvement in the bioavailability of the otherwise poorly bioavailable drug. So, isoflavone has advantage that uh, they are not steroids, but they have a histogenic activity. So though they are having a little lesser estrogenic activity, but definitely they are much more preferred as compared to the estradiol, which is having the steroid and which obviously suffers with its uh, own uh, side effect. So these are some of the phytochemicals which are used in the functional food. Phytochemicals in the food sector, like anato, amul butter is colored actually with anato, lycopene is extensively used uh, as a, as a uh, you know, uh, vitamin A precursor. Vanilla is perhaps the most widely used flavor in the ice cream industry today. Gallic acid and the gallets are the ones which are once again obtained from the plant are used as an antioxidant in the fat material. 
stevia or glycosyl became very popular with the food products, especially the non-sugar one, uh, direct, I mean, uh, directed to diabetic people. Thumatin is another sweetener which is obtained from Thumatococcus daniel, is, uh, is a constituent, it is a protein sweetener, and it is almost 2,000 times more sweeter than sugar. Glycerin, another important constituent which is obtained from the glycerin glabra, became actually a sweetener, that is a MAC, monomalum glycerin. And another derivative of the glycerin is uh, uh, carbinoxolone, which has become actually an API as an antacid. So these are some of the constituents from the herbals which are used as a food, is a, in a food sector. Now, phytochemicals in other sector other than food, medicine, and the nutraceutical, which includes lawson as a hair dye. Hena is the one which is popularly being used uh, as an hair dye. Indigo, it is used actually for a denim, coloring of the denim. Limonin, which is obtained from the citrus fruit, is used actually as a cleaning agent or the clearing agent actually, especially for the degreasing purpose. Menthol obtained from the menthol pipeta remains the more, world's most favorite coolant. Uh, Karanjin has been used actually, especially in India and the Europe, as an uh, pesticide, uh, agricultural pesticide or the biopesticide. Quinine, we have learned actually it is having the antimalarial uh, action, but uh, currently it is extensively been used actually as a as a flavoring agent and even imparting bitter taste to a liquor. Ursulic acid, which is a triterpenoid, has been used actually in the cosmetic industry because of its uh, vaccine nature, which is emollient as well as protectant. So these are some of the phytochemicals used in the other sector than medicine, nutraceutical, and uh, pharmaceutical. Let me just take you through some of the opportunities since it is uh, the theme of the of the conference is uh, innovation and of course thereafter leading to the entrepreneurship. So phytochemical derivative of the synthetic analogs. And if you see the uh, photograph actually on the slide, this is how the artemisinin, which is obtained from the artemisia annua, has certain problem associated with it that it is neither lipophilic nor hydrophilic. And yes, there is a need to convert them actually in order to improve the viability or, or the onset of the action that need to be converted into either lipophilic or the hydrophilic. And the artemether is one such compound which has become derivatized actually from the natural artemisinin and that has become more lipophilic and with the result it has improved the onset of the action. Likewise, some other kind material like uh, today, most of the anti-diabetic drug actually includes, I mean, major anti-diabetic drug includes metformin, phenformin, the other major drug. And if you look at uh, them, the humble background of them lies actually in the plant called Galiga officinalis, that is actually a, a goat's root, where it was found actually it contains galigain, and galigain was found to be having the hypo, I mean, hypoglycemic activity. And then, of course, from the galigain, actually, today we have a, a bigonide, and then, of course, the metformin is an N dimethyl bigonide, and of course, phenethyl. Uh, bigonide is a fenformin and butyl bigonide is a butformin. So these are all the derivatives which have been obtained actually by looking at the structure of the galigain and the synthalin. These are the constituents which are present in, in goat's rule, that is galigoxysinalis. Another plant, uh, morphine. And morphine is a molecule which is found to be present in the opium, that is a latex of papaverosominiferum. And it is having an allergic activity, but at the same time it is having the problem that it is opiate. And with the result, it is restricted drug. Now, by looking at the morphine structure, scientists have designed actually a fentanyl. If you look at the morphine uh, uh, analgesic activity, let's say it is 1x, then the fentanyl, which has been semi synthesized, sorry, uh, I mean the synthetic analogs, is having almost 100 times more potent than the morphine. So, this is what the derivatives as well as the synthetic analogs can create actually the, the drug, super drug actually out of natural structure. So, these are the uh, synthetic analog which are produced actually of the natural, uh, naturally occurring molecule. Another important example is uh, diogenin. So diogenin to 16 DPA, that is uh, 16 DPA to pregnant acetate. Diogenin is present in the form of a glycoside in the diasporia species, which is converted to a diogenin and then of course 16 DPA, that is uh, 16 DPA to pregnant acetate. And that becomes the precursor for the semi-synthetic analogs, which includes pitamethasone, dexamethasone, which are extensively being used as an anti-inflammatory uh, corticosteroids in the market. So these are some of the uh, derivatives and the synthetic analogs from the natural molecules which are in use. Let me just focus on the other area which includes extraction and isolation of the herbals. Uh, another area, I'll just take a couple of studies. Lawson or the Hena is the most widely used hair dye. And recently, uh, in fact, Godrej approached to me, actually they want 
uh, improved content of the lawson in their extract and uh, lawson is a major type which is present in the henna and which is present in the form of the glycoside to the extent of around 0.5 to 1, 1, 1 to 1.5 percent and uh, we are able to develop a method actually by which we will we were able to appreciate the content to 20 percent and definitely when you appreciate the content it saves actually the application time which is actually a major advantage in the development of the product so these are the other areas wherein actually the extraction and uh, fortification of the extract can lead to the the important commercialization uh, of the product now the another case study wherein actually uh, the barbell and all of us know what is the barbell line which is actually a glycoside of uh, anthracnose glycoside which is present in the aloe and which is having the purgative action however uh, the derivative which has been prepared like this is the barbell line barbell line is converted to aloe by the oxidative hydrolysis and thereafter it is converted to a rind the ch2h group of the barbell i mean aloe is converted by the oxidation to the rind and rind one end dihydroxy is by converted to a diacetyl rind by the acetylation and then it gets converted to a compound called diacetyl and diacetyl is having anti arthritic action perhaps this is the only compound which has been included as as a anti arthritic in ip or official uh, pharmacopias so this is the i mean very unusual example it where this starting is is having purgative four action four different forms uh, the starting material is having actually the purgative action whereas the modified compound is having altogether different action so these are some of the comma uh, 82 82 okay um I'm sorry for that. Herbal drug analysis is another area wherein actually, as I told you, uh, herbal drug analysis is just a very difficult uh, part of it because of the each herb contains a uh, number of ingredients and in most of the formulation, you will find them being present actually in a very small concentration and that creates the problem of the herbal drug analysis. Number one, the complexity and second, the constituent which is present actually in a very low quantity. Unlike if you look at the allopathic drug, paracetamol tablet, the tablet contains 500 milligrams of paracetamol, so that becomes much more easier. But if you take any cup syrup containing, let's say, around 20 or the 50 milligrams of the uh, wasaka herb, to find content of the vasicin in the in the in the syrup, it becomes very very difficult and challenging. But yes, this challenge needs to be overcome, and uh, we need to address the question actually from the formulation, of course, raw material as as well as formulation, what to analyze and how to analyze. Um, I'm just trying to give you an example of a, one particular product. This is a cup syrup which is picked up from the market. I have picked up the four cup syrup and I listed as per the label claimed ingredient. And it has been observed that only four drugs are the ones which are present uh, in all formulation. Like Kantakari, Suranam, Jantukarpam, then we have a Tulsi, or Subham Sanctum, uh, Pasaka or the Vasa, Adha Pravesika, and uh, Yashtimadu, that is Gisaita Glebra or Likarais. Now, the question of what to analyze and how to analyze. So, what to analyze, ideally speaking, all the ingredients which are made on the label claim should be analyzed. However, practically it is difficult. So, on priority basis, what we should analyze is the one which is found to be therapeutically active. And from this uh, statistical data, if you look at actually the four drugs which are common, that means everybody thought that these are four drugs which are must when you make cup syrup, Ayurvedic cup syrup. So on priority wise, I think these are the four ingredients which should be taken actually to determine their presence, both qualitative as well as quantitative. And this is what, what to analyze. How to analyze? This is the answer actually that yes, you try to first get the qualitative confirmation. And this is what has been depicted here in terms of the, in, uh, I mean, HPTLC that yes, this is actually Agha Tora Visika, wherein actually the vasicin is the major constituent. And this has been the syrup has been compared actually with the you no know, for the presence of vasicin, and the right left track is of a wasaka syrup, of course extracted from that, and the right one is actually a pure or the standard vasicin. So qualitative presence has been shown with the help of HPTLC, and subsequently quantitative presence also can be determined with the help of uh, HPLC. However, in in terms of the in case of herbal herbal analysis. The preparation of the sample is most important because uh, once it is fed to the instrument, the instrument is going to do what it is meant for. But what you need to fed to the instrument has to be very clean. Uh, otherwise, in HPLC, once the pointer goes up, in case if it is having many constituents, then the pointer will not touch back to the baseline. And then you'll have a difficult time actually to determine the actual 
content in that. So the care need to be taken while preparation of the sample rather than actual analysis part of it. This is another uh, case study wherein it was a combination of the nine herbs and uh, we have chosen one, one marker uh, specific to that particular drug and we try to show the presence with the help of the HPLC, HPTLC first, uh, that is a qualitative uh, presence and there are subsequently it was also analyzed by the quantitative uh, presence by the HPLC. So this is the way to proceed, how to analyze, what to analyze and how to analyze. And this is the area which is wide open today. Uh, traditional medicine, which have been typically sold in, under the Ayurveda, do not, no, do not attract much of the uh, stringent analytical profile, but definitely those who are exporting and the nutraceutical products need to be analyzed actually uh, you know, at par with the allopathic product. And for that, there's a need to develop analytical profile uh, at the analytical methods, uh, both for the raw material as well as for the for the formulations. This is a case study actually to prove that which extract, uh, you know, if you look at this phytochemicals in the extraction analysis, there are the three plant material. One is, of course, amygdalin from the uh, persica, semen persica. This is hydroxysafrobar yellow, which is hydrophilic. This is, I mean, uh, medium polarity, and this is beta acerone from the calamus, which is non polar. So, we have proved actually that yes, it is a alcohol in the water mixture, wherein actually all the three gates are represented. If you see, this is the first track water, alcohol water, and this is the water. So, in case of hydroxysafrobar yellow, which is the water soluble, water extract shows the presence as well as alcohol and water, but alcohol extract do not show the presence. But in all the cases, alcohol plus water mixture shows the presence of all the three ingredients. And that is how one should use actually the combination of the solvent for the extraction in case if you want all the three to be present in that. All right, next is the development of the herbal powder. So another sector that one can make, uh, you know, the career is the development of the product. And uh, already market is spread with the product, but what you need actually is some... <laughs> As I told you, one need to look into the modern dosage forms. Because people want actually, as the rear, uh, I have seen actually, and that is what the need is actually, that yes, today, the product must be user-friendly. People should feel like to take it, not as a drug, but as a as a food. And that is a challenge. So some of the uh, natural, I mean, novel herbal products includes more dissolving tablets, sleeves, control release, mucodesic tablet. Uh, transdermal films, aerosols, macroparticles, nanoparticles, these are all in the market. However, I think uh, we need to understand uh, the deliverable, what we need to deliver uh, in time, whether we are, we are able to, and plus, uh, it should be delivered actually in a user-friendly form. We have just prepared actually, these are the two products, Rekindle uh, for men and the Rekindle for women. These are the two uh, chocolate bars. And here we have tried to uh, give actually the nutraceutical product in the form of a chocolate bar without affecting the real chocolate or taste uh, in a product. So this is what we need to do when it comes to the novel uh, herbal product. We need to think differently to make product which people feel like to take it or uh, they should be attractive but people feel like to consume them. These are some of the challenges of the of the different sectors wherein we need to overcome and come out with a good research development which will definitely lead to the entrepreneurship. About the cultivation, as I told you, not many people are getting into that. Trade is another area. Again, it is confined uh, by and large to the traditional people who does not have any idea about the herbal uh, herbals at all. But they are the ones who are treated at this moment. There is some disturbance. Someone has, uh, okay, all right. So raw material trade and the commerce is something we are in. Actually, I have not seen anybody from the, who has undergone a formal education and getting into this because uh, this area, which is by and large has been, I mean, controlled by the traditional people who absolutely do not have any idea about the scientific feature of this uh, sector, scientific, scientific information about the house. And with the result, there's a need because you cannot build the quality only at the last uh, step or the last stage. You have to build the quality right from the first step and, and the cultivation and the trading. These are the initial uh, stages actually of the quality, quality you know, development of the quality product. So I think that there is a 
there's a need actually some people, uh, educated people or the qualified people must enter into this sector as well. Well, these are some of the uh, examples where in actually use of phytohormones has definitely improved actually the, so these are the scientific work which has gone, like uh, application of the sulfuric acid in the enhancement of the polyphony or uh, you know, application of the of, of uh, two chloroethyl phosphonic acid that is uh, ethylene for the gumosis or which is to increase the gum production. And this is not been practiced actually in India to enhance the gum production. In India, we are, we are exporting good amount of gum and now people are uh, using ethipon actually for uh, enhancing the gum production. So these are some of the areas wherein people can work actually and definitely it can become actually a good uh, uh, a business opportunities. Uh, this is another area, I mean, uh, this is just more at the academic that poisonous plant and Ayurvedic Shodhana. I always believe that Ayurveda has used many uh, toxic uh, plant material and as on today, I have not come across any uh, poisoning or toxicity being, being uh, you know, or has happened actually by consuming the Ayurvedic product which contains toxic, uh, uh, you know, uh, medicines like, like Naxomica or Aconite and the reason lies in uh, Ayurvedic Shodhana Prakriya which is a scientific process. And therein actually, the two important things what they carry out actually, the mechanism which is involved in the traditional processes, either by inactivating the poisons of the toxic principle, either by elimination or by modifying its chemical nature. Uh, like sometimes they undertake fermentation, that means in case if the, if the proteins are the ones which are toxic, so they give just uh, fermentation, that means, or the, or the steaming operation. So any protein, when it has been heated beyond 65 degrees or the 70 degrees, it gets denatured. Or in case of alkaloid containing plant material, they treat actually with certain material like, like aconite is treated with a tannin. And we all know actually the, the alkaloids, they form the complex with the tannins. And that is the one actually the very scientific process which, was, which has been used actually in the Ayurvedic principles. And uh, thereby they were able to use even the poisonous plant material without, without, exer you know, without executing actually the poisoning effect. So these are the various uh, areas wherein actually one need, one can work and uh, definitely some of the areas bearing of course this uh, this is more academic but otherwise most of the other areas where one can make a good amount of work which needs a lot of you know research development um, and definitely then it will lead to the innovation as well and come out with the product or methodology and uh, definitely I, I feel like those will have a good commercial uh, opportunities or to explore the commercial opportunities in terms of uh, uh, either come out with, uh, either you become entrepreneur or you become a consultant or you can even sell technology actually to the industry. So that is all in the nutshell. And I hope uh, I have just touched upon the few topics. I think the forthcoming session will give you more uh, in-depth knowledge about uh, various sectors which will lead to the entrepreneurship and uh, enrich your knowledge. And uh, at the end of the seminar, I hope all of you will go with the good ideas in your mind. And uh, I'm sure it will also culminate uh, into a, you know, into into a, a entrepreneurship. I take this opportunity uh, to extend my sincere thanks to all participants, those who were patiently looking, I mean, patiently listening to me. Uh, along with that, uh, faculty and the organizer of the DY Party University uh, and the research uh, center, uh, and of course, association of the pharmaceutical research, who in association with the. DY Party University has been, you know, has been instrumental in organizing this particular seminar and also giving me an opportunity to put forward uh, the, uh, the, to put forward my views actually on the various areas which will have the commercial or the you know, scope for the commercial exploitation. Once again, thanks to all of you. Thank you very much and over to you. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your informative session. If any question I can take quickly, if not, I think uh, the session is getting uh, delayed. So I will, uh, if anybody has any questions, they can put it in a chat box. So good morning. Excellent session as usual. So one small doubt. Uh, yes. we work, we're working on a project right now. Uh, you mentioned about that nine combination formulation. Yes. Uh, where HPLC was done. So if you don't get one single method of HPLC to detect all the markers, uh, is it okay if we do with different methods for different markers? Which is yes, not feasible can... for the company 
but uh, we had no choice because these markers were different one was alkaloid one was flavonoid one was a glycoside so in the same system till today for last one and a half year we are struggling and we couldn't get all the markers in the same hplc system no no please do not try to get all the markers in the same system because all the ingredients they behave in a different fashion yes sir so some of them are polar some of them are non polar some of yes. them are semi polar i yes. don't think you can have with the one universal solvent by which all will get eluted you need to have a different uh, hplc for each ingredient and uh, the care should be taken that uh, when you prepare the sample the ingredient or the analyte of the interest should not get compromised yes. because otherwise mm -hmm. the entire uh, you know process of quantifying that becomes uh no questionable yes so but it becomes very expensive for the industry so they were stressing that they needed one system of analysis i don't think the cost is the problem in this sector because this is a health sector so i don't think cost is the problem because uh, health sector is the most premium sector and i don't think uh, one can you uh, know uh, uh, compromise that so cost i don't think okay. but yes okay. there should be an attempt to prepare actually or to come out with a method which is easy and simple okay. so that uh, it becomes user yes. friendly for the industry yes yeah attempt should be made all right thank you very much if there is no question i once again thank you all Thank, thank you, thank sir. you, sir, for your uh, uh, initial remarks and a great address for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, I would like to welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. Jobin Moda, Deputy Director, Institute of Teaching and Research in Ayurveda, ITRE, India, to deliver his keynote presentation. Sir, please. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. You're pretty audible. Sure, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me for this uh, keynote speech. Uh, I guess, uh, like uh, bridging the gap between in, in, uh, institutions and industry, we also need to uh, bridge the gap between uh, traditional Ayurvedic institutions and modern pharmaceutical industry and institution both at the same time. Uh, I'm with the Joban Moda. Deputy Director, Pharmacy at uh, Institute of Teaching and Research, which is the first institute of uh, national importance in the country right now. And uh, as you may be aware that we are celebrating the seventh Ayurveda Day, uh, this uh, Dhanvantari Divas, that is Dhanteras on 23rd of October. So I'm taking an opportunity to share some of my uh, views about uh, innovative approaches uh, in minimizing the gap between research and industrial production of Ayurvedic drugs. I hope I am audible. So, ITRA, let me introduce our institute first of all. ITRA is the uh, uh, very uh, new, actually new institution where we have uh, come together three uh, previous institutions are amalgam and entire institutions like ipgt and ra which was or which is the premier research institute in the field of ayurved and which was established in 1956 and now we are working together all these institutions are working under the same umbrella and i am uh, uh, happy to share that institute of, uh, indian institute of ayurvedic pharmaceutical sciences which is the first Ayurvedic pharmacy institution in the world, where which I am heading right now. Our alumni are practicing Ayurved all over the globe, and uh, our institute is truly international in uh, as far as Ayurvedic practice and Ayurvedic research is concerned. We have uh, students and scholars and alumni all across the globe. There is no state left, there is no country left where our students are practicing or in the pharmacy or in the uh, other sectors as well. In our campus, anytime uh, more than 25 languages are spoken. And so it is multilingual, a kind of, you know, uh, Ayurvedic institution. Uh, let's talk about the research uh, in our campus. Research, as I told you, is the uh, oldest 
our ours is the oldest institution and uh, the history starts right from 1956 so more than 4000 md dissertation and research publications are already with us more than 500 phd uh, work have been already been carried out and 550 uh, plus phd in ayurvedic pharmaceutical sciences have been carried out so in total we have more than 5000 research publications of md or phd level are with us and overall we have more than 2000 research publication in peer reviewed or uh, ugc care listed journals published almost every year i hope you know what is ayurved so i'm not going to the details but let me take uh, one line that it is a science of life with a holistic approach to health and personalized medicine it is known to be complete medical system that comprises physical psychological philosophical ethical and spiritual health so it's not about a single molecule like what we are discussing all the time but it has uh, many arenas so when we talk about ayurved it's just like the story of the blind man and elephant whoever touches the trunk of elef elephant that blind man feels like a uh, elephant is just like a trunk whoever touches the uh, uh, tail likewise but however this uh, nature uh, or the natural products are in harsh demand these days according to the ministry side ministry sources the uh, approximate size of the ayurvedic product was around 2.5 billion in 1617 it was projected that it will grow up to 8 billion by 2021 22 but luckily it has grown even further it is now more than almost 9 billion us dollar when we talk about the product line as my previous uh, speaker kirti sir uh, uh, rightly mentioned that it is not only about few pharmaceutical product but it covers many other areas and arenas as well and uh, for the upcoming students of pharmacy i would like to mention that you have you guys have unlimited scope in this field Uh, if we care carefully observe the classical ayurvedic uh, books there are more than 35000 polyherbal combinations are mentioned and uh, 150 plus formulations just like syrup asav avle arist gutti vatti this type of 150 types of formulations are already mentioned in the classics we need to revisit them or re uh, invent them because the world herbal industry is growing at a very steady uh, steady pace and hopefully it will reach up to 6 trillion by 2050 research as we say that it is a process that converts data into information information into knowledge and known knowledge into wisdom so we need to think of all this important keywords right now uh, if we talk about the research status in the country only about ayurvedic research we have around 10 national institutes or councils plus few modern institutions where uh, basic research work of ayurvedic products are being done of course the flag bearer is our institute that is gujarat ayurved university previously and now itra jamnagar then we have ccrs then we have bhu then we have nia national institute of ayurved in the jaipur and all india institute of ayurveda at new delhi but if we compare it with the modern medical colleges there are more than 2800 operational medical schools and research organizations throughout the globe and as far, as compared to the, uh, that big figure we are almost negligible so i invite heartily invite all the modern pharmaceutical uh, research institutes to come in this field let's uh, uh, let's join Uh, the hands together and uh, come up with some uh, good uh, formulas for the benefit of mankind because uh, research in ayurved these days is uh, i mean uh, only all these ten this institutes are working either on literary or fundamental research mainly or clinical research and drug and pharmaceutical research is just, just one part of those uh, 10th uh, i mean 10 research institutes so say Uh, hardly we are we are in minority uh, to be uh, uh, honest as uh, rightly mentioned about the curcumin that curcumin all the 16000 plus research works available on pubmed most of them are done by the uh, western uh, research uh, institutes all the uh, basic uh, activities are already established through number of uh, studies 
but uh, when we talk about uh, converting into the clinical practices we still need some more time and data likewise ashwagandha based product as uh, kirti sir mentioned that nowadays innovative products are coming in the market none of these products shown in the slide were mentioned in the classics likewise we uh, number of uh, oil and grit formulations are explained in the classics which uh, rightly uh, uh, prescribe for treating number of uh, disorders and diseases nowadays some of the companies have converted in the soft gel capsules just like vitamin e capsules can we think of such new innovative devices like ayush cidd ayu center for the integration of drugs and devices and can we come up with uh, such devices which can control uh, uh, lifestyle disorders like blood pressure and diabetes in the next near future uh, honestly speaking the present scenario researchers are failing this are unable to disseminate the knowledge gained from the exercises and we still need to have a gap, uh, need to fill the gap between institutions to institutions as well as institute to industries uh i'd like to mention some of the significant points in bridging the gap between industry and in institutions like we should have uh, uh, establishment of industry institution partnership i would extend this to in the institute to institute partnerships uh, with ayush in institutes and modern institutes and industrial partnership and we should have more of incubation center recently we have started one incubation center in our institute as well organizing workshops like this conferences symposia with joint participation of the faculty in industry encouraging experts from industry to visit technical institute to deliver lectures and i am taking at this opportunity to invite all of you to visit our institute so that we can work together in near future participation of experts from industry at the curriculum development level collaborations in degree program should be encouraged just like einstein was working in the field of which uh, uh, the physics but uh, there are colleges like uh, albert einstein college of medicine so we all need to work together and uh, when we talk about specially talk about ayurvedic medicine if someone have of you have read uh, the uh, ayurvedic classics we always talk about the guna of aushadis like lagu guru etc so ayurveda is all about biophysics rather than biochemistry so if someone can think on that line that will be a great help to the understanding of this uh, beautiful science we should arrange visits of staff member to various industries for various purposes professional consultancies by faculties to industry can also be uh, encouraged industrial testing by faculty and technician at the site or in laboratory just like our many of our faculties and our uh, research scholars Uh, we have mous with um, number of ii uh, iits iicts and other research institute throughout the country joint research programs and uh, studies by faculty and people from the industry at our space we uh, encourage many of the industrial uh, research projects in our institute at, uh, at the same time visit of faculty to industry for study and discussion or delivering lectures visit of industry executives in the institute for seeing research work what kind of research work are being done for example as i told we have a very good data of more than 5000 research works but uh, many of the even ayurvedic pharmacy they are lacking and they are uh, duplicating the same research work which is already been carried out even before 20 years or 25 years in our institute so if we talk and we dialogue more and more the such gap can be filled very easily mous between institute and industry to bring two sides of uh, two sides emotionally and strategically as well we can bridge the gap by human resources development programs uh, short term assignment for faculties in the industries and likewise professional chase by the industries r and d lab sponsored by uh, this is uh, very important because these days r and d labs hardly any r and d labs are sponsored by industry as far as ayurvedic uh, institutions are concerned apprenticeship and fellowship and scholarship programs should be sponsored for the upcoming generations internship in the industries for students our uh, students of uh, b pharma third year they get uh, one or two months uh, internship program uh, in uh, reputed ayurvedic industry and they get very much benefited and we have very good feedback of this 
some factors which uh, hinder industry in institutional interaction that uh, insecurity in distrust sometimes uh, uh, the research scientists think that uh, my research work will be stolen or will be copied by the industry that what what is the use of my uh, wasting my time so such uh, insecurity and uh, distrust must be uh, resolved lack of exclusively exclusively dedicated staff for interaction with industry to institution and institution to industry is uh, very important so, so both of this part should be uh, corrected from both the sides. Some factors which, I mean, same old rigid curriculums, no updating to match industrial need. However, we are trying to update our curriculum at very regular intervals to match, to uh, come up this uh, challenge. Serious involvement of industry in curriculum design is very much important and it is lacking at some point of time. There is a problem of mismatch, the gap between industry needs and the academic community's aspirations appears to be considerably large. It should be more and more encouraged. There are a few suggestions from my side that full-time industry institutional interaction must be established and there should be sales for this. Uh, this shares uh, should clearly define and publicize the goal and KPIs, key performances index should be defined, well defined. And curriculum must be more and more industry friendly. Interaction between academic and industry association can be improved just like this uh, platform. It should be more and more frequently. Institution may take up uh, consultancy services uh, for solving the specific problems. So a few years back, I visited one of the premier institute uh, university where they had one uh, latest uh, uh, latest model of uh, this uh, mercedes benz when they were uh, working for the uh, in the automobile research so just like uh, we can also have such uh, involvement of institutions in the industrial products industry association may also uh, have this uh, may provide support of basic studies and research undertaken by technical institutions. Institutes faculty may take up projects in the industry and the students should be involved in the execute uh, these projects. Like our institutes have many of such projects. Industry owners, experts may be invited for lectures and interaction with the students in the institutions itself. Access to libraries in institution if provided to industry will help both industry and institution. Similarly, students may have access to the resources available in industry. Apart from industry associations, the institution should also be established a linkage with government agencies, which are engaged in the industrial development activities. Ideally, the exchange of industry and institution expert is required. That is academia should work in industry for a fixed term intermittently and industry experts should work in the institutions at the same time. So, uh, concluding my remarks that there is no ideal model which can fit to all need uh, for a variety of tools uh, adjust use of uh, according to our ip uh, policy target seek private funding as early as possible in this process minimize the risk of failure and then guarantee the value of technology together we can grow i'd like to uh, again thank all of the organizers uh, for inviting me for this keynote speaker. That's it from my side. Thank you very much. Any questions from anyone? Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your informative session. I guess there are no questions from the participants as it's quite clear and understandable for everyone. So next, I would like to welcome our next keynote speaker, Dr. Sandeep Arora, Professor and Director, MIT University of Pharmacy, MIT University. India to deliver his keynote presentation. Sir, please.
Yeah, uh, just a minute. Uh, if you can give me some time, I will just uh, check uh, the uh, okay, share so of the sure. screen. Just sharing of the screen, please. I hope the screen is visible. Yes, sir. It's visible. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, very good morning uh, to all the uh, participants, the organizers, and the uh, the other keynote speakers and uh, the honourable guests who are associated with the conference. Uh, a great effort by APR and Startup. Uh, to highlight the need for validated and uh, authenticated herbal research and product and introduction into the market. Uh, it is high time that, uh, as the uh, earlier keynote speaker was also mentioning, that uh, we make sure that uh, the herbal industry, that includes uh, uh, different industries, uh, very, very large industry, in fact, uh, companies just manufacturing the crude drug, companies just manufacturing crude drug extracts, which have been sanitized, companies manufacturing uh, isolated compounds, uh, uh, the phytopharmaceutical industries, the formulation industry, the Ayurvedic industry in India, the Chinese drug industry, and the other botanical and other industry across the world. Also, the food supplements and the, uh, the functional food industry and the uh, phytocosmeceuticals. So there is a large uh, number of industries uh, and entrepreneurs who are working in this area. And uh, evidence is a key word uh, that uh, helps any industry to establish its pro product and make sure that uh, a, an appropriate therapeutic uh, advantage or appropriate cosmetic advantage is being transferred to the consumers uh, with the best of the evidence and uh, uh, the technology that the customer can look forward to. So, uh, uh, in the same, uh, as far as uh, as far as I can see, there are many areas in which the 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 uh, the synthetic drug industry as well as the ph pharmaceutical industry so far uh, has not been able to make sure that uh, uh, disease management or disease prevention is taken care of. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry has been very critical along with the. Uh, the uh, physician and uh, uh, surgery based uh, healthcare team to make sure that uh, whenever there is a disease or there is whatever is the disease state, the disease after happening is being taken care of by medication, by therapy, and then also by surgery. But naturally, now uh, I think we have to basically change our thinking as to disease prevention. And there comes the role of herbals and pharmaceuticals. And that is why we are talking about the, uh, the startup. Uh, conference and the APR conference. So I'm just, uh, as a keynote uh, session, I will be just liking to share one uh, study which has been converted after research uh, and then preclinical and clinical evaluation uh, on a phytopharmaceutical population, uh, which has been ultimately collaborated with industry and take as a product and is already there in the market uh, after Ayush approval. So uh, the first is, uh, thing is to make sure that uh, the phytopharmaceuticals are, uh, as an innovation-based industry, if we are producing the product, then we have to make sure that we are targeting a, a, a therapeutic area or the disease area which needs uh, help from the pharmaceutical industry. They are, I think, that in disease prevention. So one such area that has that was identified was the 
uh, the hepatic fibrosis. Uh, and uh, hepatic fibrosis is a condition uh, in, which, uh, in which the liver uh, gets injured due to various causes and the initial liver injury uh, leads to initial inflammation, acute inflammation, and then gradually changes to uh, the, the chronic inflammation. And uh, the hepatocellular changes uh, take place side by side. The chronic inflammation naturally invites a lot of lymphocytes and along with that, a lot of virus too. And gradually, the liver uh, starts showing changes in the logical parameters with a lot of accumulation of fibrotic tissues, which makes it difficult for the liver to come back to the original state of good health. And Converts goes if the causes of injury are not uh, removed, the condition worsens and it goes to irreversible fibrosis and then directly into cirrhosis. So, we can summarize this is a critical condition. Uh, uh, cirrhosis is a disease which has not been so far very much uh, uh, nicely targeted by the pharmaceutical industry. There are steroids, there are some other uh, drugs. But most of these drugs have not been able to tackle the case when the liver has reached the stage of cirrhosis, inflammation, and, and fibrosis. Uh, so cirrhosis very rarely is a, is an irreversible cirrhosis. Mostly it becomes uh, irreversible. Very rarely it is reversible cirrhosis. And so this is a condition which the pharmaceutical industry uh, realizes that, that they need support, that if the timely intervention is there, and the causes of injury can be tackled earlier, then the, uh, the, the chances of prognosis of the uh, patients are much better and they would not find it difficult to cure uh, the patients once they have reached the stage of irreversible cirrhosis. Uh, uh, irreversible cirrhosis naturally leads to uh, naturally uh, originates from number of uh, injury, injury factors, including oxidative injuries as well as the, the the cell injury by various methods and the various pathways. Uh, and uh, accordingly, the targeting of particular pathways which can be utilized and the formulations which can make sure that they are appropriately reaching to those targets or receptors is very is, is very much required. So even while thinking about phytopharmaceutical and other formulations, we can have a more scientific thinking that even if we are combining uh, a combination of extracts or fractions or phyto phytochemicals, then we can uh, think about making sure that we are targeting the, uh, the hepatic cells. So there is a scientific based approach can be applied to phytopharmaceuticals also. Uh, thereby, uh, we are making sure that we are producing a product which is evidence-based and also making sure that that is leading to a product which will be uh, giving some technological advantage in the market and thereby uh, it will uh, naturally increase the, uh, the, uh, the, the marketability of the product, the chances of the entrepreneurship and also the advantage to the entrepreneur or the manufacturer who is going to take that product into market. Naturally, he has to work upon the selling and marketing aspect. But naturally, as a researcher, as a, as a collaborator, we are helping them so that we are giving a data which makes sure that that can be converted to marketing data appropriate. So targeting uh, for okay. particular hepatic cells can be by various methods. We yeah, can have the folate receptors, folic acid, phosphorus, all these things used for targeting. And uh, the same thing can be picked up when we are formulating the phytopharmaceuticals also. Uh, and uh, as I said, uh, targets we are focusing while working on the uh, histology of the liver and also the hepatic cells. We have to first make sure it may be either the cell necrosis or apoptosis pathways, it may be collagen producing fibrogenesis pathways that we can target. It may be the fibroblast activation that is causing the fibrous tissue accumulation. The targeting of the cell migration addition, which is taking place during inflammation, or it may be during the macrophage activation itself that we are going to target uh, when we are taking the phytopharmaceutical industry. So, accordingly, uh, we identify the following targets when we are taking, uh, targeting the hepatic and serotic changes to the liver. It may be hepatocyte itself, it may be uh, a hepatocellular carcinoma cells, ASGPR through the folate receptors or through the hepatic heparan sulfate, glucosaminoglycan, other receptors, 
or we may be targeting the stellate cells or uh, with the help of the MSP cells or BDGF receptors or we may be targeting the cofer cells in the liver, the manual receptor as other things or maybe targeting the endothelial cells to the cells, scavenger receptors. So we can get as evidence-based and as research-based project when we work phytopharmaceutical and thereby we can pick up uh, important molecules that can be taken for a hepatic uh, targeting. As I, earlier, as I, uh, one more slide I showed, so there may be some more molecules which can be taken for targeting. We can use cholesterol-based structures. We can use, uh, already we have said, uh, dogs-based conjugates and other things. And uh, the potential molecules, uh, the, the pharmaceutical molecules that are presently under study for all these targeting are uh, these things, medicines, which are under study. Uh, they include some phytochemicals also. If we talk about the research review when we are doing a project. So uh, as far as the review is concerned, the review shows the following data in which pharmaceutical as well as synthetic and the, the biological based uh, molecules as well as the phytochemical molecules which are being taken up for appropriate targeting. And they are being studied. Either some of them have reached in the preclinical and clinical stage. And then they have been taken for study on the hepatic fibrosis and cirrhosis. Now, as I said, uh, making sure that the whatever molecules and phytochemical uh, extracts or other pure phytochemicals that we are going to take, they should be reaching the appropriate site or target that we have chosen. So naturally, nanotechnology is one area which makes sure that we are gradually combining nanotechnology with these products and taking uh, the products exactly into the site. So here we have chosen lactobionic acid for tar targeting and hepatotargeting, and we have taken these uh, liposome and phytosomal formulation so that we can make sure the appropriate quantity of the product reaches the, uh, the, 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 uh, the hepatic tissue. So uh, the phytosomes have been prepared by using the normal, normal combinations of the soya lecithines or soya phosphatidyl colines and the ethanolamines and thereby uh, the, the phytosome structure has been created. The phytosome and liposomes are similar. There is slight difference because liposomes are mostly based on the phyto extracts. And accordingly, uh, the method for the standard method for the phytosome preparation has been used, which is already standardized and being used for uh, uh, pharmaceutical preparations also for ph phytosomes. Uh, thin film method has been used. And uh, the, the plant that taken up uh, is, uh, extracts we have taken up, they of many plants which have shown by scientific study that they have the potential to target the hepatic cells, target the hepatic uh, inflammatory and the fibrotic processes. So extracts we have taken up and these are some of the plants that we have combined in the formulation that uh, they have been taken up. So accordingly, the, the hepatoprotective formulation has been prepared, which has been by preparation of the phytosomes and then making sure that the phytosomes are also provided the characteristics of targeted and extended release. So we have converted into spray coated granules and then accordingly we have proceeded forward. And uh, uh, accordingly, the, the process has been combined with the normal standardization of the raw materials which are being taken up for formulation as well as in process standardization of the component of the formulation uh, 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 points as well as the final standardization of the formulations. So, as I said, phytosomes have been prepared by the normal method of thin film, and accordingly, accordingly uh, with the lactobionic acid component composition, it has been made sure that they are appropriately targeting the uh, liver cells in a much better way, uh, rather than the composition being wasted by going into the body and getting metabolized in different ways. We are making sure that the targeting is appropriate. And then finally, the phytosomes before being uh, encapsulated or uh, put into the capsules, they are also converted uh, into appropriate uh, sim uh, uniform size uh, spherical granules by using the spray coating as the method, wherein the phytosomes are encapsulated in the, in the spray coated sugar granules. And then appropriately, they are uh, encapsulated so that while encapsulating in a, in a large scale, the flow property of the granules is uniform and uh, the process remains uniform, making sure that encapsulation uh, gives same quantity of the granules in different capsules. Uh, uh, that uh, helps us in uh, standardizing the processing parameters. So for, uh, that also makes sure that the phytopharmaceutical being, being, being produced 
is actually giving a product which uh, can take care of uniform uh, uniform pure quality from to west by making sure that the flow of the granules in the uh, in during the stage of uh, filling in the capsule is uniform and all the capsules contain the same amount of granules so again the 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 granules process granulation process uh, because as i said uh, the granules have been also made sure that they are being provided the extended release property so we go by the process of coating sub coating and other things so that the these coating help in the appropriate extension of the of the uh, release time of the granules within the biological fluids and thereby they are processed you after processing the normal parameters for particle size estimation the normal parameters for the coupling the normal parameters for uh, estimating the the particle shape and structure they are also taken up both for the liposome as uh, the phytosomes as well as for the the spray coated granules the both are taken up the entrapment efficiency in the liposome for the extracts also also measured uh, by column methods and accordingly they are made sure that the standardization at each step is very appropriate thereby we are able to give a evidence based product both as uh, in the form of the quality of the composition as well as in the the pre clinical and the clinical studies uh, i would like to again uh, again reiterate that the study and the granules produced they have been cl clinically validated as well as they have been clinically uh, validated so cellular uptake studies have been done as well as particle size and other analysis for the chemical things have been done and then we have also made sure the the other characterization as in the form of dissolution study and other things which are the pharmaceutical evaluation they have been done and accordingly uh the the data has been showing that uh, the best batch has been chosen after the appropriate optimization and uh, these data formulation study data they also help the manufacturer in establishing that the appropriate product has been manufactured by the qbd methods for formulation development and process development and uh, thus making sure that phytopharm chemicals are also treated in a much in the in the same uh, uh, scientific way as the pharmaceutical products are being taken and thereby the marketability as well as the regulatory approvals in different countries becomes easy for that easy for the manufacturer so establishing the evidence through hptlc and other things those are also done appropriately then we have done the appropriate pre clinical validation against the metacrylide induced hepatic injury then the fibrosis and cirrhotic conditions and the appropriate establishment of the histological responses on the liver has been established and uh, the uh, the uh, the the mechanisms has also been established that we are particularly targeting the hepatic stellate cells as far as uh, stopping the fibrosis is concerned so we have been able to establish the appropriate mechanism also as to how we are making sure that the progression to fibrosis or cirrhosis is being prevented that we are doing through the hsc cells hepatic stellate cells that we have established by showing these studies on changes in the hepatic stellate cells so this was the pre clinical part that i showed uh, the uh, the clinical evidence has also been established that is not presently included in this slide so i would like to again reiterate that while making phyto pharmaceuticals even for the industry or herbal products for the industry we have to make sure that we are collaborating appropriately as i think the last few keynote speaker also mentioned collaboration is very important we have to be very specific as to what disease we are treating we have to be very specific as to what marketing advantage that we are going to give to the manufacturer that as i said uh, we have decided appropriate specific area fibrosis and cirrhosis we have appropriately uh, made sure that marketing advantages will be in the form of targeting uh, also and also in the form of uh, technology based product which makes sure that the viability and other aspects are taken care of and we are providing appropriate evidence for pharmacology appropriate evidence for Uh, pharma, uh, pharmaceutical standardization as well as pre, uh, clinical standardization has also been done. So that way, uh, I hope this is what uh, makes sure that uh, we are ensured of a partnership, which makes sure that the researcher is also happy that the culmination of the research is there into a product that we call as the translation research. 
and the manufacturer is also happy that a time by project is being completed and he is getting specific market related advantages uh, being provided as clear cut areas that he can take up for marketing because unless he is able to market and sell on particular strong points it becomes difficult even if you make a very good quality products so i would like to emphasize quality and marketability with a appropriate evidence based uh, development and formulation and processing that ensures a very good uh, product from the phytochemical field and we are not sort of not sort of uh, substances in the herbal and natural aspect. and another advantage very specifically that i told in the initial part of the the presentation that the pharma industry now looks forward to the herbal and phytochemical industry in providing preventive health care uh, and that segment needs to be very much immediately targeted it is already being targeted that needs to be continuously targeted by the herbal industry uh, thank you very much the organizers thank you very much the audience for patient here thank you sir thank you so much for your informative session uh, participants is there any questions Okay, sir. I guess uh, no one has any questions as it is so clear. We will move on to our next thing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to all the participants. Thank you, sir. So our next thing is. Wig Health products are pleased to introduce themselves as a pioneer in manufacturing of pure vegetarian sweet taste jellies, which are soft and easily chewable for all age groups with sugars as well as sugar free, depending upon choice of the available clients. With the motto "Eat medicine with taste and enjoy," dawa kel, dawa kelo, kel kel me. इसमें जल्दी आता है इसमें लेट आ रहा है दवा किलो दवा किल किल में Big Health products are pleased to introduce themselves as a pioneer in manufacturing of pure vegetarian sweet taste jellies which are soft and easily chewable for all age groups with sugar as well as sugar free depending upon choice of their valuable clients with the motto eat medicine with taste and enjoy dawa khalo khel khel me Big products are FSSAI certified small scale industry and currently working with many pharmaceutical companies with most of the products are natural big products have come up with a formula in 100% natural herbal for increasing immunity in the body to fight against viruses all the products are included with the ingredients like pectin sucrose stevia glucose stevia gel citric acid natural flavor and food color they are fortified with multivitamins herbs chavanprash curcumin avla highly enriched with vitamin c The benefits of big healthy gummies improve digestion, acts as an immune booster, very nutritious and helps in weight management, rich in antioxidants, minerals and DHA. They are also source of multivitamins which provide energy and improve skin, hair and nail health. Big products hopes that you will take interest in our above products and give a chance to serve you better. Apple cider vinegar jellies gummies, ashwagandha and ginseng extract gummies, ashwagandha with vitamin D and zinc jellies, biotin jellies gummies. Chavan Prash jellies gummies curcumin lozenges DHA jellies gummies multivitamin and minerals jellies gummies curcumin with mint lozenges ashwagandha and ginseng booster jellies Chavan Prash booster jellies cough and cold sore throat jellies spirulina powder jellies
Now I call upon Mr. Vig Puneet from Vig Health Products to speak few words about the company and their health products. Sir, please. Yeah, hi. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for giving us this chance. Uh, as you all have seen our product, we are third-party manufacturing. We do all contract manufacturing for pharma companies, and we are specialized in gummies, soft candies like jellies, and there are different packagings. Doctor recommend our products, and we are uh, have a ISO 9000 and a export oriented unit also so we'll have any query any question anybody has we are always ready to answer it yes hello sir am i audible yeah hello uh good morning sir yeah good morning uh, Sir, uh, myself assistant professor at the pharmacy institute, and my question is that uh, we have seen so many formulations which are used from major absorption. So Sorry, in... you're, not, you're not clear. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha, so um, my question is that, is, sir, there are so many formulations which are used uh, by using a root like nasal absorption, nasal root. Hello? Hello, am I audible, sir? Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you speak again, please? I'm not able to hear uh, you clearly. Sir, actually, my question is that there are so many formulations available in the market which are used through the nasal yeah. absorption by nasal root. Okay. Uh, so, I want to know if any herbal formulation or production we can use or, or formulate or prepare which is absorbed through the nasal route. Yeah, we, see, we are we can do any R and D, any formation you give us. We can give you the result in soft candy, soft jelly, the gummies, and which is very easily chewable. All age group can have it. Doctor is recommending it. Even kids can have, elders can have it, and it's like a you know chocolate where you know get a lot of benefits also. Okay, sir. Uh, can we uh, uh, can we have your contact number or any mail ID for the yeah yeah sure my the... yeah yeah my number is nine seven zero nine seven zero two four zero two four zero double one double one double one double one yeah and email ID is wigs at the rate ready mail dot com. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, to inform you that the Wix Health Products catalog was present in the chat box. If any participant are required, can download from the chat box. Uh, so, participants, any more questions for Mr. Vik Puneet? Hello. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. I'm Dr. Santosha from Vishnu Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research. Sir. Yes, sir. Hyderabad. Sir, yes, sir. Uh, can we collaborate with you in any, like in the formulation? We are in the formulation of uh, spirulina. We have made various formulations in it with spirulina okay. powder. We are cultivating spirulina and then we have formulated a few of them. But we are not into marketing yet. Okay. We are in the uh, process of formulation only. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we are very flexible. It? Yeah, we can have a trial of it, of your formula, and okay. you can see the product and result is good. Then we can go in the market. You can try it. We are ready for the R and D. Okay. Other than spirulina, also, sir. Since I'm, I belong to pharmacognosy department. Like, yes, is, is there any other way of collaborations? Like, can I supply any of the extract, or you'll be doing it by your own? Any other way of collaborating with you? See, we are all third party. So we don't do formulation. The, the pharma company gave us this formulation they want. And we do R&D and we develop and we give them the end product. Okay. Even if we give you the formulation, then also you'll be... Doing yeah, yeah. If you give us the formulation, then we can do the trials and we can give you the result. Okay, sir. Uh, then I'll contact you through the number and... As well sure, as well. sure, man. Most welcome. Thank you, sir.
so there was a question in the chat box yeah i will be reading out so can yeah. we formulate to topical presentation antiseptic cream yeah we can always we can do the r and d and if they can give us the formulation and the premix what they want we can do the trial in gummies it is antiseptic cream hello yes yes sir sir it is uh, actually antiseptic cream which is uh, formulated by extract of caloric acid esculenta so i am okay no ah uh? hello so you will you you want you you using the cream right now you are saying yeah 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 my formulation is in the form of cream sir okay so that premix that formulation what premix is there you can give me so i can put that in the gummies and give you the result uh okay sir thank you because we are into soft candy we manufacture gummies soft candies yeah the cream thing is something you know very different from what we are doing it okay sir you are only you go for the candy and uh, gummies yes yes oh okay sir. thank you hello yes sir yeah uh, sir how are you sir fine sir how are you uh, yeah i am good i am dr kishor from the malaysia okay yeah uh, right now i have the small doubt from that neutraceuticals yeah I, actually we are preparing that uh, some uh, candies and gummies okay uh, with the help of that uh, sprouted granules that means okay. first of all uh, we are taking that sprouts uh, grains then we will go for the sprouting after that that formula we can prepare the candies and the gummies it's like a protein rich herbal candies right okay yeah so yeah at that time we are using the some grains right so we purchased from the agriculture the farming uh, places so when they are uh, farming that grains the protein rich grains they are adding that pesticides okay so uh, right now i have the doubt when we are formulating that after the formulation how we i can uh, measure that residual uh, pesticides residual from my formulation so you already doing this manufacturing of this gummies Yeah, actually, that is uh, in the lab scale we are doing. Okay. Uh, so I have the doubt how I can measure that pesticides content of my formulation. If we can, you can do it through a lab. First, we have to do the R and D and do the testing. Mm hmm. What the end result is? Okay. Uh, I don't know how I can approach for the determine that pesticides content. Uh, okay. From. Home. Okay, you can. Take my number. You can contact me. I'll give you the concerned person. He will help you out. Yeah. So exactly, I you know that uh, the pesticides content from my formulation. I need okay. That. Okay. Okay, sir. I will contact you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions from the participants? Okay, sir. I guess there are no more questions from the participants. Uh, is there anything you would like to convey to all the participants, sir? No, I think so. In the video, everything is covered, and uh, if anybody has any query, they can always write to us. We always welcome them. And anybody wants to have a contract manufacturing third party, any pharma company, any individual, we are ready for it. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So next, I would like to welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. M. C. Sabu, Professor and Principal, Mukambika College of Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research, Kerala, India, to deliver his keynote presentation. Sir, please.
Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, sir, it's clear. Okay, thank you. Should I start? So, good morning, everyone. And first of all, I would like to thank the organizers, APR, as well as the DUI Patel University, Dim University for organizing such a wonderful seminar on uh, herbal drugs, right? Uh, so nowadays the use of herbal drugs is increasing, uh, but uh, still uh, the standardization of herbal drugs uh, part is very less uh, in, uh, compared to other countries. They are uh, doing very good research on herbal drugs and they are producing very good um, herbal products as a health uh, supplement like that. But in India, I uh, think uh, we have to improve the production as well as the standardization of herbal formulation before coming to the market. Uh, so with that, uh, uh, discuss something about the glucose transporter protein, which is uh, how the glucose transporter protein helps in type 2 diabetes and how the herbs or phytochemicals increase the glucose transporter protein level uh, if the insulin resistance occur or uh, how with the presence of insulin. The so the topic is... Given. With the morning laugh. <laughs> so that we should so, always remember laughing and I think some keeping good humor, keeping yeah. in the good nature is the best thing. And supplementing uh, with the good humor. Uh, 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 the topic is salt is our glucose transport protein. Otherwise, salt glue by herb in type 2 diabetes. My name is uh, Dr. Sabu, as already in, uh, and informed, and I am the professor and principal of Mugambi College of Computer Science and Research. And Carla. Uh, we just request that Madam Chief CEO, if some of you like to ask, ask one or two questions, a quick one and very specific, or uh, otherwise it's always available. Uh, we Please unmute your mic, please. Unmute. Or Mrs. Can you hear my voice? Or Mrs. Hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, but some disturbances are there. Yeah, yeah, there's so much disturbance I can hear. Uh, I think somebody is on there and unmute their mic. Shall I continue? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so the main outcome of uh, this presentation is first one is uh, the basic form for type 2 diabetes. So we all know that the, what are the reason for the type 2 diabetes and the utilization of glucose in the human body, how the uh, glucose is produced in the body and how it should be utilized in the human body, then entry of glucose into the cell. So uh, there are different ways how uh, the glucose can enter into the cell. Maybe insulin may help or glucose transport protein may help and the role of glucose transport protein, uh, how the proteins are help for entering the glucose into the a cell and the current medications, what are the current uh, synthetic uh, drugs is available for the, uh, and what uh, their, uh, uh, their side effects and all. Then uh, next one is the role of phytochemicals. There are number of phytochemicals already studied for the GLUT4 expression, and uh, there are many literature reviews available. And uh, finally, our studies on the GLUT4 protein expression are using uh, two different plant extracts. We have compared two uh, plant extracts for the GLUT4 expression and led to the conclusion for so here the risk factor for type 2 diabetes, uh, this, I think most of them uh, know the risk factor. First one is modifiable risk factor. We can divide into two uh, for our simplification. And another one is non-modifiable risk factor. So in the modifiable risk factor, we can say the overweight or obese and physical inactivity. If there is no uh, proper exercise, uh, uh, nowadays we can see that kids are using continuously using a uh, laptop or a mobile phone and there is no uh, uh, games or they are never using any 
uh, moments. Uh, so that's why they become obese and uh, become a, a insulin dependent diabetes. And sometimes the poor uh, food habit, like uh, junk foods, eating junk food always, and the hypertension uh, also leads to diabetes, uh, smoking. So these are the uh, this case we can modify because we, if we can control all these uh, habits, we can modify our uh, body and we can control our metabolism and we can uh, maintain our sugar level. But some case, the genetic factors, some genetic factors, some family history of type 2 diabetes and some race, some race having more uh, ethnicity to type 2 diabetes and uh, age increasing. While increasing the age, based on that, we, if you are not properly doing any exercise, then it will also increase the uh, chance for diabetes and some gestational diabetes. These are all cannot be avoidable, but in the uh, same time, we can try to control uh, by different way. So there are modifiable and non-modifiable methods we can say uh, for uh, as a risk factor for type 2 diabetes. So coming to the introduction, so we all know that glucose is a vital source of energy for all the cells in the body uh, for a nor normal animal uh, as well as the human being. So initially, energy is supplied by breakdown of the endogenous glycogen, uh, which is stored in the liver. We all know that the excess glucose, which is present in the body, will be stored in the uh, form of glycogen in the liver. So that will be start utilizing. Then this storage is replenished by, by the glucose from diet. So if you take a carbohydrate diet, that will be converted to glucose and that glucose also enter into the circulation. So following carbohydrate digestion and glucose absorption and uh, after the absorption, it will enter the circulation and distributed in the various tissues uh, by stimulating uh, insulin also. Uh, this is a normal uh, diet from energy, how the diet is converted to uh, energy glucose and how the glucose or insulin helps to uh, absorb the glucose in the body. So if you take uh, food and it will uh, containing carbohydrates, that will be first digested in the mouth itself and also in the gastrointestinal uh, secretions and it will convert it, uh, or it will increase the glucose production. So one start in, uh, increasing the glucose level and the, ins uh, the pancreas uh, is uh, uh, triggered and the the beta cells will start uh, releasing insulin. So once the insulin release, uh, the, the insulin works in different way in different tissues. For example, in liver. Liver, it will increase the gluconeogenesis and decrease the glycolysis and gluconeogenesis and also increase the group 2 or group 4. I will explain later the group, uh, what is glute and uh, group 2, group 3, group 4 and different glutes are available. Then in skeletal muscle, uh, the glucose uptake is increased and glycolysis also increases and glucogenesis also increases and some uh, uh, like glycogenesis, genolysis, proteolysis enzymes will be reduced. Uh, but glute 4 expression will be more in the presence of insulin in the skeletal muscle. Same way in adipose tissue also, group 4 expression will be uh, more and glucose uptake will be higher in the adipose tissues. Uh, coming to the uh, transport system, so how the glucose is entering into the cell and how different way of transport system. We can uh, mainly divide into two types, insulin uh, independent transport system and insulin dependent transport system. So for some cells, insulin is required for transport the glucose into the cell, some cells not required. So insulin independent, for example, hepatocytes, uh, that means the liver cells and erythrocytes and brain cells. So these are not required insulin for transport the glucose into the cells. But whereas in muscle and adipose tissues, it required the insulin to uh, transport the glucose into the cell. So here we are concentrating mainly on skeletal muscle and skeletal muscle is a uh, insulin dependent uh, glucose transport system and uh, it will take around 75 percentage of the glucose uh, which is stimulated by the insulin. So in humans and other mammals, skeletal muscle normally accounts for about 75 percent of the whole body insulin stimulated glucose transport system. Glucose transporter, there are different forms, isoforms, uh, glucose one, uh, GLUT1 to GLUT5 also there. And GLUT1 is uh, identified and it is cloned uh, in, uh, in 1985. And GLUT4, I already said that the GLUT4 is important for the glucose transporter with the presence of insulin in uh, tissues, muscle as well as fat, uh, fat cells and adipose tissues. So there are different types of uh, GLUT are available uh, or identified, we can say. Uh, and Thank it has for, different uh, action in that side. For example, group one. Group one is uh, acting on the erythrocyte blood tissue barriers, and whereas group two, liver, kidney, intestine, and all. And group three is present on all the tissues, and group four mainly in the skeletal and cardiac muscle and adipose tissues. 
and glute 5 also <coughs> mainly in the intestine so these uh, glutes are helps to you, transport the glucose to the uh, cell whereas in skeletal muscle we can uh, concentrating more on skeletal muscle because skeletal muscle absorbs 75 percentage of the glucose um, so the action mainly glute 4 is uh, the skeletal muscle insulin resistance may be caused by defects in glucose transport so in, if any uh, kind of insulin resistance occur the glucose transport also uh, uh, affect and which results from the impairment in the translocation or transfusion or exposure to the and act activation of glucose transport protein uh, for uh, then also abnormalities in glute 4 translocation in muscle appear to result from the defects in the intracellular signaling. So any abnormalities in the GLUT4 level will uh, change the intracellular signaling of the insulin. Then GLUT4 protein are, are translocated to the plasma membrane. So the mechanism mainly, uh, once the insulin is uh, secreted, it will uh, bind with the insulin uh, receptor, then enter into the cell, then it will trigger the uh, GLUT4 protein. Then it will the GLUT4 will, uh, will protein will uh, activate and uh, by using different signaling pathway and it will bind again to the uh, plasma membrane. Okay, we can simply uh, see the diagram, you can uh, understand the insulin bind with the receptor, then enter into the vesicle and the GLUT4 is uh, uh, stimulated, then the GLUT4 is bind with the plasma membrane. The, this is a glucose molecule, that glucose molecule uh, uh, joins with the GLUT4, then GLUT4, uh, this is a protein and uh, GLUT4 enter the glucose into the uh, cell. So this is the way we can uh, absorb, our cell can absorb more glucose into the cell. If any any uh, uh, insulin resistance occur, then the GLUT4 stimulation will be reduced. Okay. So defect in, I told you, any defects in the uh, insulin signaling cascades leading to impaired glucose utilization. So uh, once insulin uh, is resistant, um, become resistant, then they automatically this uh, all signaling pathway will be uh, stopped. Then the uh, insulin cannot be entered and the glu pro uh, glucose transport protein also um, level also reduce and insulin resistance also occur. And the reduction in insulin mediated glucose uptake into the skeletal muscle also caused by decreasing the glut for protein level. So that uh, in type 2 diabetes, if the GLUT4 protein level reduce, automatically the absorption of glucose into the cell is less. Then the, in the circulation, the level of glucose will be more. So uh, they become more diabetes. So thus, compounds that facilitate GLUT4 translocation. So if we can identify any compound that, uh, that can facilitate GLUT4 translocation, can be potentially benefit for the treatment of diabetes mellitus. So there are different kind of uh, uh, extracts are available, different phytochemicals are available, and but it may be work on antioxidant mechanism or uh, uh, insulin sensitizing or insulin, insulin mimetic action. But if the uh, any compound can facilitate the GLUT4 translocation and it will potentially be, uh, uh, benefit for the type, uh, type 2 diabetes. A current medication, we can say the insulin secretococcus and sensitizer are the main uh, or widely used uh, antidiabetic compounds uh, nowadays. For example, bicunex and uh, uh, metformin, the most common type of diabetic medication. And uh, it's a fast line therapy, but, uh, normally for overweight and obese people. And metformin increases the insulin sensitivity. So metformin actually increases the insulin sensitivity by enhancing glucose uptake and they also utilization of by muscles and also uh, suppress the glucogenesis in the liver. So automatically the, uh, uh, the uh, storage of glycogen conversion is reduced. So in patients with advanced type 2 diabetes, oral medication may fail. So if the diabetic condition is long for long years, then some oral medication may not be worked. So in that condition, we can um, find the replacement with insulin. So the insulin therapy is recommended when two to three months of uh, dual oral therapy with anti-diabetic medication fail to achieve the glycolytic hemoglobin, HbA1c, level uh, less than or equal to seven. So now we can go to the phytochemicals and uh, the how the insulin resistance will uh, control by the phytochemicals. So some mechanism we can say here the phytochemicals, any phytochemicals which is uh, uh, acting on diabetes. So the, there are uh, we can say the, it may inhibit the alpha glucosidase or alpha amylase, uh, and uh, finally it will in, uh, decrease the digestion and the intestinal absorption of dietary carbohydrates. So once the digestion is less. Uh, for the carbohydrate, then automatically conversion of glucose will be reduced uh, and the, uh, in the circulation, the glucose level will be reduced, uh, sugar level will be reduced. And another one is uh, decrease the gluconeogenesis and glucose output of the liver 
liver. So automatically, uh, in the glycogen conversion will be reduced. Automatically, the sugar level will be reduced, and it will regulate the carbohydrate metabolism. And some phytochemicals may increase the insulin-dependent glucose uptake. Uh, as I told, the GLUT4, GLUT4 will help, uh, uh, will work only through in, in the presence of insulin, and it will activate the GLUT4. Then it will improve the uh, glucose uptake in muscle and cell and adipose uh, sites. So once the glucose is more absorbed in the cell, and it will be utilized. And uh, some cases, uh, the uh, phytochemicals may protect the pancreatic beta cells against oxidative damage. So uh, oxidants, oxidative free radicals may affect the uh, beta cells and it, uh, some phytochemicals may act on antioxidants. So that will uh, uh, recover the beta cells and improve the beta cell function and insulin action. So this is the way we can recover the glucose homeostasis and insulin resistance. So this, uh, this is one mechanism of phytochemicals and there are a lot of literature uh, out there uh, acting on the GLUT4, how the phytochemicals accelerate the GLUT4. Uh, for example, the phytochemicals, resveratrol, gallotannins, and mangiferin, gallic acid. Uh, there are different uh, chemicals already studied uh, for the GLUT4 activity. And uh, uh, these are the plants which is available, the uh, phytochemicals. And uh, each uh, compound is having different mechanism. Uh, each plant have different signaling path, which will affect on uh, signaling pathway of the insulin and accelerate the glute pore. So uh, uh, these are the different mechanism for each plant. So here our study, uh, uh, our research is, uh, we have selected two different plants. One is Eagle Marmolos and the another one is Terminalia bellarica uh, seeds. And we have, uh, because for comparison, just for comparison, because both of having uh, antioxidant as well as anti-diabetic activity, but for uh, my, my curiosity, I worked on GLUT4, whether they, it will increase the GLUT4 level or not. We have selected these two plant extracts and we, we can uh, give one for one month for diabetic as well as uh, normal animals. Uh, and we have isolate, uh, killed the animals and uh, removed the uh, skeletal muscle as well as the uh, diaphragm also we checked whether the uh, glucose uptake is higher in diaphragm or in skeletal muscle. That's why we have selected two different muscles. And it was the muscle was removed and weighed and incubated with the oxygenated condition because it should be live condition. And uh, to remove the glucose, we use different buffer solution and remove the uh, glucose. And because uh, the muscle already having uh, glucose, right? It will absorb the glucose. So for removing that, we uh, we use different buffer and uh, particular incubation uh, time. We use them. Uh, we, we we try to remove the glucose present in the muscle. Then we will incubate it radio labeled only labeled glucose. So uh, once the radio labeled only, we can measure the amount of glucose uh, absorbed in the muscle. So that's why we use the radio carbon uh, only label glucose and again incubated for 30 minutes, uh, 27 degree, uh, 29 degrees Celsius. Uh, so when we incubated, we used uh, insulin as well as absence of insulin. So I already uh, said that glucose uptake may be increased in the presence of insulin. Okay. So for that, we have uh, tried different yes. models for absence of insulin. And the muscle, uh, after incubation, the muscle is removed and bloated, and then finally homogenized uh, with using perchloric acid. And then it will be centrifuged uh, for 15 minutes and at 1000 uh, uh, RPM. Then the aliquots is placed in a scintillation vial. Scintillation vial uh, is a, the nor it's a normal vial which, which can be used for the uh, find out the count of the C14 uh, radio label. Okay. So it's a beta counter we can, can use and measure the tipping count using all the relation count. And the media partner, of course, we put right through. Billy, over so to So coming you. to the result, we, we got that this is a uh, control animal so without treatment. And this is a uh, planned uh, Eagle Marmolus treatment uh, treated group. And this one, Terminalia bellarica, is another plan. So uh, this is with insulin, sorry, without insulin group. And this uh, both are with insulin. So muscle and diaphragm uh, without insulin. Here with insulin, muscle and diaphragm. We can two different muscles. We have selected. And uh, for example, the, for uh, if you see, uh, 3,021 is them uh, uh, without insulin in the, in the muscle, whereas in diaphragm, uh, 2,148. Whereas uh, if you see the with presence of insulin the, in the muscle, the absorption of glucose, C14 glucose is higher, uh, almost doubled, uh, around 60 percentage. 6,867 from 3,000 to 6,867. Uh, 6, in diaphragm also, the level is increased from uh, 2,100 and here it is again 6,000. 
where, where the other plant is terminable uh, 2000 is uh, without insulin and uh, here again double but when compared to uh, uh, eagle marmolus the absorption is less in terminalia bellarica so uh, this is the way we can easily find out whether the glucose mm -hmm. is absorbed in the muscle by using the drug treatment okay. Yes, how do we do that? So next one is uh, measurement. How we measure the uh, glucose transporter protein in the muscle. So already we have the muscle, and we have isolated muscle, and uh, uh, in that muscle, whether the glucose protein is increased or not. Okay, for that, we homogenize the muscle again, and using growth and EDTA buffer, and finally, we can filter. So for this, we can take again a treated as well as non-treated animal. That means um, uh, uh, eagle mammalus drug treated as well as non-treated because for comparison. Okay, then remove the insoluble mater material from the uh, solution, homogenized solution, then diffuse in 10,000 RPM, then estimate the group for protein by ELISA method. So for that, there is a ready-made kit is available, uh, already pre-coated uh, plates are available, and different concentration of the homogenate is added. That means we can measure the protein in the homogenate, and the, based on the protein content, we can add into the well. For example, 10 microgram, uh, 20 microgram, different concentration of protein is added into the well, and the group for antibody also added into the well, then incubator for two hours. So after two hours, the anti-rat IgG antibody, the peroxidase conjugate will be added, then plates were sealed for uh, and incubated again 30 minutes at room temperature. Then finally, we remove the uh, uh, solution from the empty the, solu uh, uh, the wells and wash with the TMB. Uh, then again, uh, in the empty well, add the substrate, uh, uh, then incubated again for 15 minutes at room temperature, You uh, use, uh, kept on the plate shaker. Then finally, we can add the stop solution. Uh, the measurement of the uh, solution was uh, uh, done by ELISA reader, plate reader, the opti using the optical density of 450 nanometer. So based on the optical density concentration, we can uh, say that the percentage of uh, group 4 protein, so whether the group 4 protein is increased or not. Okay. So this is a result of, uh, this is a first line thing, uh, one is the uh, group, and uh, this is an agile marmolos, eagle marmolos treated group. So once the uh, protein level 10, 20, 40, and 80, once the protein level is increasing, based on that, the group 4 level also increased. Whereas the uh, terminalia bellerica is red line as well as the control without treatment is in blue line. Both are not increasing based, uh, based on the increase in protein concentration, but it's increasing, but not up to the level of uh, the eagle mammalus. So the, we can conclude that the eagle mammalus treatment will increase the group 4 protein level. So once we uh, say that once the uh, group 4 level increase, automatically the glucose absorption will be increased into the cell, right? Uh, so coming to the conclusion, therapeutically, the glucose transporter isoform GLUT4, GLUT4, uh, I am concentrating mainly on GLUT4 because it is worked on the uh, uh, skeletal muscle, right? So it could be a crucial target to treat insulin resistant. Since the GLUT4 is an, an insulin dependent in isoform, which is responsible for most insulin stimulated glucose uptake, right? So naturally occurring bioactive commons or uh, the, the phytochemicals, known as a cures for insulin resistance and also suppress the disease need for more research. Because we already know that some uh, phytochemicals uh, act on insulin resistance, but we have more research to be done, which action, which, which signaling pathway will affect and which will trigger right, like that. So a, a number of phytochemicals um, evaluated for their anti diabetic uh, properties in insulin signaling pathway also, and also group of protein have been discussed and reviewed here. So there are a lot of literature review I um, mentioned here and different phytochemicals are reviewed on different signaling pathway, how the uh, signaling pathway is affected by the, or enhanced by the uh, production of the GLUT4 protein. Then some of these phytochemicals display very significant effect on that. And uh, some dietary composition of bioactive natural compound reduce the risk of insulin resistance due to GLUT4 impairment in skeletal muscle and adipose tissues also. Okay. So additionally, phytochemical therapy perhaps um, offer a new therapeutic approach because uh, till we till date we know that we have uh, insulin, we have uh, uh, bigonates, metformin, and different uh, chemicals as well as phytochemicals. But phytochemicals, if it will trigger the GLUT4 production, and this is a different method of uh, or different approach for the uh, cure for type 2 diabetes or facilitate the greater effect of current treatments. So uh, if research, more research on GLUT4 uh, or enhance, how to enhance the GLUT4 production, and it will be a different part of uh, uh, different achievement for type 2 diabetic patients, I think. 
Okay, thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you all participants as well as the uh, other uh, keynote speakers for uh, for the wonderful seminar, attending the wonderful seminar. Thank you. Any questions you can ask or we can go for chat box also I can answer. Any question from modern side? Thank you. So thank you so much for your informative session. I guess there are no questions. Thank you very much. Maybe in a new topic, that's why. Okay, anyway, you can contact. Uh, my contact number is given here in this, uh, 944-7171-808. Or you can mail me, uh, mcsabu74 at uh, gmail.com. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Welcome. Now, I would like to welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. Lee Sing Wee, Associate Professor from University Malaysian Keltan Jelly Campus, Malaysia, to deliver his keynote presentation. Sir, please. I, I cannot share the, the, my presentation. Okay, okay. No, how do I get the background? Just give us a moment, please. Give a logo. No, give a logo. Shit. Latest one. Eleven fifteen over, no. 11.39 will over, I think. 21. Oh, no, no, no. They change it. How? Oh. Again.
Hi, have a nice day to everyone. My name is Yi Xiong Wei. Currently is a uh, associate professor from uh, University of Malaysia, Kelantan. So today I would like to present uh, my topic. It's about the recent advance of sustainable agriculture um, antimicrobial agents, phytobiotics application in cup farming. So cup farming is a popular aquaculture activity that provides affordable protein sources and job opportunities to many people worldwide. As cup farming intensifying, uh, farmers face major issues such as uh, rising feed costs and excessive antibiotic usage. As there is an urgent need to explore alternative resources to ensure sustainability of cup farming industry. One of the promising resources is phytobiotics that possess various properties benefit for cup production. Furthermore, most of phytobiotics are derived from agricultural waste that is abundant and cheap, but some phytobiotics are produced commercially and available in the market. The main topics of today is uh, highlight the sources, characteristics of phytobiotics, the usefulness of phytobiotics in improving growth performance, feed utilization efficiency, antioxidant activity, and health of carbs against diseases. Furthermore, the recent methods of administration of phytobiotics such as through feeding, marketing, and intrapreneurial injection in farming are worthy because along tilapia and stream are the main aquaculture species that make up 50% of the total world aquaculture production in 2018. The first cut farming was reported uh, in the 1,500 years ago and continues to be cultured in 123 countries today with uh, 28.9 million tons productions with the value uh, around uh, 61.6 billion US dollar in 2018. The common cup production alone exists 4,000 tons or 7.7 .7 world total aquaculture production in 2018. China, China has remained the leading cup producer in the world since 1997 with 5.7 million tons of cup production in 2018, followed by India and Bangladesh. The major cup species farm worldwide are grass cup, silver cup, uh, common cup, behead cup, and katla. Furthermore, cup production is expected to increase in the coming years due to the rising global market demands. However, there are several issues in cup farming they have limited the expansion of carp production. Carp is a huge... Uh, there are several issues in carp farming. Carp farming is susceptible to huge loss due to disease outbreak. When carp production is affected, it, it will lead to loss of income and employment among farmers. Traditionally, Fish farmers depend on antibiotics to mitigate disease outbreaks, but these practices have led to over reliance and uh, antibiotic resistance of pathogenic bacteria in aquaculture site. Therefore, it is essential to identify alternative antimicrobial agents for aquaculture species health management. In addition, many European countries have banned aquaculture products containing antibiotic residue. Photobiotics is a potential solution in improving aquaculture species health and function while minimizing antibiotics 
dependence. Car farming has also become increasingly expensive due to the rising cost of conventional raw material for feed formulation. Feed fee ingredients such as soybean meal, fish meal price continue to rise since these conventional raw materials are also utilized in feed formulation of other livestock. Thus, an alternative to the current long raw materials for feed formulation is urgently needed to maintain the cost of cut production and ensure the stability and sustainable of the cut farming industry. Currently, farmers are looking at phytobiotics as an alternative resource to conventional raw materials for cut farming for safe and sustainable cut production. So what is phytobiotics? Phytobiotics is referred to the plant extract derived biotic compounds, whole plant or part of a plant utilization as feed additive or raw material for feed formulation to improve livestock production. Feeding entrepreneurial Injection and buff invention are available option to deliver this quality to the fish. Viral studies have revealed the potential of phytobiotics in improving cup pro performance, feed utilization, antioxidant activity, innate immune response, and cup health against disease. Well, we we will uh, further discuss in this topic. So, phytobiotics are also referred to a group of plant based of uh, products or compounds that can benefit animal farming, including human. Phytobiotics can be found naturally and abundant in vegetable, fruit, herb, legume, and essential oil. They can be used whole plant or extract their biotic compounds such as phenolic compounds, carotenoid, alkaloid, and many more. The presence of biotic compounds in the phytobiotic will determine uh, the characters of uh, uh, phytobiotics. For example, the presence of phenolic compounds in phytobiotic can contribute to antioxidant property of phytobiotics. Besides, phytobiotics were reported to possess other huge characteristics uh, such as anti inflammation and also antimicrobial. Therefore, phytobiotics were widely used in animal production as growth promoter and prophylactic agent to increase animal production. So next, we will discuss on the role of phytobiotic in cup in improving cup growth performance. Phytobiotic is a growth promoter and a protein replacement for conventional raw materials like fish and soybean meal. This plant-based material positively impact the gut microflora and encourage digestive enzyme secretions. For example. Phytobiotic include include let rap seed cake, defect rubber seed meal, and a combination of rap seed and cholera meal. This alternative and protein rich feed stuffs can help reduce operational costs in cup farming by using as fish meal protein replacement in feeds, fish feed formulation. However, not all plant-based products are beneficial in fish farming. Fish feed high in starch content has a vice effect on fish growth performance. For example, as reported by Tan et al. report that the fish feed has with high starch concentration negatively affect growth performance of gibble cup. Uh, gibble cup is one of the uh, gold fish. Eh? Uh, thus, fish farmer has set, had, must select the appropriate plant-based products such as phytobiotics for their aquaculture species. 
Many studies reported on the roles of probiotics in enhancing a growth performance. For example, like a lean and all claim that fish feed consistently of 40% of wheat meal could promote fish growth since it is rich in amino acid of lysine. Meanwhile, amicanin and uh, uh, and the uh, Firo revealed that the uh, uh, supplement with the uh, basic ethanol extract could improve the growth of growth performance of uh, common cup, uh, Cyprinus capio. In addition, other phytobiotics that positively influence aquaculture species growth performance are uh, fenugreek seed meal, palm, big palm extract, cholera, juniper berry, uh, white button mushroom powder, cucumin, uh, wheat meal. Uh, moreover, certain uh, phytobiotics such as fenugreek seed meal exhibit additional benefits by reducing stress and improving growth performance. On the top of that, phytobiotics uh, such as fenugreek seed meal Cholera, juniper, uh, berry oil, curcumin are abundant, uh, making them accessible to most farmers. So next topic we will discuss on the role of phytobiotic in promoting cup feed utilization efficiency. Feed utilization efficiency is a crucial in determining uh, successful uh, cut farming. Phytobiotic application improve nutrient availability and digestibility, contributing to enhance feed convention and protein synthesis. Various phytobiotics like or oregano, essential oil, curcumin, uh, grape, uh, flour, and others essential oil are easily applicable in cup farming. Nevertheless, these phytobiotics are only useful when the aquaculture species nutritional requirements are fulfilled. High feed utilization efficiency will result in a low feed convention rate or known as FCR, thus boosting the income of a cup farmer. So the next topic we will discuss on the roles of phytobiotic in enhancing cup antioxidant activity. Numerous studies have revealed the potential of phytobiotics in enhancing antioxidant activities in cup. Antioxidants are essential for protection against free radicals and oxidative stress. Moreover, some phytobiotics are inexpensive in the market making them accessible to most cup farmers. Example, uh, phytobiotics that promote antioxidant in cup are cholera. Uh, second is garlic. Third one is alvin. Then uh, the uh, fourth one is grape flour. None, nonetheless, inadequate uh, resources and the high processing cost of the current technology are limitation to the phytobiotic application in cup farming. So next we will discuss another two uh, subtopic: the role of phytobiotic in activating an innate renewal uh, re response in cups and also antioxidant activity of phytobiotics. Like higher vertebrate, the fish immune system consists of two components. One is inner immunity and one is uh, an adaptive immunity. The first line of defense in fish is innate immunity during the pathogenic invasion. In aquaculture, the most reliable disease management is through immunostimulant administration. Some photobiotics act as immunostimulant and promote antioxidant activity in cups but do not contribute to their growth performance. 
For example, like a Perry, uh, they reveal the common cup, Cyprinus capil, received oat leaf uh, extracts and medicated the feet for 60 days. 60 days enhance, can enhance antioxidant activity and promote their immune system but did not inform carb growth rate. Generally, phytobiotic with high antioxidant property can stimulate the fish immune system. Some phytobiotics are low cost and easy to access, such as garlic, grape, flour, oven, and turmeric powder, which can be used to boost carb immune response and increase fish production. However, however certain plant-based products must be processed before they can be used as an aquaculture feed additive, uh, such as uh, guava leaf uh, and dry lemon peel. These agriculture waste are subjected to drying and converted into powder form before being used as photobiotic to enhance immune system of uh, so next topic, we will discuss on the antioxidant activity of phytobiotics. Plant-based phytobiotics are rich in antioxidant with different total antioxidant capacity, which will determine the potential of, of the plant as a source of antioxidants. Bioactive compounds such as phenols, phenolic acid, tannin, uh, ligand, uh, determine the plants total antioxidant capacity. Many scientific approach has been developed to quantify the total antioxidant capacity of plant extract. The main attraction of phytobiotics is their abundance and low cost, making them a source of antioxidant feed additive for aquaculture to enhance aquaculture species health and production. Nevertheless, uh, Fish farmers prefer non-toxic material for the aquaculture species, high antioxidant activity and low dosage and inexpensive fish feed formulation. So next topic, uh, we will discuss on the role of phytobiotics in stimulating uh, carbs uh, health against disease. Uh. So, Morte Aromonas Sacetimia, MAS, caused by Aromonas hydrophila, and Spring Viremia, or carb virus, are two diseases that pose a major threat and lead to significant economy loss in carb farming. Various studies have attempted the search for potential treatments of photobiotics against these diseases. Traditionally, fish farmers use antibiotics in carb farming health management but a recent discovery suggested phytobiotics as potential antimicrobial agent to stimulate a cup resistance against disease like such as like MAS and SVCE. Furthermore, some of the proposed phytobiotics are commercially available in the market, thus highly accessible to fish farmers to be applied instantly in their farm to prevent disease outbreak. For example, potential of phytobiotic against diseases garlic, herbum uh, sativum, uh, topioca, spirulina, uh, and cucumis. Other phytobiotics were also found effective in disease control but not readily available in the market. So, based on the literature survey, only one study of using dipping to expose phytobiotics to cup species. Although the study show promising results, but it is not practiced to use in the large scale such as in certain form and exposure phytobiotics to cut fish via feeding is the most cost effective way. So next topic we discuss phytobiotics combination with other supplement for disease resistance and growth rate improvement of carbs. Clearly, studies on synergistic uh, effects of phytobiotic with other supplements are still leaking. Today, only one synergistic study has been conducted on fermented uh, astragalus 
and later bacillus. In promoting carp, uh, common carp, Cyprinus carpio growth performance. Therefore, more synergistic study improving, in, involving phytobiotics with other supplements should be carried out to enhance carp farming uh, production in the future. So last but not least, we come to the conclusion and recommendation. The study of application of phytobiotics in carp are well documented in the literature. Phytobiotics are abandoned and in expensive where can where some can be found from agricultural waste and some are commercially available in the market. Phytobiotics are were well found can help to improve growth performance of cut farming as protein source refinement and serve as prebiotic to increase digestibility of the fish. This will reduce reliance on conventional protein sources such as fish meal and soybean meal in cut farming. Recent study will reveal the huge potential of phytobiotics in modulating immune system and resist resistance of cut to against various diseases. The novel findings show phytobiotics are ready to alternate antibiotic as prophylactic agent in cut farming health management application this less ecological footprint prophylactic agent in cut farming can gain confidence of consumer to the aquaculture product however dosage and duration effect will will the problem in any administration of phytobiotic in cut farming different dosage and duration of phytobiotic application in cut farming will generate generated variable results besides uh, experimental condition and the sources of phytobiotic may also play roles in determining, determining the effectiveness of phytobiotics in cut uh, farming. The administrations of uh, phytobiotic in cut farming can be applied through orally intrapenetral injection of buffing or buffing. Although intrapenetral method and, and buffing was found more effective, but the method need high level works. Uh, hence, most of the study recommended using phytobiotics as feed additive in cut farming. Furthermore, oral administration of phytobiotic is non stressful method, practical and suitable to all sides of fish. In conclusion, phytobiotics are rich in nutrient uh, and bioactive compounds that help promote fish growth, digestibility, antioxidant activities, immunity, and resistance to diseases. Thus, this plant-based fish is a promising raw material for future aquaculture. However, most of the, of the phytobiotics are derived from agriculture waste Thus, utilization these materials improve agriculture management and sustainability. Further study need to be carried out on the potential phytobiotic by screening their toxicity as prerequisite for their application in cut farming in order to produce data based on appropriate dosage as a dosage dosage guideline to cut. Fish farmer. So that's, that's all for today. So thank you for listening. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your informative session. Uh, participants, is there any questions for Dr. Lee? Okay. 
Thank you. I guess there are no questions from the participants, sir. Thank you so much. So we would like to continue with our next keynote speaker, Ms. Mamta Vasim, Director and CEO from Meekoksha Ayurveda Wellness and Retreats, Gorgon, Haryana, India. Ma'am, please. Thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today at the Start Herb 2022 um, virtual conference. Um, also, I'd like to thank the Association of Pharmaceutical Research and D.Y. Patel University. Having lived in New Bombay for a span of time when I was with Reliance, I'm very familiar with the D.Y. Patel University. It's a pleasure to have them organize this today. Um, I'd also like to thank Mr. Rudra Bhanu Satpati and Dr. Rakesh Somani for their welcome address. And I managed to hear Dr. Lee Seong Wai, and I think it's wonderful to see the kind of speakers you all have got together. Um, I'm going to have to tell you that I'm speaking about a completely different topic. And um, it's about entrepreneurship and the struggle um, when you're trying to sell herbs in India or abroad, if you're not an established company and you're small, um, how the task could be for entrepreneurships in the country, which is a very generic topic. And it's not going to be as scientific or as informative as some of the topics you've had. Um, I think we've got our background reversed, which is unusual. No, so, Mama. So I'm going to now present the screen in any case, and I'm sharing this topic, which I shall just be starting. One minute. I'm trying to share one second. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, ma'am. The presentation? Yes, ma'am, that's visible. All right, wonderful, okay. All right, so we're talking today in my session specifically about resilience in a changing world. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about the journey of Mikosha first. Um, I will, of course, walk you through that introduction and entrepreneur's journey, um, what kind of a challenging world we live in and the entrepreneur, which is again generic, and how you'll have different phases in when you're building a company, uh, the building of an organization and what it takes when you move small to big, because that's a big jump that most entrepreneurs tend to make a mistake with. Um, so once again, I'd like to reiterate, there is nothing scientific in my presentation. I'm a business person with a hospitality background. I do not have a scientific background. Um, but that said, neither did a lot of people who built a lot of other companies. And you need a little bit of everything to succeed, especially a team in today's modern world. So uh, what is Mikosha? Mikosha is a healthcare company, a wellness company. It was... Um, it's an Ayurvedic retreat where we offer um, AI-led assessments and doctor's consultations and create 100% natural botanicals for at-home use. Um, this is linked with our products that we have, uh, which is the main retreat. Now, what is uh, Mikosha? It's a Sanskrit word combined um, of an English word, me, and uh, Kosha. Uh, which is the layers of the body. So we put these two words together to create what we truly feel is an immersive, um, introspective internal journey. Uh, this is what our retreat looks like. It is not in Haryana, it's in Kerala. I truly think the best treatments and the, the, the science that has been left behind from a thousand years of Ayurveda in Kerala is unbeatable and is a, is a pleasure and a treasure that um, most people across the country world are still not aware of. So we still have a lot to do in terms of penetration, though uh, the two states that did the best job in terms of tourism have been Rajasthan and Kerala. Um, Mikosha went and started with retreats, then moved into teleconsultation and botanicals. Today, we have um, eight different botanicals and are moving into some skincare products as well. But this is where we began from. And while your product and what it contains is immensely important today, how you present it and how you market it is becoming an equally large part of the game, as all of us know. So while you need to have the technical side, I would say 50% goes to that, but the balance 50 is all a question of how you market your products. 
Now, how is an entrepreneur's journey and what do you need as you go through this journey? Because we have companies that have been here for 50 years, 40 years, 20 years, and some who are just starting out. And technology has changed the game completely. So um, the most important thing in an entrepreneur's journey is resilience because it keeps you going through the goods and the downs. Um, it's the ability to bounce back from difficult events. And we, if anybody can do it, entrepreneurs can do it. Because without that, to your team as well as to a client, it will all sound like a catastrophe. Failure keeps coming our way and we have to be able to get back from it really fast because it feels like a point of no return. And I think these two years of COVID have taught us that. So does individual resilience influence entrepreneurial success? Science has proven and studies have proven that entrepreneurs have higher resilience levels than other populations and that resilience is one of the biggest factors that can predict entrepreneurial success. So like I'm saying again and again, because I'm getting the feeling that there are a lot of technical uh, sessions and a lot of technical knowledge has gone into creating this um, uh, one, this conference, this two-day conference. But if you do not have resilience, and if you are not going to be prepared that there'll be times you're wiped out and you have to start again, and there are times you'll see ups and downs, there are times you'll see small sales and big sales, um, you're not going to really be able to build an organization and all the knowledge that we carry is of no use thereafter. What drives resilience? Now, resilience is inherent to a successful entrepreneur. It's what makes a good entrepreneur tick. And here are four good reasons for us to keep calm and carry on. And um, I'm sure some of these lessons, very difficult way was COVID, but we learned it through COVID. It's a science and there are three dimensions of resilience. Your hard hardiness, your resourcefulness and your optimism. Because all entrepreneurs start small and have to have this every day, an attitude of I can do it, a smile that you put on your face and carry on, because that's the face your clients are going to see. Um, whether you're an online company, an e-commerce company selling drugs, whether you're selling in India, or you're selling your products overseas, or whether you are a resort, or whether you have moved it backward or forward integration. Resourcefulness, because you won't always have a, a big amount of money with you when you start off, or if you have, you have to think very carefully where you're going to spend it. And optimism is, of course, linked to all of these. So these are the three components that I found. And in my journey as an entrepreneur, because most of my life I've been working in the corporate world. And now as I have become an entrepreneur, I realize how important this is and how lucky are those people born in the state of Gujarat who have seen business in their blood from the time they're children. And therefore, they don't get stressed off, off uh, stressed up with the small things and they don't sweat the small things. They're able to show hardiness, resourcefulness, optimism, in a certain sense, a thick skin and bounce back. Remember, you learn as you go. The trick I remember, and my husband was the founder of this company. Unfortunately, I lost him to COVID, but there are some important lessons yeah. in his voice I hear quite often. Uh, he says, it's best to, as an entrepreneur, to make a mistake, shut that business line or that thought process and just recover from it fast and then start another line of business. Uh, you will succeed with a certain model when it hits with the target audience at the correct point of time. So if there's a, a, a kind of a, a thing you're making, it could be way ahead of its time and you've made it, it's a beautiful product, but because it's ahead of its time, the market is not ready for it. So sometimes it's better to learn from those mistakes, fall fast and forward, restart and keep learning as you go. But don't make the same mistake a second time. The next thing is remember that it's worked before. So many people have tried things and it's taken a lot before they've tasted success. There's some people who've gone and had success in their 60s. May I request people in the background to please keep their, uh, their, their um, instruments on mute? There's a lot of bad here. Thank you very much. Then, of course, most important, believe in yourself because it starts from the top. When you are enthusiastic and you believe in yourself and your product, it will infuse everyone around you. And it's better to have few products and make a mark than have a multitude of products in that chaos and nobody knows what are you actually selling. Um, today, earlier, KPI was a word that we used in management circles, which meant key performance indicators. But in the new leadership norm, KPI is 
whether it's your target audience or whether it's the teams you're working with, even if you're just a production unit, even then you have teams working with you. So you've got to keep your people interested. You've got to keep them informed. You've got to keep them involved and thereby keep them inspired. So this is definitely the new KPI. Um, most of you would have heard of a VUCA world. This is the world we live in. For a long time, this has been a common, common verbiage, VUCA, V-U-C-A. Uh, it's a world filled with volatility. You can see just the petrol prices and one war that takes place in another part of the world threatening to turn into World War III. And that volatility has upset the entire world's um, inflation and entire world's prices, taking all our raw materials and ingredients through the roof. And that also creates uncertainty. Let us just take the running of a retreat. We didn't know whether we should open, shouldn't open, when should we open after COVID. And there is no book to tell you what is right or wrong. And the whole world behaved differently. Different countries recovered at different times. Different states recovered at different times. Kerala as a state, for example, took an inordinate long time to recover from COVID. And they kept being the first to get hit by COVID uh, repeatedly. Um, there is complexity. There is AI hitting you. There is regulations in the world, especially in herbs. There will be increasing regulation. Um, the more sometimes these regulations are genuine. Sometimes the regulations are also as a protectionist measure from certain countries who don't want your products to go into them. So we will be dealing with that complexity, and then we're dealing with ambiguity. People, um, there is nothing called loyalty any longer. You can't expect people to work with you forever. So with a world that is V for volatility, U for uncertainty, C for complexity, ambiguity is VUCA. It's a VUCA world. How do you as an entrepreneur go through the VUCA world and succeed? Again, um, what drives us even more crazy, as I said, this is the VUCA world. We're just trying to struggle. It's There's a 40% volatility on in the current market. You can see environmental issues also becoming very big. Uncertainty, complexity, all of that. And if I were to take a world map of the kind of things and the kind of issues that are only adding to uh, this VUCA world, climate change, renewable energy, um, inequality, all of these are going to impact each of us over here today when we are working in any part of the country, whether we are exporting or whether we are making things for the local market, things like climate change and renewable energy will definitely matter to us sanitation and rules of where we dispose things and how we consume things will also matter. And creating global partnerships to become small, uh, to become big, rather than think, uh, being small and disappearing will become important. Water availability. So there is so much that's happening that to keep a track of all of this, a normal entrepreneur may say, why should I even start? But, but we can figure out what we can control. And therefore we must look at the circle of influence and the circle of concern. The circle of influence, so there are things happening in the world which are definitely very important and that's our circle of concern. There are the global trends, the economic policies of the country that keep changing. Sometimes there'll be some tax, sometimes there'll be some other tax. In the middle of something you've produced and the prices change, your raw material changes and you still have to make that work and you still have to uh, deliver towards an end date that you committed on. There is, there is a pressure on capital, uh, the interest rates keep deferring. The market is changing. There is so much competition in the market, which puts you onto a margin pressure and puts pressure on the price that you finally uh, put your product at. Um, the market is so diversified. India is such a rapidly changing market that while you think you understood the market abroad, recession is hitting the market abroad and their choice of how much they could buy is changing by the day. Similarly, in India, our market is changing so much because we used to think we had a middle class, uh, the rich and the ultra rich, and then you had the poor. But even within the poor, there are levels. Even within the middle class, there's lower middle class, middle class. So there are thousands of layers forming in India. The, the, the patterns, buyer, buyer patterns, behavior in cities, in towns, in villages is changing. And technology has become a huge leveler of all this. So you can't control that, but what can you control is called your circle of influence. So you choose what can I impact? I can impact the quality of my products. So that's product values. I can create a very strong vision and mission. I can create a very strong team. I can create a very good marketing uh, um, range of marketing, which is 
uh, brick and mortar as well as uh, uh, online. And there are companies that have moved one way or the other. For example, Lenskart. Lenskart began as an online glass company, but then decided to create a brick and mortar presence and they have opened shops all over. So now they are combined. It's a hybrid model because they realize both are important. Take another company that sells a lot of herbs, um, forest essentials. Did someone want to say something? Can I request her to please keep yourself on mute? It disturbs the others. There's someone in the background that's speaking. Could you please put that on mute? There's a lot of background sound. Thank you. So um, if you look at Forest Essentials, for example, it began, its backward integration was a different story. They had a resort. They had a place that people would come to stay. And then they merged and decided to create a products company. And then they've gone totally in that direction. And they are, they are, on, they are a brick and mortar company that is now also available online. So, um, and you'll see so many products like that that have choose, chosen different ways of moving because you've chose, you've decide, decided what your values are and what can I influence. And it's also important for an entrepreneur to decide, are you here for the short term or the long term? If you're here for the long term, then your strategies will be different and you will have to have deeper pockets to take the hit. So therefore know what you can control is very important and thereby then uh, take it forward from there. Um, look at your profitable startup ideas. Take all your ideas, take a whiteboard exercise, brainstorm with um, young people and older people. Go to MBA institutes and bounce your ideas off them. You'd be surprised at the sharpness of the young mind in India today. And then focus on your growing category or categories only and pilot it out. Look for an underserved demand. Look at your target audience and say, where is, uh, instead of being one more product in a very crowded space, how do I find something which is unserved uh, yet, underserved yet, and let me try to fulfill that demand. Now, either you have to play the quality game or you have to pay the cost game, play the cost game. Either you make something better or you make something cheaper, only then you're going to tap the market. And an Indian market is ruthless in terms of its pricing. So either, therefore you get into the cost game and become the best product at a particular price point or make the product that is so phenomenal that there's nobody in the, in the country or the world that can actually match your product. So it's the quality game or it's the price game, decide that. Um, validate your startup idea, do invest in a lot of technology and a lot of research, and then start with your MVP, which is your minimum viable product. But remember, all through this, it is your customer that is the at the heart. Message, I will get 1230 now start person. Can you please keep it on mute? Whoever That's spoke to you. Can I please request the participants to keep this on mute so that you could hear? Okay. Now, there are four types. So when you're building an organization, like I said, you need market stability and you need financial stability and you won't always get it. It won't be there. If you have a very good market that you've already got and you are financially stable, you've created a company that's a fortress. But if you find that the market stability is very high and uh, and you're, you don't have financially financial stability, then you must take small risks and be very careful and only go for a certain segment. If you have, if there is a low market stability, but a high financial stability, at least you'll be prepared for the ups and downs that come. But if you don't have financial stability and you don't have marketability, then you are at risk and you must be highly, highly innovative with a lot of unique selling propositions, a USP that allows you to go ahead. Um, I'm not gonna go into great detail on this, but you all know that every single thing you present has opportunities and threats. So you should do a, a task analysis of your business to figure out where are you and what are you going to do to make it better. And there are times when you reach this level of being a very strong company, it's time to start looking at mergers and acquisitions. Either you acquire a company or become part of a larger company because it is a ruthless cat-eat-dog world out there. Now, how do you go about building an organization? It's pretty simple to build a resilient organization. Most important, it takes a leader at the center and a very strong operations, strong finance, a strong line of revenues that you have some visibility into through trend analysis using AI and other tools, and then you build it. But at the center of everything and at every part of your pillar on which everything starts, starts is your customer 
and at the center is a good team that you put together. Thereafter, there are phases in an organization. There's the early startup phase, the middle phase, and the late phase. And what you do and how you do things differs. In a small organization, everybody does everything. As you start becoming bigger, you need to start creating very strong standard operating procedures, um, process maps, um, ways of doing things, and an extremely strong training organization. Uh, I spoke about backward and forward integration. Uh, very briefly, what we've done is we've chosen to go uh, with backward integration in that we began the retreat and then decided let's make the retreat very strong and keep the products business not that big, let it grow organically. We're not going to go the whole bang and make it so huge, whereas some companies might want to come out with a big bang with lots of products. And then after they've made that say, okay, now we want to have a place where we build this. So then they will build their own factory, then they might go further backward and say, I want to do uh, something else or they may go sideways. So you could, as you become larger, choose either forward, backward or even sideway integration to uh, move your products and marketing strategy that I've become big. I, I'm going siloed, but I also want to take a larger part of the market pie. Uh, I can see Pigeon doing that. If you've heard of the company Pigeon, they make a lot of um, pressure cookers and other things. And just the other day, I saw them advertising bulbs. So that is a sideway integration. They are moving into other products um, to capitalize on having created a very good database and a very strong distributorship uh, presence. So take your strengths and be aware of your SWOT analysis. What are your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and then build a business. And lastly, in summary, um, if an entrepreneur thought that it's just a straight journey and I have to slog, 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 and I'm going to get there and success, um, remember, all you get is bumps. You go up, down, success goes upside down, and you go all over the place, pretty much like my screensaver, which also got reversed. So success is not linear. It is not easy. It's a lonely journey, um, but that's how it is. So that said, um, I'd like to thank you all, all of you all, especially Start Herb 2022, 20, uh, for allowing me to present um, how threats that come our way uh, move forward, how we at Mikosha um, and the whole of Kerala had only foreigners coming and now how suddenly we've had to rely on the Indian market and what a beautiful switch that's been and how much learning has come out of it as an entrepreneur for me personally. Um, and as people take products, I'm also learning so much about um, Indian behavioral patterns and bio behavioral patterns. And I think it's a fascinated journey, fascinating journey and it never ends. So all an entrepreneur can say is I do this because of passion and um, may I enjoy the journey because it's not about the destination. It's all about the journey. So that's what I had to talk about. Like I said in the beginning, it's not technical. It's about a HR professional, a hotelier professional who then became an HR professional and is today an entrepreneur and has a retreat, which has then worked into backward integration with products. We have eight and we have 12 products. And this is Mamta Vasan from Mikosha. Happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. Over to the organizers. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your informative session. Pleasure. Okay. Uh, participants, is there any questions for the ma'am? We have a very quiet audience. They haven't been asking questions at all. Uh, can I ask? Can I ask one question? Certainly, please. Uh, Ma'am, uh, how would I uh, create my own product? As I am uh, an Ayurveda practitioner uh, since twelve years, more than twelve years. Okay. Uh, doctor, you have so much knowledge. You're carrying a wealth of knowledge with you. Um, start documenting it. Start growing your own herbs and start small because um, you are a practitioner. Start making your own thing. Make a very smart little label. Use Canva. Simple tools like Canva. We, we need to be a little conversant with other skills in today's modern world. Create your own labels, um, but check the laws and the licenses around it. And at least to your own patients, you can start giving it. When it's effective by word of mouth, it will grow. 
So uh, that is one. Otherwise, you need to start marketing. You need to start a production. You can either do the production with your, yourself or you can outsource the production um, depending upon how, how much money you have to invest because a lot gets spent on marketing. In today's world, the amount that gets on spent on marketing is sometimes far more than the actual cost of the product. The product costs this much, the marketing is this much, the packing is this much. You Again, I don't want to take names, but if you look at Forest Essentials, every time I pick up a Forest Essentials product, the product is very, very good They're, because they have kept their manufacturing under their control. But the packaging, it's extremely expensive packaging. And then every time you buy a product, remember, you're also paying for the brick and mortar store. If you walked into a Forest Essential stores, I have worked with the Oberoi, so I know what it feels like. I feel like I walked into an Oberoi hotel when I've walked into a Forest Essential store. And it's a success story. It's a huge success story. But it takes time. I don't know if that helps answer your question. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you for asking. I'm sure you'll do very well. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, there is a question from chat box, ma'am. Yeah, I will be reading yeah. out. Yes. Ma'am, yeah. any license required for her herbal enterprises? Yes, there are licenses required. There are sites on the net that will tell you which licenses. I don't want to comment on the license. It's getting updated. So you need to check your own information on the net. Of course, licenses are required. You can't just produce something and start doing it. Hello, ma'am. I want to ask you something. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, Venisha, Ben, you're aud audible. Yeah. Uh, actually, ma'am, uh, I was uh, manufacturing uh, herbal oil and uh, there are other products also which are under pipeline. The, in, uh, the problem that I faced is that initially the sale was very good. Like uh, people getting effects from the oil and the mouth-to-mouth -mouth marketing was uh, very effective at that time. Mm -hmm. But now, though the effect is so good, uh, I'm not getting the uh, particular amount of customer or uh, target audience. So any reasons behind that or? Uh, um, they could, there could be a multitude of reasons, uh, Venisha Ben. One is that it's competition. Remember, like I said, it's a VUCA world out there. Some things are beyond your control. So I think you should also continuously do competition and ana analysis. Uh, go into Amazon, do a competition analysis every six months at least to see what are the products out there, what prices are they selling at, which of them are selling, which of them have orders. And uh, use technology to figure out what is happening because maybe your product, product is highly priced. Maybe it doesn't look as attractive or maybe it's too lowly priced also. Sometimes people, there is something called perceived value. Some people see value uh, in something which costs more. If you give me something for 50 rupees, as a random example, and somebody else is selling the same thing for 500, logically, I will think 500, it must be a very good product. On top of that, if it looks attractive and um, it smells attractive, people tend to take it. So there are five senses, five known senses, and there are many other senses if you go into, in, if you go into, um, into the Gitas or you go into the Upanishads or Vedas, but otherwise, typically most people have five senses. Your product has to appeal to all those senses. So if it's appealing only to the, uh, you know, to, to the feel and touch that, yes, you're applying it and it's giving a good effect, then, um, then that's a problem. That's a problem. So that's why I'd say you will have to do an analysis and a study to figure out, uh, Venisha Ben, please soothe you. That's what. And ma'am, uh, like uh, initially the prod, uh, like uh, to uh, keep the price low, uh, I I didn't uh, choose the very uh, hi-fi or very attractive packaging material. But uh, if I switch to another one, does it impact my uh, manufacture, like uh, my marketing, uh, like my customer? Like the, they have impression that earlier it's supposed to look like this, and now it switched to another look. So the quality of Joshua, Joshua, that depends. I, I mean, Vinisha Ben, that depends on your target audience. If your target audience is from, see, let me give you another example. If I go to a village and I see their walls are painted inside pink and blue and green. Personally, I don't like it. I like white walls. 
and uh, or cream colored walls and plain colors but when you do go to a small town or a small village they love that pink and yellow and green and if if i if we put the walls white they're going to think these people don't have any money that's why they put their walls white so who's going to like which kind of packaging depends on your target audience if you're selling in a very small town the look and feel could be different uh, you don't want an intimidating look and feel but if you're selling to a city audience who today have a lot of choice yes it needs to look a certain taste and a certain way and a certain color scheme and you as a person does impact you're the entrepreneur after all so your taste will also impact it if you try to make something which is way beyond your taste you'll anyway not get it right so either you need a very good graphics designer with you which a small entrepreneur can't afford or you yourself need to have great great aesthetics uh, to appeal to that target audience i think do a study of the market and you will get your answers from that because if you don't do a study you won't know what has changed in the macro environment also we think some things won't sell but uh, side by side a small uh, the small towns are also getting richer and richer so uh, the rich are getting richer the poor are getting poorer social disparities increasing so our market is changing extremely fast by the week what they bought last year in diwali and what people are buying this year in diwali also differs so there's no one answer you will have to study it you will have to do analytics okay ma'am thank you thank you roshni is that good is there any other question from anyone oh uh, yes ma'am there is other question oh there are many people doing this herbal products manufacturing Yes. so how can you keep the prices also there in lot fund invested in licensing packaging and advertising how to control and manage it i am entrepreneur of many herb based products please guide uh your price point will depend first upon competition analysis if you've done a study of the market you have to decide do you want to go high low medium once you've decided your price point you stick to your price point there will be this country is such a big country that so many people are there who will buy it the game is all about marketing you decide i don't want i want i think my product should not be for this market should not be for this market it should be for this market also there is again something in design thinking called personas so you apply design thinking to the entire process where you say my typical buyer is this persona most sometimes what happens is we make the products because we can make the products we make the products because we feel like making the products we make the products because we think it's a great idea but we don't take the target audience into consideration so decide who is your target audience and then try to understand everything about your target audience including their bio behavior then devise that buying channel that appeals to that bio and then market it using that channel so you may be using a shopkeeper channel you may be using a distributor channel you may be using doctors channel you may be using uh, uh partners channels there's so many different channels or you may be selling directly or you may be using e-commerce or a little bit of everything so once you know your target audience how does your target audience buy where do they buy from then make your pie of the markets that you're going to uh, mimansha patel good day thank you so much so yeah. so then you can just uh, then you see okay this is, these are the different segments i'm trying to now where these segments where do they buy from okay these young people nowadays are only buying from their phone these young people are these older people are still going to a shop so then you will know where to put your products and your price is already decided because you've looked at all your material to appeal to this segment i need to spend more on the marketing so i need to get a margin of this much so once you've decided that and you've seen your break even you know what price point to put it at now if you're you're finding that to manufacture it is making it too expensive for the market then you need to go back to the drawing board and again study i need to change my material i need to find a cheaper supplier i need to find a cheaper way of making it but keep a lot of money for marketing yes amar yaar oh thank you ma'am thank you so much for your all the time thank you thank you very much and sorry about the reverse background but it's still start herbal um one <laughs> no, way or the other <laughs> actually it's clear for us it is but when i'm looking at it i'm seeing it in reverse if it's clear it's perfect good
Okay. All right. Thank you very much once again and uh, to the Pharmaceutical Research and DY Patel University and Start Herb 2022. Wish you all success for the conference um, and may you all learn a lot and may you all grow companies that become unicorns in India. Thank you, Ram. Thank you so much you. for joining Bye. us today. Okay, everyone. Next, I will, we will be moving on to our technical sessions. I request all the participants to join their respective halls to start with the technical sessions. Oh, but I don't know. Uh, on your screens, everyone could see at the, the bottom of your screen as a breakout rooms. Kindly join us respective breakout rooms. All the participants, if you are joining from our desktop or PC, at down bottom you could see uh, many options like participants, chat, share screen, record, breakout rooms, reactions and all. So from the breakout rooms, you could join the breakout room to respective halls to say. And if anyone are joining from the mobile, you could see at your... Uh, top corners as a breakout room. From that, you could join. If all the main hall participants stay in this, in this room itself. Thank you. I repeat, like who all the participants uh, have to go to certain breakout rooms, you could see the options uh, if you are joining by PC or Windows, you could see at the down as a taskbar, participants, chat, uh, share screen, record and breakout rooms. From the breakout rooms, you could join your respective breakout room. If anyone are joining from mobile, you could see on your top corners as breakout rooms. From that, you could join your respective breakout rooms. All the main hall participants stay here. Don't join any other breakout room. Thank you. We will start our sessions in a few more minutes.
हेलो यस If anyone are facing issue regard regarding joining the respective halls, kindly drop a message in chat box so that our coordinators will be guiding you. All the main hall participants kindly stay in this hall itself. Okay, okay, all the participants, I welcome you all to the technical session. Now I would like to welcome the session chair, Dr. Rukiana Sultana, Professor and HOD, Department of Pharmacology, Yenipoya Pharmacy College of College and Research Center, Mangalore, India. Dr. Rukiana Sultana, ma'am, could we start with our sessions and presentations, please?
Okay, we will start with our presentations. Now I would like to welcome our presenter, uh, oral presentation by Ripen, Maharishi Markandeshwar Dematubi University, India, on a topic of galatinins emerging neutraceuticals. Hello everyone. Am I visible now? Yes, ma'am, you are visible. Mm -hmm. Is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am, your screen is visible. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Ripen from the Department of Biotechnology, MM Engineering College. Maharishi Markandeshwar Team to the University, Vulana. And my topic is Gallo Talents Emerging Neutraceuticals. Now, what are neutraceuticals? The term neutraceuticals is a combination of two terms, nutrition and pharmaceuticals. So, nutri and ceutical, it becomes neutraceutical. I found two definitions from the neutraceuticals. The first is it is a term to describe any product derived from food sources with extra health benefits in addition to basic nutrition value found in the food. The second definition says that the products isolated from herbal products, dietary supplements, specific diet and processed foods like soups, concoctions, and which have nutrition, but they can also be used in medicine are called nutrition. Now coming to my topic, which is gallotenins. What are gallotenins? Gallotenins belong to a group of polyphenolic compounds called tenins. These tenins are of two types, proenthrocyanidin and hydrocephal tenins. The tenins are nothing but these are the secondary plant metabolites which are produced against the plant defense mechanism in various parts of plants. These tenons are present in almost every plant part from stem, bark, leaf, fruit, and even seeds. Now, the hydrocephal tenons in particular are of two kinds, elagi tenons and gallo tenons. The elagi tenons, they are composed of elagic acid and hexahydroxydiphenylphenic acid plus glucose. Whereas the gallo tenons, as the name suggests, are made up of gallic acid moiety and glucose or some other sugar. Now, these gallo tenons have very, very good therapeutic potential. Coming to the structure of the gallo tenons, it's very clear from the figure that gallo tenons is made up of a glucose moiety or a sugar moiety which is esterified to a galloid group. Now, this galloid group can vary from 1 to 12. This galloid group is nothing but it is a gallic acid moiety. Now, if we discuss about the examples and the sources of the gallotin, first coming to the example. Now, these are monogalloid glucose, digalloid glucose, in monogaloid glucose, there is only one galloid moiety. In digaloid glucose, as the name suggests, there are two glucose, two galloid moieties. Similarly, in tetragaloid glucose, there are four galloid moieties linked to a glucose molecule. And in pentagaloid glucose, there are five galloid moieties. Other examples of gallotenins are genalin A, genalin B, genalin C. Meplexin and hemamelitenin. Now, coming to the sources of these yellow tenons, these are bought from various plants. The major plants which I have covered are Kela Roy, Mangifera indica, that is mango, Acer rubrum or Acer saccharum. These are the maple species. Especially, maple syrup is very rich in yellow tenons. Then, Cystinus hypocystis and Cystinus rubrum. So, here I'm going to discuss a brief account on the therapeutic abilities of these yellow tenons. These yellow tenons are very good uh, anti-protozone agents. Like they have very good effect against trichonomonas vaginalis. 
After that, they have very good anti-tumor agents. It has seen that these gallotenins, when exposed to LLC1 cell line, the human lung carcinoma cell line, it produces cytotoxicity. So they are very good anti-tumor agents. Apart from that, they are a very good anti-carcinogenic agents. Like uh, they, have, they, they have shown cytotoxicity against poliolector cell line like CT26, HCT116, that is human uh, colorectal cancer cell line and SW620 cell line. It has been seen in case of triple negative breast cancer cell line, these gallopanels, what they do is they uh, inhibit the proliferation of the cancer cell line in vitro and talking. These cell lines are MDA, MB4, MDA, MB4, 3, 5, BT20, HCC1937, MDA, MB436, and MDA, MB2C1, as well as SCM149. Apart from that, uh, these yellow tenants uh, have shown to be uh, very good laxative agents. Uh, it was studied in uh, uh, local dermic induced rat model that the constipation was relieved. What happened was uh, the gastrointestinal hormones like cholecystokinin, gastrin, somatostatin, and motilin they were increased, which which uh, which lead to the relief of the constipation in those rats. Apart from that, these yellow tenants are very good hepatic protective agents. It has been seen that HEPG2 cell line, which was uh, uh, induced with hydrogen peroxide and there was a hepatotoxicity, the gallotenin exposure to this cell line uh, reduced the apoptosis. So it is very, these cells are very good hepatoprotective agents. Last but not the least, uh, they are very good anti melanogenic agents. Uh, you can say they are good skin whitening agents. Uh, in case of marine melanoma cells, that is B16F110 cells, the melanin content was reduced uh, when the uh, yellow tenons were exposed to these cells. Apart from them, they are very good anti elastase uh, compounds. In, uh, basically, they are skin permeable elastase inhibitors. What they do is, uh, they, what was seen was in case of HACAT cells, the hydrogen induced reactive, ox uh, reactive oxygen species, it was decreased when a specific amount of gallotenin was added to these cells. So, to conclude, Yellow tenants uh, are very good therapeutic agents and they can be explored further <laughs> for more therapeutic abilities and can be used as novel nutraceuticals for drug discovery against various diseases. Thank you so much. Ma'am, what is basically nutraceuticals and what is the procedure to manufacture? There are some license or what? Uh, manufacturing is a very long process. First, we have to find which particular chemicals can be given as nutraceuticals because it is a very broader term. You can't restrict yourself to a specific thing, or you can't say, "Yes, yeah, this is a compound, and I can go for it, and I have, I can uh, manufacture it." You have to uh, do a complete research on that, then you can move forward. Are there any more questions? Dr. Rukia Sultana, ma'am, do you have any questions for the participant?
Oh, we are so sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. Just give us a moment, please. Ma'am, is there any license needed for uh, selling of nutraceuticals? So the thing is, it's a very broad term. First, you have to go for many formalities. It's not like that that you go uh, uh, go to a thing and go plant and extract it and then go for the marketing pro process. You have to do a research on them. There are specific R and D cells in the company and the research laboratories. You have to do a like thorough research, then you can go for the marketing thing and all. Ma'am, can a pharmacist sell uh, these uh, nutraceuticals? So again, uh, you are making the same question in the middle, like form. I would have, I'm just telling you that the gelatins are very good nutraceuticals. It's still not like uh, I can go and sell the gelatins as well. Research has to be done. Okay. And there are R&D cells. I mean, there may be some person in this conference who can like enlighten upon the nutraceuticals, marketing and all. So that's it. G ma'am, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Should I stop sharing? Yes, ma'am. Please. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your presentation. Now we will next move on to our next oral presentation by Anita Patel, Nutin Pharmacy College. India on a topic of nutraceuticals for improving oral health of elders. Hello, everyone. Is it visible to everyone? Yes, ma'am. It's visible. Shall I start my presentation? Uh, ma'am, kindly be a bit loud, like we couldn't hear you. Okay, okay, sure, ma'am. Good morning, every good afternoon, everyone. I Anita Patel from Newton Pharmacy College going to present my topic on nutraceutical for improving the oral health of elders. Now, aging is the process that is uh, related to the health of the elder patient because in the aging, there is a reduction into the immunity of the elder patient. And this is because of mainly the chronic health condition and additionally because of the nutritional deficiency because of the unbalanced diet. So I am going to discuss about the oral health, general health and the quality of life, how the oral health which is having the impact on the quality of the elder people's life. So oral health, which is considered to be the important for the general health as well as the comfortable life for the elder people and the mouth cavity that is considered to be the window for your overall health conditions. And many a time, so many researchers have done the interactions between the oral health conditions and the overall health conditions because it is well defined by the elder populace. So here that is some condition has been shown 
which is related to the oral health conditions, which is the impact on the quality of the life. For example, the pain and the discomfort that is a majority of the found into the elder population because of the uh, problem with the dentures and the gum conditions and also because of the dental eruptions. And one major issue that is found into the elder population that is a psychological effect. This is mainly because of the missing fadded or the broken teeth, which is alter the appearance of the face. So it having a direct impact on the psychology of the elder people. One more problem that is related to the social aspects. So because of the missing tooth, uh, some people uh, find the difficulty into the speech. So they are not going to be communicate with the social person. And uh, the functionings of the uh, some physiological condition that is uh, going down. And because of that conditions, the elder people is not able to chew properly. They are not going to able to swallow the proper the, the food as well as the medications. And all this combinedly having a negative impact onto the elder in the daily life as well as the confidence of your their life. The next one that is the uh, which type of the changes generally we are found into the elder population. So here there is uh, some changes that is generally we are found into the elder population. The first one that is the elder populations, the yellowing and the darkening of the teeth that is uh, found. So because of the aging process, the structures of the teeth having a propensity to transform. And because of that, the tooth becomes the yellow and dark. And this is mainly the reason behind that, that is a change into the compositions and the thickness of the dentine as well as the enamels. One more uh, condition that is the date of the nose that is uh, present into the pulp portions. And because of that, the number of the blood vessel that is entering into the tooth cavity that is uh, reduced. And because of this, that is a resulting into the reduced sensitivity. So the elder people are not able to feel the trauma as well as the pain into the oral cavities. Because of the age, there is a change into the thickness of the mucous membrane, the lips, buccal and palatal tissue, the floor of the mouth. So the thickness of the membrane that is uh, reduced and because of this condition, the majority of the elder patient found the dryness of the mouth and the cracked lips. And because of this thinning mucous membranes, the membrane is uh, prone to injury very faster. One more problem that is the abrasions and the slow destructions of the tooth that is a resultant into the appearance, change into the appearance of the tooth. Then one more problem that is a fiber content that is the most important for the periodontal health. So the fiber that is a present into the periodontal tandem that is a diminished with the age which is resulting into the gingival recessions and that is ultimately resulting into the tooth caries. So teeth play the very important roles into the speaking, smiling, smiling eating and the appearance. So it is a very much importance for uh, elder people, the oral health and it influence it having a direct impact onto the general health. So in the majority of conditions, this re remains unnoticed, not important, uh, importance is not given by the general populace. So we need to take for this uh, special issue that is a found in case of the elder populations. These are the some oral health condition that is a found into the elder populations, which can be slowed down and can be reversed by using the nutraceuticals. So as I uh, told in the previous slide, the oral health condition that is a decline with the age. And these are the some main issues that is a found into the elder populations having a percentage of the occurrence is more as compared to the adult populations. The root caries, that is the biggest issue, that is the main reason for the tooth loss, and that is a found a double as compared to the adult populations, and it having a direct impact on the eating habits. Uh, one health condition, that is a periodontal disease, it is uh, having a two uh, conditions like the gingivitis and the periodontitis. Gingivitis, that is the one type of the plaque formation that is a form onto the uh, surface of the teeth, that is the deposition of the gram negative bacteria and the uh, top because of that. Inflammation has been induced, and because of this gingival inflammation, so the edema has been encountered into the gingival portions. In case of the periodontitis conditions, the gingival inflammations induce the periodontal ligaments to detach from the tooth surface and ultimately there is a loss into the tooth. The candidiasis, the candida that is a more common organism which is found into the oral flora 
and in certain circumstances there is over production has been found in specifically into the elder patients and because of that there is a is infection the gerostomia this is the most specific conditions into the elder people it means the dryness of the mouth and this is mainly because of the reduction into the salivary productions the dental related conditions like uh, unfitting uh, of the dentures so the stomatitis is there then denture hyperplasia is there and also the traumatic ulcers has been found into the majority of the elder people <laughs> oral cancer there is basically two type of the oral cancer so the dyspepsia and uh, lichen planus so these both are ongoing inflammation situations and they mainly because of the consumption of the tobacco and the alcohol so in this condition there is a really requirement of the practical for the health of the new year elders because we need to identify the some nutraceuticals that are going to be get better the health of the elder patients in the oral condition and it is ultimately improve the overall health of the elder people so these are the some important uh, nutraceuticals uh, that can be considered to be the odonto nutraceuticals because odonto nutraceuticals means the new word that is launched to identify the bioactive phytochemicals that can be specifically useful for the improving the health of the oral cavities so these are the some examples of the odonto nutraceuticals some vitamins are there minerals are there coenzyme q10 t prebiotics carotenoids and the flavonoids are there so i am going to discuss a little bit regarding the individuals the vitamin a b c d e and minerals so this vitamins play the most important roles into the avoidance as well as the treatment of the number of the oral pathological conditions so you can see in this slide there is vitamin a d c e b this having a very good effect on to the improvement of the periodontal health it can be also helpful in the reductions into the anti caries and also preventing the gingival inflammation and in vitamin c that having a main role because it is going to be improve the collagen structures of the teeth and also the pathogenesis of the periodontal diseases the vitamin d is along with the some minerals like the calcium and the selenium they are going to be preserve the periodontium and cementum health and that can be make the strong bond of the elder populations one more odonto nutraceuticals that is the tea and prebiotics the tea which is considered to be the popular beverage in the field of the oral health which having a diverse phenolic compositions and the prebiotics that is uh, containing the beneficial bacterial strains which is very much helpful in the reductions of the pathogenic bacterial which cause the periodontal diseases in the tea we can use the black uh, white green or olang tea extract which can be helpful in the preventions of the gingival recessions and the olang tea is also helpful in the reductions into the caries which is found because of the depositions of the plaque onto the surface of the teeth the prebiotics uh, that is uh, mainly containing the lactobacillus casei and the lactobacillus reuteri organism and it is uh, very much helpful in the management of the periodontal disease and it can be helpful in the decreasing the candida count into the aged peoples and reductions into the yeast infections it is also helpful in the prevention of the dental caries as well as the gingivitis the carotenoids and the flavonoids uh, this is also the most important odonto nutraceuticals and the main mechanism behind this uh, two they are going to be neutralize the reactive oxidation species the activations and that is uh, responsible for provoking the oxidative stress which gives rise the excessive tissue damage so this carotenoids uh, like the lycopene beta carotene they are going to be suppress the periodontal inflammations and uh, tighten the uh, gum portions of the elder patients and prevent the tooth loss the flavonoids like the hesperidine genitin and proenfocilin also the slow down the depositions of the biofilm of the plaque onto the tooth surface and prevent the anti uh, prevent the caries it is also helpful in the dentin collagen protections and the proenfocilin that is a very good uh, plant flavonoids which is very much helpful into the slow down the root caries into the elder populations the polyphenols uh, that is uh, again the one most important odonto nutraceuticals that is uh, containing the class of the plant based uh, chemical compounds it is uh, containing the more than 8000 phenolic structures 
which is most popular phenolic structures are lignans and stilbenes. They are also promote the oral health by decreasing the risk of the inflammation. And the uh, cranberry ponifemol, which having a very good role into the protections of the periodontal sulcus, and it is also helpful in the reductions into the uh, gingival recessions. And the last but not least, that is the coenzyme cutons. This is the very good uh, nutraceuticals that is available over the counter very simply. And among this category, there is ubiquinol 10, that is a reduced form of the coenzyme Q10. It can be helpful as an endogenous antioxidant for the improving the amount of the coenzyme 10 in gingival disease. And it is depressed the periodontal inflammation. So it can be prevent the detachment of the teeth from the uh, periodontite, periodontum teeth ligament. Periodontum. 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 And finally, I would like to say that the nutraceuticals are essential to stand for the promising agents towards the multifactorial oral disorder to attain more and more importance within the scientific and the clinical scenario. And especially in the other dental patients need to be supported by the further evidence. Thank you all. Thank you. Hello. 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 Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, this is this is this is your reviewed articles, right? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. So uh, you have mentioned about different uh, conditions of the geriatric patients. Yes. Uh, can you tell me what is the question? constituents which will be helpful for, from the tea. You have mentioned tea as a nutraceutical, right? Yes, yes, yes. tea as a nutraceutical. Yeah, but, yeah, so you have mentioned many chemical constituents also, but from yes. tea, which constituents will be helpful? Uh, from tea, uh, tea containing some phenolic structures and that phenolic structures having a direct effect on the prevention of the biofilm deposition okay. onto the tooth surface. Uh, can, can you name the phenolic compound? The name of the phenolic compound uh, that is a stilbent. Which type of tea? Olong tea, olong tea extract. Black tea extract, okay. white tea extract. We need to go for extract, not directly. Extract of tea, right? Is it yes, aqueous extract? Is it aqueous extract? Yes, ma'am. This is aqueous extract. Okay. Okay. What What is the reason behind choosing this topic? Uh, the reason behind choosing this topic because in our area, the majority of the elder people, they are found difficulties because of the tooth loss in eating, chewing, social interactions. And uh, we, uh, we tried at our home that uh, if we give the addition, additional nutraceuticals to the elder people, uh, we found some improvement into the health of the oral cavity. So I think uh, I have to go in this direction. Okay. Uh, fine. One of the home remedies what we usually we use clove, and which you have not mentioned anywhere. Yes. Okay. okay good. Thank you. Shall I stop sharing my presentation? Yes, ma'am. Please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now next, I call upon. Oral presentation by Patel Kunj Dinesh Kumar from Sri S.T. Patel College of Pharmaceutical Education. And yes, yes. Ganpit University India on topic of polyherbal blended papaya based jam for pediatric and geriatric patients. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Can you share your screen, please? Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. First of good afternoon to all my friends and chairperson. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Please. Now I am presenting formulation and evolution of polyherbal blended jam for pediatric and geriatric patient. From Ganpat University, Mesana. Gujarat, India. Introduction. 
the use of medicinal plant in recent year has increased because of their user friendly and affordability that lead traditional medicine research has given high priority to immune boosting medicinal plant which affect immune system now uh, we are seeing in previous corona pandemic the all of most of all people are moving forward to natural medicine plant and uh, nutraceutical based medicine then key role of immune system is protection of the host against pathogenic agent and impair immuno component immuno competence in which invariably increase the susceptibility of invas by pathogen immunity concept of uh, natural ayurveda its concept of immunity mention is vedic sat matva in ayurveda then now forward to next slide immuno concept of ayurveda is based on number of medicinal herbs described under immunity enhancing drugs category the concept of immunity enhancer is explained under the category of rasayan chikitsa in ayurveda mainly rasayan chikitsa and ayurveda as uh, include in uh, charak sanita these herbs are used in various diseases especially by modulating the immune system these herbs are called as rasayan dravyas object of project conventional doses form are not suitable for pediatric and geriatric patient like we are so in uh, pediatric patient they are not uh, take a oral form in tablet or they are not like to take oral tablet form then we are aim to prepare a jam form which is going to be easy administration and high adsorption of drug composition of jam ingredient are papaya fruit why are used papaya fruit then we are used papaya fruit because of any geriatric patient are have in uh, diabetic patient then natural jam or based on jaggery form then who oh, would take any geriatric patient or jam form amla fruit extract turmeric extract tulsi leaf extract black pepper extract jaggery rock salt honey lemon juice now this uh, rationality of ingredient papaya biological source of fruit of corica papaya family caricaceae now chemical constituent of papaya are zeaxanthin papain vitamin a uses of antioxidant and uh, many other uses of papaya are like based on thyroid condition and any other amla are based on super fruit of ambilic of office nalis family of euphorbiaceae vitamin c gallic acid immuno in, immunity enhancer and amla is also used in hair treatment turmeric of rhizome biological source of rhizome of curcuma loncha family jinke berasi and chemical constituent of curcumin uses of anti inflammatory antioxidant turmeric are also we are put in our food and kitchen there uh, the jam purpose of our natural and herb related in kitchen form tulsi leaves of curcumin sectum family lemnaceae chemical constituent of phenolic compound flavonoid orientin on and we are seeing and uses of tulsi is immunity booster reduce cough and cold rtl a uh, market comparison of jam a kisan mixed food jam is 500 g packet size is price of 144 malas mixed food jam is 95 and many others now we are preparing polyherbal jam in natural ing- ingredient are 500 g 90 rupees first of our indian people are based on uh, price when price is low then our product is more preferable in india but then foreign people are based on quality purpose but we are providing only herbal jam in quality with quality purpose in 90 rupees plan of per- procurement of raw material optimization of composition of poly herbal jam qualitative physiochemical analysis evolution of antioxidant activity stability student study of formulation and statistical analysis of beta now 
Now see our, our product of polyherbal jam. Nine point hedonic scale, parameter of color, average point x scales. And this chart form, this chart form is based on review feedback of our, uh, uh, my SK Patel College of Pharmaceutical Education and Research. Professor give feedback on 10 professor. 10 professor give feedback on feedback form. After testing a jam, color average point x6, like slightly, appearance, aroma, texture, taste, flavor, overall acceptability out of nine in eight. This reference. Thank you very much. Now, you have any question, please ask me. Hello. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Patel. Thank you, Mr. Patel. Thank you very much. Now stop my screen, sir. Yes, yes. Kindly stop your presentation. Dr. Rukiana Sultana, ma'am, do you have any questions for the participant? Okay, Mr. Patel, thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. Now, next, uh, I call upon oral presentation by Tanvi D. Gandhi and Malavika Jatin by Patel from Sri S.K. Patel uh, College of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, Granpath University, India, on topic of evaluation and development of herbal lozenges. Ms. Tanvi. Yes, can, can you? My screen is visible. Hello. No, your screen is not visible actually. Ma'am, now. No. Okay. Ma'am, right now? Yes, it's visible. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Can I start my presentation? Yes, sure, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, good afternoon, one and all, present over here, myself, Tanvi Gandhi. And right now, I am pursuing my uh, Bachelor of Pharmacy, some semester at Sri S.K. Patel College of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, Garbat University. University Mahesana, Gujarat. My today's project work is about evolution and development of herbal lozenges. The aim of my project is to develop and innovate the novel herbal lozenges for the treatment of iron deficiency anemia. The rationale of my project is to discover and innovate an anti-anemic herbal lozenges which will be effective, safe, have low side effect and patient friendly. It can be also used as an OTC product into the market. The novelty of my product is the ingredients which are used are fully natural and organically cultivated in our campus. It, uh, it is very tasty and uh, patient friendly. Uh, in market, there are various, various types of lozenge form are available for the iron supplement. But first time we are uh, making the lozenges for the treatment of iron supplement. It also have a very low side effect and uh, it is uh, economically acceptable or, or a cheaper. Into the introductory part, uh, according to WHO guideline, uh, the anemia it is a condition in which the num uh, number of red blood cells or hemoglobin are less than normal value. Here I mentioned a chart that shows the hemoglobin level according to the uh, various, uh, various age groups. Uh, in other side, I have uh, mentioned that 40% uh, of children under five years of age are anemic, one third percent of women of reproductive age are anemic, and 40% of pregnant women 
are a animal. Into the market, there are various types of oral supplements are available uh, in different dosage form like tablet, uh, in syrup form or in a, uh, intravenous form. Here I mentioned some iron uh, iron salt of uh, solid dosage form that of uh, ferrous fumarate, ferrous gluconate, ferrous sulfate, and ferrous uh, ferridate. Uh, these products are used as a iron supplement, but in other side it will cause some side effect like uh, gastric upset, nausea, vomiting, or uh, diarrhea condition. So to overcome uh, this side effect, we have made the herbal uh, lozenges. Uh, in in our herbal lozenges, the, the key ingredient is uh, moringa leaf. Uh, I have mentioned the nutritive value of moringa leaf here, uh, in which the iron, magnesium, calcium, and uh, protein part are mainly included. In other side, I have uh, I have compared my uh, moringa leaf powder at a different product. Like uh, moringa leaf powder is 15 times more potassium containing than bananas. 9 times more protein containing than yogurt and 25 times more iron than spinach. Likewise, uh, I have mentioned that in a chat. Uh, second uh, ingredient is amla. Amla is a rich source of vitamin C that is ascorbic acid. Uh, here all, uh, here uh, I have mentioned the comparison that uh, different types of uh, vitamin C containing compound uh, are there but uh, amla have the uh, highest amount of vitamin c uh, the function of amla is uh, that is it increase the absorption of iron supplement and it form the chelate with ferric iron at the acidic ph that remains soluble at the alkaline ph of the duodenum black pepper. black pepper increase the permeability and site of absorption by modulating liquid environment and membrane dynamics it also used as a taste enhancer and also used as to improve the bioavailability of the product. In our formulation, uh, the ingredients are uh, moringa leaf extract, that is source of iron, hamla extract or juice, which is source of ascorbic acid. Black pepper are used that uh, taste enhancer and bioavailability enhancer. Black salt for taste enhancer, sugar or jaggery that is a base of lozenges or a, as a sweetener, and menthol for flavoring agent or a cooling agent. We have uh, done various uh, evolution taste in our lab that is moisture containing taste and uh, ash containing gas, uh, ash containing taste, and uh, get a uh, positive result from that. Uh, right now, uh, the anemia, it is a very uh, big disease for the growing country. So the India have launched the project that Anemia Mukti Bharat target 22, uh, 2022. So uh, the pro we are contributing uh, our project in this project or uh, we have applied that in also on uh, our government for the next level. And these are some references. Thank you. Hello. Hello, can you, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. It's a very good project what you have done. So I have a uh, little doubt about this. Like, you have used Moringa leaves, right? Yes, sir. Uh, have you used the extract form or you have used the leaf itself? Uh, we, we have used powder. Powder leaf itself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What about Dried Amla? powder. Amla also dry uh, powder? Sorry, ma'am. What about amla? Amla also dry powder? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay, so all, all the drugs we have not extracted, only in the dry yes, form we have added, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Good. So, uh, Thank you. here, which which one is used to help for the, uh, your rheumatic mix or anti anemic? I, the moringa leaf are used for which increase the iron deficiency. Okay. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Matt, I have a doubt. Yes. Can you please? I'm a... Oh, Mr. Yogesh, actually your voice is crackling. Ma'am, I had a doubt uh, how to calculate the iron content of the oh. moringa leaf. So you have calculated. What is the to calculate iron content? 
right now we are ongoing on our project so on the labs lab scale we are done that Uh, Mr. Yogesh, if you don't mind, could you drop the message in the chat box? Sure. Uh, Ms. Tanvi, I request you to stop sharing the screen. Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. Sure. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Yes, thank you. The question from Mr. Yogesh is like how to calculate the iron content. Uh, Ms. Tanvi, the question is yes. for you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Yogesh is asking like how to calculate the iron content. Uh, in the chat, I have mentioned that. Uh, Ms. Tanvi, you are on mute. Kindly yes. unmute and answer, please. Yes. Uh, on the chat, I have mentioned that uh, how much amount of iron uh, per gram we can get. On That's all right. Okay. Mr. Yogesh, is the answer is clear for you? Thank you. Okay, thank you. I will request you. all the participants to turn on the cameras for group gallery. I request all the participants to turn on the cameras for group gallery. I repeat, I request all the participants to turn on the cameras for group gallery. Once again, I repeat everyone, kindly turn on your cameras for the group gallery. Thank you all. Now we will move on to our next presentation. Oral presentation by Vishwata Akar, Sri SK Patel College of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, Ganpat University, India, on a topic of herbal soup, an innovation to increase lactation. Uh, Ma'am, uh, she will be presenting uh, in my laptop, so wait for two minutes. Yes, sure. Thank you. I request all the participants to stick on the time, like for oral presentation, the time slot is for only 10 minutes. Kindly try to wind your session in 10 minutes. Eight minutes for presentation and two minutes for questionnaire round. Thank you. Uh, 
Ma'am, can you see my screen? Yes, your screen is visible. Can you share the PPT, please? Hello. Hello. Yes, Ms. Vishwataka, you are audible. Kindly start with your presentation. Okay, okay, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. My name is Vishwa Thakur and uh, I am from S Capital and Pharmaceutical Research and Center College, Kanpur University, Gujarat. So my today's project work about an innovation to increase lactation. So the aim of my project is to increase the milk production in uh, in during the uh, in during the pregnancy and after the delivery. So baby can uh, get benefit. Uh, baby can get benefit from it. So, what is lactation? Uh, lactation is the remarkable bioproduction system of the mammary gland and milk. The biofluid that act diet provides nourishment, protection, fuel, education, communication, and delight to to the infant. There are several reasons behind that uh, that lower lactation, like uh, insufficient of nutritional in a uh, uh, pregnant woman or imbalance. Of uh, hormones, so to avoid this uh, this kind of uh, problem, we make instant soups. In instant soup. Milk production is essential for optimal feeding of infants and has a direct impact on growth, development, and health in a neonatal period. As we all know, that breastfeeding is a mother's gift to herself and her baby, and the earth. Therefore, we recommend it you to try out various natural ways to improving lactation and here is one way to increase the lactation is herbal instant soup uh, by medical profession and even babies uh, formula uh, profession and estimate that 5 to 15 percent women are suffering from this problem so um, as we can see breastfeeding is a blessing that lasts a lifetime with us what are the common reasons for low milk supply in a breastfeeding mothers? So, breastfeeding is influenced by nutritional and non-nutritional factors that affect milk synthesis and secretion. There can be various reasons that may reduce or lower the production of breast milk in nursing mother, which are following. This, uh, these are the reasons behind the low production of milk. If you have had a breast surgery or you are taking medication that hampers the milk supply, if you are not breastfeeding your baby on a regular basis, if you started breastfeeding your baby late, if you suffer from medical conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, hypothyroidism, etc., if your baby was a premature or preterm baby, stress, anxiety, and post postpartum depression hamper breast milk production. All these reasons may sometimes cause hindrance in producing enough milk for the uh, for the baby's secretion. Substances which are used to induce, maintain, and increase the milk production called as galactogogues. Our main ingredients are galactogogues by which we make uh, our herbal instant soup. They may be synthetic or plant uh, plant molecule which mediate complex processing involving interaction between physical and physiological factors. So, in synthetic area, most common galactogogues for human use are uh, metoclopramide, domperidone, chlorpromazine, sulpirid. Remarkable side effect of these drugs are serostomia, gastrointestinal disorder, cardiac arrhythmia, lethargy, sedation. And extra pyramidal symptoms such as hypertension, tremor, like facial uh, seborrhea and even sudden death. To overcome this side effect of medicine, we approach to make a herbal soup which contain herbs as a galactogo. These are several uh, galacto, uh, galactogos as I have mentioned in previous slide. So, advantage of our instant soup are 
they are good for us they are in uh, inexpensive according to compare to our allopathy field and easy to prepare less time consuming if mediated then easy to take compared to medicine they give immune response they freeze well we used the herbs as a, used as a galactogo which are available nearby us for making soup to increase the milk production so uh, our main ingredient is shatavari with shatavari we use a uh, fennel seeds powder dry garlic powder corn starch soya powder uh, black pe uh, black pepper as a flavor enhancement and a bio bioavailability enhance en enhancer dry ginger powder dry carrot and beans and cinnamon powder rock salt powder and people mole powder so here some uh, nutritional uh, here some nutritional importance of this uh, galactogogues are like fennel seeds powder to so it uh, it has phytoestrogens similar to estrogen which help in producing more milk cinnamon powder to increase the milk flow and flavor of breast milk ginger Uh, stimulate and production of breast milk in nursing mothers garlic enhance the production and flavor of breast milk pepper mol reduce gastric trouble and keep body warm our main ingredient shatavari so uh, it has more beneficial uh, helps in increase increase the production of prolactin and corticoid which help produce breast milk and the quality of two these are uh, various galactogo so uh, our main ingredients is shatavari here are some uh, uh, important parameters about shatavari shatavari also known as shatavari shatavar and aspergillus racemius is said to promote fertility and have a range of health benefits particularly for the female reproductive system there are several benefits of shatavari like improving female reproductive system re reducing symptom of menopause antioxidant effect anti Uh, anxiety effect helps with the breast milk production and pregnancy reduce mood swings immune system supports active constituent of shatavari may include alkaloid mucilages isoflavones oligosaccharides sterols such as uh, cytosterol present in its root steroidal saponins so the uh, these are formulation which available in market of shatavari as a powder form and as a syrup form these are available formulation of only one ingredient as a galactogogue like shatavari uh, is like uh, only one form are uh, there we make instant soup of many other galactogogue like shatavari in a one form which will be beneficial we can uh, get more uh, benefit from uh, one form moreover there uh, there will be flavor in the soup so that it complies with the taste this will be beneficial for working women in their busy lifestyle it is easy to make uh, nowadays people want such type of things that is less time consuming and uh, readily available in the market so it will be beneficial for all this reason uh, our project is ongoing on a uh, process so uh, like evolution parameters are there like proximate analysis in that moisture contained protein contained ash contained fat contained crude fiber contained and ph others are rheological property like viscosity sensory evolution and act antioxidant activity these are a picture from our lab in the college we have done the moisture content test and as content test uh, as per sops uh, more deeply the tests are continuously evaluating and done by the team thank you ma'am yeah it's a good project but uh, uh you are using satavari right yes ma'am yes satavari powder you are using yes ma'am satavari powder or the fresh one fresh one or dried one uh dried one dried one okay okay so which test you will conduct to find out whether your soup is having galactogog activity or not what ma'am which test you are conducting to find out mm. your soup is having galactogog activity or not so uh, ma'am uh, we perform a various test about like soup parameters and all that but yeah. uh, but how you will come to know 
when you have made the soup it is having that activity or not right yes you should have some understand. parameters or some test no which will tell yes it is having yes Uh, Did sorry to interrupt. Can I ask one question? I am from Faculty of Ayurveda. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, my I am Doctor Charan. Yeah, yeah. So professor. You have not medicine. mentioned. So that's what I am curious to know. Which method yes, you are used to find out? My project okay. is actually, ma'am, yes, uh, yes. on working. So. Hello, you are not audible, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Hello. 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 Oh, Miss Tanvi. And Dr. Rukia Sultana has asked you a question, like she was uh, uh, waiting for the reply, actually. Uh, Ma'am, uh, I, I have given answer. My project is uh, on working. So uh, we make actually nine batches of uh, this soup and uh, uh, like different people are checking on it. Uh, we have not particular perform uh, like uh, Ma'am ask about the taste. But uh, we will uh, perform it. Okay, thank you. And Dr. Charasila Giri, uh, ma'am, you would like to ask a question for the participant? Uh, yes, my question was that uh, because I am from Ayurveda, uh, yes, Shatavari is al already proven as a good uh, galacto. Galacto. Yes, so uh, she already has a traditional uh, reverse pharmacology data for being uh, put in uh, as a uh, galacto. Second is that uh, the thing is she said that it is used in pregnancy. So uh, Shatavari is contraindicated in pregnancy. So she should take care of while doing uh, yes, that. Yes, consulting uh, doctor. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. So you uh, you should consult a medical uh, officer. Hmm. From uh, Some, uh, Ayurveda uh, uh, allopath. And my yes, third concern is that how she will check the galactogogues activity. So there are two ways. One is experimental and uh, second is a uh, clinical method. Uh, in the, There are many clinical methods available like uh, there, there can be a, a clinical uh, study on double blind method or uh, single blind method. So they are clinical in clinical means Human subjects have to be involved. Uh, on yes. experiment level, if you are a pharmaceutical student, uh, you can. Uh, there are many experiments available uh, to test the Galactox test. So uh, that you can try. I mean, this is a suggestion yes, from my side. Yes, uh, and Shatavari is uh, contraindicated in pregnancy. It is uh, very good as a herbal tonic as well as uh, post uh, delivery. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Tanvi. I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Vishwatakar. Uh, Thank you, ma'am. Okay, next we would like to continue with our oral presentation by Manshra Patil from Sri SK Patil College of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, Ganpat University, India, on a topic of formulation and evaluation of immunoboosters in strength soup mix. So, um, is, my, is my screen visible? Yes, it's pretty visible. Thank you. Sorry. So, good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Mimansha Patel, and I am posting my B farm 
फ्रॉम श्री एस के पटेल कॉलेज ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिकल एजुकेशन एंड रिसर्च गणपत यूनिवर्सिटी मेहसाना एंड टूडे आई एम गिविंग प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन फॉर्मुलेशन एंड इवेल्युएशन ऑफ इम्यूनो बूस्टर इंस्टेंट सूप मिक्स सो एज वी ऑल नो दैट इन टू डेज फास्ट लाइफ इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू टेक केयर ऑफ अवर हेल्थ बिकॉज एज वी आर यू कॉन्स्टेंटली इन कॉन्टेक्ट विथ पॉल्यूशन नॉट ओनली विथ पॉल्यूशन वी आर स्टॉप Uh, having our traditional meals rather and having a nice uh, and delicious junk food so it is necessary to have a nice immune system especially when uh, we had seen a two years of corona pandemic so uh, immune system is an in charge to protect the body from environmental forces around the clock and certain nutrition and bio active components of uh, food is significant impact on immune function function of food are consumed in a variety of forms across the culture and provides the benefits that extend beyond the basic uh, nutritional food so if we talk about immunomodulators immunomodulators are the substances that have the ability to stimulate amplify or inhibit any component or a phase of our immune system as a result we decided to create a single serve immuno stimulant soup mix so if we talk about a marketed uh, immuno immunity booster one of the most popular we now going on is a ginseng ginseng is a herb which is which has a so many names as shown in the presentation it is used as an alternative medicine when for the possibly effective aid for lowering blood sugar for type 2 diabetics and for the respiratory infections but ginseng are more often uh, sold as a herbal supplement and there is no regulated manufacturing standards for <coughs> for ginseng so it is very necessary to uh, choose the supplements wisely because there can be a many uh, there can be many contaminated as uh, supplements as well in a market as one was reported in usa recently and the side effects are also there for ginseng that is diarrhea insomnia headache rapid heart beat increase or decrease in blood pressure and rest tenderness and vaginal bleeding फॉर्मुलेशन एज वेल बट in sachets it is easily for the patients who have a dis- difficulty in swallowing or uh, any uh, tablet or capsules and it uh, for us a sachet it has a great stability and f- physical chemical stability and longer shelf life as compared to any other form of medications the ingredients which included in this soup are as follows moringa leaf powder amla powder black pepper powder brock salt soya powder corn starch and vegetables so the nutrition as for the standard the nutrition bringa is as shown in the table for the protein <coughs> fat carbohydrate and fiber vitamin b1 vitamin c vitamin e calcium magnesium and potassium are respectively and if we talk about the pharmacological importance of moringa it is also known as a drum drumstick moringa oleifera has an antioxidant and anti inflammatory immuno stimulant property due to the high ginseng and ginseng content but with it is also in a diabetic because as you all know the diabetic is diabetes is considered to be the king of di- uh, disease because once you once the patient is a diabetic it hinders the many uh, metabolic um, many metabolic pathways or many metabolic systems of the body and it can may lead to an other disease as well so it is also helping in a as an anti diabetic anti bacterial anti pyretic anti tumor and along with that moringa fresh leaves of moringa contains seven times more vitamin than orange four times more calcium than milk three times more iron than spinach six times more potassium than banana and uh, four times more <clears throat> vitamin a then in carrot it is a rich phytochemical such as carotenoids mineral uh, vitamins minerals amino acids steroids glycosides alkaloids flavonoids phenolic and leaves 
second main uh, second main the uh, key ingredient is a phalanx assemblica which is also known as amla or gooseberry indian gooseberry which is assumed to be a potent rejuvenator and immunomodulator and capable of delaying the regen degeneration process in senescence while pro promoting longevity and improving digestion and constipation <clears throat> so we are doing a lab scale parameters uh, measured such as moisture content protein content ash fat and crude fiber uh, uh, percentage and ph of the uh, soup so we have done a sensory testing as well and result we have, we have got is a very good for the color flavor taste texture and mouth feel are as for uh, given in the table but we are still remaining to have the crude fiber and protein taste which is which we, will, we are going to do next and last but not the least the condition is among the autoimmune disorders affecting a large population of the world it can be concluded that andrich moringa oleifera leaves and phalanx amblica are very effective immunomodulators it is a, the cost of production is also acceptable In the sachet form of the mix is very convenient, non messy than any other product that will boost the immunity of a human health. Thank you so much. Yeah, good presentation. But again, uh, I want to know how you will be testing the immunomodulatory activity. Which method you will be using? Ma'am. Uh, i have not done that yet and we uh, we haven't discussed with our guide as well but we had now going to do the uh, antioxidant test next which will be by uh, dpph method okay now when we are doing immunomodulatory activity you should plan right what you are going yes. to do how to how you are going to evaluate the whether it is having immunomodulatory activities or not and yes. all the all the drugs you are uh, adding in the form of powder not as an extract right no everything is in the form of powder okay good thank you ma'am thank you thank you so much our next oral presentation by ms bipasa basu Sister Nivedita, University, India, on a topic of importance of nutrition education. Am I audible? Yes, Miss Vipasha Basu. Actually, my name is Diksha. Okay. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I have chosen my topic that is importance of nutrition education. so what is education first the education is a thing that we also learn from someone else and nutrition is which is involved the food and the proper food habits so nutrition education can be defined as any set of learning experiences designed to facilitate the voluntary adoption of eating and other nutrition related behaviors conducive to health and well being it is an integral part of providing nutrition services to all the categories of the society not only the older not only the children but all the pregnant all the lactation women of every body nutrition service providers must conduct the nutrition activities and it should be consistent with the goals at a minimum of two times per calendar year at each site providers are encouraged to use existing nutrition education resources from the basic food nutrition education program and it should be include information on physical activity in addition to the nutrition in recognition of the importance of physical activity on health and the prevention of the diseases which is very crucial so nutrition education is a systematically planned set of activities the first one activity which include the proper food habit the second one is the food sanitation and food hygiene and the third one is the food resources we have to use whatever food resources we have nutrition education is an essential component of our body to improve the nutritional status of the population or the specific category of our society which is very crucial for the well being of the people in general 
so we all know what you are that what you eat so why the nutrition education is so much important in our today scenario let me share one scenario of india india's child malnutrition rates are still one of the most alarming in the world the global hunger index according to 2020 which is calculated on the basis of total undernourishment of the population child stunting that is low height according to their age wasting child mortality india has secured the, his place at 94th position out of 107 countries which is very disheartening and very much urgent situation for all of us not only that in india 46.6 million of children are stunted and also india is accounts for the largest number of wasted children that is 25.5 million so before the covid scenario it was much less but in the covid time like in 2020 there are uh, stopped of icds activity and uh, some of the mid day meal scheme as well because of the lockdown the school is not opening for at least 6 months so the rate of undernourished children or the wasted children is being higher the states of uh, india like madhya pradesh bihar uttar pradesh west bengal gujarat there are a lot of children who all are suffering from either from the underweight or from the wasting point of view so this is the background why we need to understand the nutrition education should be incorporated in our day to day life so that we can have malnutrition free india very soon so there are different views the first one is the information dissemination approach we have to gather the information that this is my scenario and what i have to do what are the activities should we arrange to get rid of this kind of uh, situation facilitating behaviors conducive to health we have to give the knowledge to our society to the child to the mother that what food should be nutritious to us which can fight against the malnutrition and focuses on the environmental change the aims of the nutrition education influence the public policies there are different policies by the government of india we have to promote that access to variety of nutritious food to all the category of the people who are there in the rural area and in the under privileged group as well to develop the personal skills and motivation to adopt the healthy eating practices we have to give some idea like we have to clean our hand before having the food we have to sit properly and the environment should be free from the you know uh, different kinds of pollutant and all to develop nutrition advisory services and nutrition education of the public to participate in coordinated community nutrition program which will be organized by the government or by the state to improve the nutritional status or the nutritional level in each and every community so this is the triangle which i have formed the first one is what the food system supplies food system supplies us everything all the basic food in abundance the fast food the sugar fat sweetened beverages large portion of fruits and vegetable everything but what nutritional educators has recommended they has recommended more amount of fruits and vegetables should be taken less amount of processed and refined grains more amount of fibrous grain less amount of fat sugar low salt content food and the last but not the least it should be the balanced food and the physical activity or per day we have to do some amount of exercise to be fit and what our society or what people want people want the food which is recommended it should be familiar to us i can buy it very easily i can't go 10 km away from my home to buy that particular food and the food which i have got it should be tested enough test good otherwise the people will not buy the food or have that food though the food is having some nutritional value food value for the money so the economic from the economic point of view it should be cheaper in way and after all it should be the healthy one which can promote good health so there are different activities involved first is promoting lifelong healthy eating habit which is not for one day not for one week it should be a lifelong thing we have to go beyond the classroom we will in include all the child all the school members the families and the community as well establishing the school learning gardens that linking classroom lessons with practice developing national guidelines for better diets and nutrition creating environments that support good nutrition and which is helpful food choice 
so not only the nutrition education but also we are having support from the consumer awareness team provides technical support to countries to develop policies and program to increase the public awareness of the importance of eating well foster food environments that enable healthy food choices and build the capacities of individual and institution to adopt the food and nutrition practices that promote good health to us so why do we need training for the nutrition educators because we all are having our basic education level but in the basic education we have to include the nutrition education as well so nutrition education should be included as a basic education system in our society so millions of people in the world need to improve their diet and live in a healthier diet nutrition educators can help them to achieve better food habits and practices however knowing how to promote the healthy diet and good dietary practices it's not a simple job that requires only the practice or training there are different information should be taken out that knowing all the risk food diet and benefits of healthy finding out what people has eaten and why they have eaten that discussing how to improve the diet pattern understanding what helps people change and seeing the process through until the people become their own educators so i will finish i will conclude by saying that this is the scenario of india in 2020 that 370 million children may miss out on nutritious school meal because of the covid times so government has launched different type of project that is ministry of women and child development area or sector they have launched different types of programs where icds is included beti bachao beti parao is included poshan abhiyan is included we have already finished with the september month which known as the national nutrition month we have a different types of activity and different uh, types of you no know, food packaging we have given to all the society all the categories of our people so if we can incorporate this type of program in our society and give the knowledge and circulate the knowledge to each and every corner of our society then only we can get rid of the malnutrition or any kind of diseases which is life threatening for people and also a burden for it thank you so much these all are my references thank you you have given a good uh, explanation uh, you have uh, given what are the steps you, are taken but can you tell me what are the challenges are there when you go to this uh, give the people to this education of nutrition what are the challenges you yes. might face yes ma'am uh, the first challenges which we have faced that is in 2020 the covid times everything is been shut down so there is no monitoring there is gap of the monitoring and what is the recent is we are going through each and every people is not reporting on the reported date so there is a mismanagement on taking the data so there is insufficiency of the data representation okay good so what is the reason behind taking this uh... because the people who are there regularly visited icds center the person who is in charge over there if i am the in charge i will tell some patient to come over there after one week or after two weeks maybe that patient will not come again or in the school what happened the children is only taking the children followed there we are taking care of only one meal that is the lunch only but if she or he doesn't have any any dinner time any breakfast time any breakfast food in their home so we can come back with that situation because we are only providing the lunch not the dinner one not the normal breakfast okay good one. thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you ms deepsha basu thank you so much now next i move on to our oral presentation by vaishnavi milan from mit world peace university india on topic of bioanalytical estimation of metformin co-administered with anti diabetic and anti hyperlipidemic herbal preparation by lcms Ms. Vaishnavi, kindly share your screen, please. Hello. Please. Am I audible now? 
Uh, you are a bit low. Kindly be a bit loud. Am I audible now? Yes, please continue. So, good afternoon, everyone. I am Vaishnavi uh, from MIT Workplace University, a school of pharmacy, and I'm from the quality assurance department. So, today, my topic for presentation is bioanalytical estimation of metformin co administered with antibiotic and antipathetic herb preparation by LCMS. with the introduction so the most uh, most part of the world is under stress because of the diabetes and its com uh, complications most of the people have faith and confidence in the herbal preparation uh, in this complicated situation so nowadays herbal preparation are used to treat diabetes due to multiple actions and lesser and no side effects also uh, herbal preparations are preferred to treat diabetic uh, complication here, Salusia uh, chinensis, uh, Gurkuma longa, and uh, Tinoscoria cordifolia are anti-diabetic uh, anti anti and anti-hyperlipidemic herbs. The oral herbal presentation, uh, preparations uh, which contain the aforesaid three herbs in combination and are alone with uh, diabetic and anti-hyperlipidemic patients. Metformin, a most popular bigonite derivative, is prescribed to treat type 2 diabetes. Here, modern analytical hyphenate techniques provide rational support to standardize herbal preparation and validate the claims more appropriate. Next is uh, materials and methods. Here, drug and chemicals uh, all the chemicals and reagents uh, were used uh, of analytical grade instrumentation. So highly sophisticated analytical techniques such as LCMS are used for the uh, quantification of various uh, phytoconstituents and these are the instruments which were used for the study. Next is uh, animals. So me and Mr. Uh, Albino rats weighing between 150 to 250 grams were used for the study. Starting with the experimental design, metformin 100 mg per kg was orally given as a reference standard drug and the hyperglycemia was induced by streptozotocene administration. There were seven groups of animal as shown in the table and herb drug interaction was studied in groups six and seven. So group six and uh, seven were administered with metformin plus uh, subtarangi carda plus metformin with subtarangi tablet respectively. So next is a, a method development step. So here LCMS chromatographic uh, chromatograms were recorded on LCMS system on waters LCMS uh, MS MS uh, mobile phase was prepared by mixing acetonitrile to 0.1 percent formic acid in the ratio of 70s to 30. Also, the separation was carried out on the waters equity UPLC column at the flow rate of the one ml per minute. Then for the preparation of standard stock solution and the concentration of a calibration plot, <clears throat> the suitable concentrations of uh, standard metformins were prepared in ACN is to 0.1 formic acid, 70 to 30, and the calibration plot, plot was constructed. For the sample preparation technique for the plasma extraction, 200 microliter of each sample were allocated into pre-labeled polypropylene tubes. Then at uh, 600 microliter of cold acetonitrile is added for the protein precipitation. All the tubes were vortexed for 60 seconds and then centrifuge was performed at 1000 RPM at 10 degree for 10 minutes. The supernitrate of the sample of the group three, six and seven of the riots were used for the further analysis and the validation uh, of the developed method was ca carried out as per ICH guidelines. So for the results and discussion, first was the spectrometric condition. The first step in the method development of LCMS procedure was to determine the type of ionization in which co-treatment of a diabetic rats with a developed herbal preparation of uh, herbal preparation and metformin 
synergize the anti-diabetic effect. So the most sensitive mass transition was monitored as mass to charge ratio of 33.42 for salicinol at 504.63 for folia salicinol sites E1 and 130 for metformin as shown in the figure. The quantification of metformin was, was also done. Next part is the validation of LCMS method. Some analytical parameters such as a linear range and the limit of quantitation of a developed method was evaluated. Here, uh, for a linearity, the calibration curve was linear in the range studied for 5 to 5,000 nanogram per emission correlation coefficient of 0.99 for metformin. And linearity was checked and verified by LCMS. <coughs> For the lower limit of detection and quantification, the detection limits and the quantification limits were estimated to be 1.5 to 5 nanogram per ml and for the uh, metformin respectively. Next, the uh, selectivity and the uh, and the result of the percent RST and the coefficient of variation found with the acceptable limits and the standard deviation and percent RST calculated for the proposed method are less than two, indicating that high degree of precision of the method is established. So the percent RST for the interday and intraday were found to be 0.021% and 0.017% respectively as shown in the figure. And for the selectivity and specificity, peak purity was considered to determine the specificity of the method. The standard metformin was injected and scanned at the three different levels that is peak start, peak apex, and peak end position, which shows no interference of the other peak, and the method is selective and specific as shown in the figure. To conclude, LCMS chromatograms were recorded for metformin, and it was estimated in presence of phytoconstituent of Saptarangi Kada and Saptarangi tablet in serum of group six and seven of rats. So the development. Uh, LCMS method was found to be characteristic, precise, and accurate for the estimation of metformin co administered with So, the SK and ST contained the salicinol and folia salicinoid, which were observed at uh, a master choice charge ratio, respectively. And the salicinol is a potent alpha glycosidase inhibitor. And the developed method of LCMS was validated as the bioanalytical method validation guidelines. These were the references. Thank you. Hello, Prasnati. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. You have done simultaneous estimation of the phytoconstituents as well as metformin, right? Yes, ma'am. What is the rationale behind it? Sorry, ma'am. You have done simultaneous estimation, right, of metformin yes, yes, as well as uh, your uh, phytoconstituent. Yes, yes. So what is the reason behind it? Difference behind means, ma'am, nowadays herbal preparation are also used to treat diabetes and the people have the faith and confidence in the herbal preparation uh, in this complicated situation. So uh, yeah, that, that was right. an honest attempt to develop a herbal preparation of tablet dosage form as well as CARDA for, to develop the uh, estimation of biological method. That is all right. I yes. Metformin itself is anti-diabetic, right? Yes, yes. Now, what is the reason behind adding one herbal with metformin? That is that was my question. I was doing a comparative study for the herbal preparation with the uh, with the metformin. Comparative study of metformin and the herbal. Okay, but you have that done in combination for the bioanalytical method for the uh, presence of phytoconstituent herbal preparation. No, but you have not done alone the phytoconstituent, right? Yes, I have done along with it. Actually, I have uh, for the group six and seven, we have uh, co administered metformin as well as uh, Saptarangi Kada. And for the group seven, I have administered metformin treated with the uh, Saptarangi tablet also. That was the estimation. But why it is alone with metformin? Why not alone?
either you are going to study some side effects of metformin and then you are adding the constituent or if you want to only check the things you want to compare then alone the constituents also should be given no so i i didn't understand your uh, basic of uh, doing this research can you just explain two sentences uh, so for the herb drug interaction and standardization of herbal preparation was the uh, challenge here and the common practice uh, for the uh, co-administered aeropathic drug like metformin was was done with the herbal preparation this was okay so you are checking the herb drug interaction right yes okay 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 i understand thank you thank you Thank you, Ms. Vaishnavi. Thank you. Now, next, I call upon poster presentation by Prananjali Badola, MSU, Wadroda, India, on a topic of screening of anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties of pepper, ginger, lime, and honey in monoherbal and polyherbal combinations. Um, thank you, ma'am. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are audible, ma'am. Let me know if you can see my screen. No, not exactly. Your screen is not visible. Uh, give me a minute, ma'am. Is it visible now? Hello? Yes, yes, it's visible. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, I am Pranjali Badola. Uh, I am presenting a poster before you. Uh, good afternoon to all the panel members present. Uh, I'll be presenting the poster which I worked upon uh, in the last, uh, in the recent summer internship under uh, Dr. Nandita Narayan Swami at Sri Venkateshwar College. Um, to begin with my uh, poster, I'll give you a little uh, preview and a little introduction. Uh, herbs and spices, as we know, have been uh, seen to have therapeutic uh, effects and properties all along for, for various years. They can be used um, in single herb formulations or in polyherbal formulations. Now, if you want to go at a very basic level, polyformal uh, formulations are the usage of one or more herbs, which is what we wanted to check here, the synergism and the antagonism, if there is any antagonism with polyherbal formulations. Um, polyherbal formulations have a lot of advantages over single herbs. Uh, it are, they are highly effective, they are safer, they are uh, they're, you know, budget friendly and have a better acceptance. Uh, diseases like uh, allergic rhinitis is categorized by inflammation and oxidative stress and which, is, which are prevented, uh, which have been seen to be prevented by our polyherbal formulations. Now, to construct a polyherbal formulation, we would be standardizing uh, antioxidant and anti-inflammatory tests uh, for various potential herbs before, esta uh, before establishing the ratio in which they should be combined. Okay. Now, uh, talking about the experimental design through which we went ahead, um, for the sample preparations, as I mentioned earlier, we took a single herb formulation and polyherbal formulation. Now, for a single herb formulation, uh, pepper, ginger, lime, and honey were the four herbs which we chose. Pepper and ginger were uh, taken 5% concentration weight by volume, and lime and honey were selected as 20% volume by volume. For polyherbal formulations, we had seven combinations across. Um, uh, ginger plus honey was the first, pepper plus honey, ginger plus lime, pepper plus lime, all the four together. Uh, ginger pepper line and ginger and pepper. The percentage has been mentioned in the design itself. 
with all of these formulations, what we did was we uh, standardized three assay. One was the polyphenol concentrations, which was done by take uh, by the FCR method using the gallic acid standard. The next was antioxidant assay, in which we performed two assays. One was a FRAP a ferric uh, iron reducing antioxidant power okay. assay. Company or I'm sorry. Please carry on. Okay, for the DPPH assay um, and the DPPH assay we performed. For the third assay, which we standardized was anti-inflammatory assay, which was a nitric oxide production assay. Um, the questions addressed here were, uh, do single herb formulations of pepper, ginger, lime, honey have antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties first? Does this antioxidant and anti-inflammatory pro uh, property correlate to uh, polyphenol concentrations in pepper, ginger, lime, and honey? Uh, what are what is the antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties in different combinations of polyherbal formulations with pe of pepper with ginger, lime, and honey? Uh, the do polyherbal formulations of spices natural products sh uh, show synergistic or antagonistic effects in the uh, in the assays which we performed? Now uh, <laughs> let's look at the uh, polyphenol concentrations. Uh, let's focus on the first and the uh, the graph below it, we'll name it figure one and two. Um, we can clearly see that lemon showed the highest levels of polyphenols, all right, um, which has a particular polyphenol present called aerocitrin. Ginger and pepper had similar polyphenolic concentrations and um, which have polyphenols named as chargols, gingerols in ginger and in pepper, it's uh, piperine. Uh, as reported in the literature, lower concentration of honey was seen uh, significantly in the polyphenolic concentrations. Now, when we checked for the combinations, we can see the combinations have an additive value, more than the additive value. The CO4, which is our uh, pepper and lime, has, had, has the highest uh, polyphenolic concentration. Let's move on to our antioxidant assays. That, that is the FRAP and the DPPH assay. Please refer to figure three and four and five and six. Uh, the highest antioxidant property is observed in pepper, while honey has the lowest antioxidant property in comparison to all four of them. Um, this correlates to a higher concentration of polyphenols in pepper as compared to honey. However, lemon has the highest polyphenol concentration and does not show very effective antioxidant uh, properties, indicating that there might be some compounds in lemon which are inhibitory to the antioxidant uh, property. Uh, honey has poor polyphenol levels, but still shows a significant a higher antioxidant property. The antioxidant property in all polyherbal formulations was higher than what was observed in a single herb formulation, indicating that there is a definite synergistic effect. Um, this is particularly seen in CO5. CO5 is a uh, combination which has all four of uh, the herbs, the pepper, ginger, lime, and honey. Um, where even a poor uh, antioxidant like honey has uh, shown a significant rise. Now coming to uh, figures seven, uh, figure seven and eight, the anti-inflammatory assay for individual herbs and uh, combinations. Now for the single herb formulations, we can clearly see that pepper and ginger have a high inflammatory uh, property, whereas um, the nitric oxide production was not reduced by lemon and honey. All polyherbal formulations show a reduction in uh, the nitric oxide production. This clearly indicates that uh, even the poor anti-inflammatory formulations like, uh, like honey and ginger have a significant anti-inflammatory response when combined with pepper and ginger. Uh, all of our combinations were below the standards uh, to note clearly. In all of the combinations, we've expressed it as the mean plus and minus of standard error. These are my references, and I would uh, like to acknowledge BSI CMB MSU for this opportunity and Sri Venkateshwar College uh, for helping me work on this project to uh, expand my abilities and knowledge. Uh, thank you. If there's any further questions, I would like to take them.
Uh, am I in my back? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, which one you have found best? Single herbal poly formulation or poly herbal? Polyherbal was found to be better because it had it definitely showed a synergistic effect, which was what we were trying to find and look for. So I won't say that uh, single herbs are not effective. They are definitely, but polyherbals give us um, an effective assay compared to a single herb. It has a cumulative oh. additive thing. Yes, ma'am. Your findings was uh, you have found out the polyphenol concentration as well as uh, DPPA. Yes, ma'am. Um, polyphenols, antioxidants, and anti-inflammatory we did. Anti-inflammatory also. Yes, ma'am. I okay. mentioned. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, which of the constituents may be responsible for this antioxidant and anti-inflammatory activity? So, uh, the constituents from uh, as po in polyphenols, uh, we can see that ginger has uh, some properties present of uh, shawgols and gingerols, uh, which can definitely show us a higher range of polyphenolic range. Uh, and the in pe also in pepper, there are there are found specific as uh, like piperium, which can be seen to have a good. Uh, property for polyphenolic concentration. Okay. Uh, so you have made this formulation. So while preparation of the formulation, any method you have used, uh, like you just mix or uh, any method you have used, like heat have you applied or something like that? Ma'am, these were, uh, so what we did, we did not want to vary the standards. So what we did was we, uh, for let's say uh, I wanted for pepper and it was 5% weight by volume. So I prepared a solution with distilled water. I filtered it. So because the constituents, had, uh, I don't want them to have a different reading in the spectrometer when I took my readings. And, uh, and then after that, I prepared my 5-5 ml assay samples, which I used again and again. For combinations, ma'am, uh, for my ratio, uh, let's suppose the ratio was 1 is to 1 is to 2. Then I, uh, I prepared my combination separately and I used them. So there were uh, less chances of, you know, uh, mixing a higher herb. Or more herb. Okay. So just, just the aqueous uh, solution you have added. Right? Yes, ma'am. Distilled water and uh, the herb. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Prananjali. Now I next move on to poster presentation by Dr. Santwana Palai and Dr. Shyam Sundakesh from College of Veterinary Science and Animal Husbandry, Odisha University of Agriculture and Technology and West Bengal University of Animal and Fishery Sciences, India, on topic on health benefits of plants and phytochemicals in lifestyle diseases. Am I audible, ma'am? Ma'am, your voice is a little low. Okay. Please be a bit loud. Give me some time. Is it okay now? Is it okay now? Oh, kind of, mom, but you could be a bit loud. This mm. is not okay. Now, now is it okay? Yes, mom, it's quite okay now. Okay, let me share the screen, ma'am. Is it uh, visible, ma'am? Is it visible, ma'am? Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Yes, it's visible. Okay. Um, uh, can I start, ma'am? Please. Good afternoon, everyone, members of the jury. I am Dr. Uh, uh, there was some disturbance, I think. Uh, okay, ma'am, I will start once again. Good afternoon, everyone, members of the jury. Uh, good afternoon. <laughs> So, so sorry to interrupt you, ma'am. Uh, kindly full screen your presentation, please. Okay, okay, uh, 
some while will be that uh, the uh, okay wait 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 Uh, kindly tap on the poster so that you could full screen your poster. Is it now uh, okay? Is it okay, ma'am? Uh, it's okay, ma'am. Kindly continue with your presentation, please. Uh, has it opened yes. properly? Uh, actually, it has been opened, but it was in the minimized mode itself. Uh, can I try again? Yeah, sure, please. Is it okay now? Yes, ma'am, it's visible now. I to continue with your presentation. Is it uh, visible uh, fully or uh, the size has to be increased? Yeah, yeah, it's fine now, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm thankful for the, to the organizers for giving me this opportunity to talk on this topic. Members of the jury, I am uh, good afternoon to everyone once again. I am Dr. Santana Palai, working as assistant professor in the Department of Veterinary Pharmacology and Toxicology, College of Veterinary Science and Animal Husbandry under OUT, Odisha. So today I will talk on the topic, uh, health benefits of plants and phytochemicals in lifestyle diseases. So first we will talk, what are lifestyle diseases? Why these lifestyle diseases are coming into being? Lifestyle diseases, these are coming into being because of sedentary lifestyle, uh, increased consumption of drugs or smoking, or uh, things like uh, obesity, uh, things like uh, unhealthy food habits. So what are the lifestyle diseases? Generally, the lifestyle diseases that are seen nowadays are diabetes, stroke, obesity, metabolic syndrome, heart diseases, uh, osteoporosis, arthritis, like this disease. These are generally chronic diseases. What happens in this chronic disease? In this chronic diseases, there is increase in the amount of free radicals or that oxidative state is getting induced. That is presence of more amount of reactive oxygen species or reactive nitrogen species. So I would now like to remind people that you just think what you have eaten nowadays. You think that since the last week, what you are eating? Are you eating a very good food? Are you eating a food that is just having variety or a simple food or anything we are eating? We are generally eating for the eating, eating purpose. But we are not thinking that we should be having food which is having varieties, which is having colors. These colors in the food generally is due to the presence of fruits and vegetables. We should remember our plants, they give us fruits and vegetables which have large amount of antioxidant. How they give that? They will give it with the help of phytochemicals. Apart from giving vitamins, minerals, the plants give us a very important thing that is phytochemicals. What are phytochemicals? These phytochemicals are secondary metabolites that are being exerted when the plant is in stress. The plant is not able to help itself. So it will exert some secondary metabolites. These secondary metabolites help the plant to elevate or get itself protected from the microbes, from the parasites, any stress, change in climate, things. So these secondary metabolites can be consumed by us also for many purposes. These plant metabolites are having the properties of immunomodulation. What is immunomodulation? Our body has its own power of getting rid of bacteria, viruses, and other pathogens which are in the surrounding itself. If our immunity is good enough, these bacteria, viruses will not able to express itself or form the disease in our body. So if our model immunomodulation is good, we can take these phytochemicals and make ourselves more immunocompetent against those pathogens and we will not get those diseases. Similarly, it also acts against substances from becoming carcinogens. Whatever we are consuming, it will make the thing very good so that it will not become carcinogen and lead to cancer. Many a times, it is having lot many amount of antioxidant. This antioxidant will provide you protection against the free radical damages. 
Also, there are altering of the cell signaling pathways and gene expression by the way in which it will provide you good amount of uh, elevation of this chronic diseases. So we will see what are the components of phytochemicals. In the picture in which I have shown, so we will discuss one by one what are these. These are the compounds known as carotenoids. What are carotenoids? Some examples are leucopene, lutein, zeaxanthin. How we get this? We will get this from red, orange color or green color vegetables and this will increase our immune response. This will increase our body's capacity to fight against diseases like cancer. This will prevent macular degeneration as seen in case of diabetes. Okay. The second group is catechins. Where from we get catechins? Catechins are present in large amount in coffee, tea like beverages. These catechins can be consumed or are consumed in Indian households regularly so that they will help in elevating those chronic diseases. It reduces the risk of heart diseases and many types of cancers also. Also, it gives us immunity. Then flavonoids. Flavonoids are the components of the polyphenols present in fruits, vegetables. We can see the fruits like uh, naringenin uh, is present in the citrus fruit, quercetin present in onion, uh, broccoli, uh, mangoes, and the, these will maintain your brain function and heart health. This also help you inhibit the inflammatory diseases. This also help in increasing your immunity. Next group is saponin. Saponins are anti-carcinogens. As I have discussed, it will prevent the substance in our body from becoming carcinogenic. If a substance in our body becomes carcinogen, then it will promote the cell division uncontrollably leading to the cancer. So it is anti-cancerous in agent because it is preventing the components to become cancerous. It is anti-inflammatory. Whenever the body is having some inflammation, it will help in decreasing that inflammation. Neuroprotective, protecting from neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's diseases. Okay. These are also present in beans, sprouts, etc. Next group is isothianates. These are present in cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cabbage. These have got anti-cancerous properties. Also, it helps in the process of detoxification. Detoxification is the process by which the unwanted pathogens or unwanted drug metabolite or any kind of uh, pollutants, when it enter into the body, it should be detoxified so that the, it is excreted from the body easily and the uh, good important uh, points are remaining in the body. And Hello. 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 Am I audible? Hello. Yeah, now you are audible. Uh -huh. There was some problem. Okay. Can I continue, ma'am? Sure. Yeah. So we were uh, talking about the isocyanates, how we can uh, prevent the uh, diseases like uh, cancer or multiplication of those. present in more amount is don't thing. It helps in decreasing the cholesterol level. It helps in elevating the heart diseases. Okay. So I came to the point how these plants are helping. So generally we have four points. First one is the antioxidant. Our bodies have antioxidant up to some extent. But if we are getting that um, phytochemicals of higher amount, then this antioxidant will help in elevating those chronic diseases. Precipitating factors will be inhibited and the, the chronic diseases will not be occurring. Second point is anti-inflammatory or uh, pain producing substances that, that is swelling is there. When these things are there, there will be presence of interleukins, prostaglandins like things in the system which are producing the pain. If our phytochemicals are being consumed, these will act as uh, decreasing the formation of these interleukins or prostaglandin like for things which produce pain in the body. So these can act as anti-inflammatory or analgesic substances. Also in can, some cases, we can see some herbs also act as antiparasitic uh, drug also. And in some cases also, if there is a invasion of some bacteria, inversion of some virus, this plant can also act as antibacterial, or antimicrobial, antifungal, and antiviral. 
in those cases the plant or phytochemical they are able to recognize the uh, cell which are not um, eukaryotic they it will differentiate it is your body cell it is eukaryotic it has to be protected it will act against only the prokaryotic cell or the bacterial genome or the viral genome uh, in case of virus it will stop it from entering into your body replicating multiplying and uh, showing its effect in case of bacteria it will inhibit it entry into the body through the cell membrane inhibition through the cell wall inhibition or affecting the protein synthesis these bacteria they will affect the body at different step of the eukaryotic cell so these phytochemicals they can act at different steps and stop the bacterial invasion stop the viral invasion as well as the fungal invasion so i will just want to say that many clinical trials are going on like the my previous talkers had told also there are many clinical the trials are going on about the phytochemicals how these phytochemicals are beneficial in alleviating different type of diseases but meanwhile i would uh, say that uh, take away message that we should make sure that our diet is rich in polyphenols so our thing is only to increase the amount of fruits vegetables nuts in our daily diet in our daily diet it should be more than 2 cups to 6 uh, cups depending on our height weight work culture the amount we are active on depending on those factors fruits and vegetables so i will another emphasis another point that more colorful is our diet more is the amount of phytochemicals that we are consuming so we should consume more amount fruit vegetables and nuts you can also the nutraceuticals are available and we can consume nutraceuticals also yes we can consume nutraceuticals but the way in which our body will accept the phytochemicals from the fruits and vegetables or the nuts itself it is comparatively more than what we get from the nutraceuticals or the um, herb medicine which have been made out of these phytochemicals so i will advise everyone that there should be intake of plant based diet which will provide its uh, antioxidant anti inflammatory and antimicrobial effects and it has been recognized as a thing of producing the antioxidant effect and it can elevate your chronic disease and it will make you more uh, healthier thank you ma'am thank you uh, you have given one conclusive line at the last right hello yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah yeah uh, that you are telling that your fruits and vegetables is better beneficial than the nutraceuticals and the herbal medicines right yes ma'am with respect to uh, hello 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 yeah 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 uh, with respect to i want to be more naturally and more easily consumable and more amount can be seen i do agree madam in the nutraceutical it will be in the more concentrated form and the concentration will be more um but i say that uh, you can have it naturally nutraceutical it is also uh, not easy to afford also all class of people cannot have nutraceutical on daily basis but all class of people can have fruits and vegetables on daily basis yeah but there are certain fruits and vegetables which also aggravate certain kind of disorders right uh, but the there will be specific ma'am the people who are suffering from the uric acid Yes, ma'am. Yes, if they ma take certain fruits, yes, certain vegetables, they will be having problems. The thing is, dose, ma'am. The thing is, dose. Uh, what we say that if a certain person is exposed, or if a certain person is having some gout-like problem, so he or she should not be consuming more uric acid. So he or she then again, diabetes. people ma suffering from diabetes cannot yes, take fruits yes ma'am yes ma'am that is person specific and it will vary from person to person But yeah i am taking uh, talking in general what the general person once we are talking no that is that is what in general everybody says but how much this is beneficial like we should able to take naturally or will be able to take the medicine or will be able to take the nutraceuticals this is a contradictory sentence Is it? Okay. Uh, just I wanted to say that uh, taking fruits and vegetables will keep us more healthier. Ah, that's true. That's true. When we are in healthy state. When we are in healthy state. Exactly. Yeah. True. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your presentation. Now, next, I call upon. post presentation by kashish joshi from darmeshin desai university india on topic of the role of nutraceuticals in 
preventive cardiovascular diseases and promoting cardiovascular health. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hello. Uh, yes, ma'am. Just give us a moment. Dr. Santwana Palai, please uh, unshare your screen, please. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma One minute. Is it okay, ma'am? I think it's okay. Is it okay? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, ma'am. Very good afternoon. Please share your screen. Screen is visible, ma'am. Hello. Hello. Yeah, it's visible. Please carry on. I am Kati Joshi from Faculty of Pharmacy, Dharamsi Delta University and student of Master of Pharmacy. My topic is the role of nutraceutical in preventing cardiovascular disease and promoting cardiovascular health. I choose this topic because uh, the main course uh, uh, to this is, uh, is our unhealthy lifestyle and unhealthy diet. So my main purpose is let food be your medicine. So nutraceutical, as you all know, that a combination of nutrition plus pharmaceutical, those nutrition, which also have a health benefit as a pharmaceutical. And, uh, so numerous nutraceutical and dietary supplements have been shown to have a protective benefits against cardiovascular disease. I have particularly chosen cardiovascular disease health. And this straightforward lifestyle changes offer possible and possibly simple and cost-effective option for population based on initiative of cardiovascular risk reduction. So here are some nutraceutical components that have uh, a promotive effect in uh, cardiovascular health to improve cardiovascular health and life expectancy. So the first is flavonoid. We all know that flavonoid is a second major secondary metabolite that are available in that planet. So for flavonoid, uh, flavonoid contains food is fruits, vegetables, uh, grains, legumes, beverages made from plant material like tea, coffee, Coca-Cola, wine. Also include anthocyanins, flavonols, phenolic acids, steel beans, revarestrol. And this will reduce apoptosis, means Side death could reduce karta hai, inhibit ROS production, reactive oxygen species, reduce ventricular dysfunctioning and blood pressure, decrease hypertrophy and fibrosis. Then the next is spirulina. There is a spirulina powder that, that's a cyanobacteria and available from protein, vitamin, mineral, carotenoid, and phycocyanin. Supplementing with spirulina has been linked to positive change in blood lipid profile means oral consumption of spirulina maximized ring to significant alteration in tri total cholesterol, TC means total cholesterol and low density lipoprotein, which is harmful for our body. Then the third is plant sterol or phytosterol. As we see that it is available from grains, fruits, veggies, green veggies, beans. So that have uh, inhibit intestinal absorption of cholesterol, control obesity, then anti also have antioxidant property, regulate glucose and lipid metabolism, and control insulin resistance. As we seen in flavonoid, is also uh, benefit uh, action in antioxidant, cardiotonic, blood flow improve blood flow, reduce cholesterol. Also another alpha tocopherol that is vitamin E that is a fat soluble vitamin that also neutralizes reactive oxygen species and promote oxidation of lipoprotein means triglyceride and total cholesterol, which will be harmful for our body. Then revaretrol, Reva, Reva that is a polyphenolic compound that found in grapes and berries, red wine, and also have a beneficial effect on cardiovascular system. Then another is curcumin that prevent cardiac hypertrophy, decrease total serum cholesterol, also have a membrane stabilizing effect in myocardial ischemia and reduce chronic inflammation that is caused by obesity, metabolic syndrome, and improve vascular function. Another is uh, garlic, uh, as we use garlic in our home, 
that have uh, anticoagulant means blood thinner, as we can say. Then omega-3 fatty acids that will decrease triglycerides, inflammation and platelet aggregation. Omega-3 fatty acid, which will highest in, uh, I think, uh, walnut. Walnut have omega-3 fatty acid in a good uh, proportion. Then also have a vasodilation effect, improve blood circulation and also useful in various medical conditions like psychiatric disorder, gastrointestinal, renal, metabolic and rheumatic uh, disorder. So here are some nutraceutical compounds which are helpful for uh, promoting our cardiovascular health and improving some extent of our diseases state like cholesterol or myocardial infection or ischemia. Sir, what are you doing? Hello. 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 Yes, ma'am. So you are finding out the nutraceutical for cardiovascular activity, right? Yes. So are you preparing the formulas then? No, I'm not. It's just a, I just collect some of the review literature or review articles for simply a cardiovascular health and then I made a poster. Okay. What is the reason behind doing this review article? Ma'am, I just thought that uh, let food be your medicine. My main concept is that that we medicine in our food, food we have nutraceutical or something like that, healthy diet or healthy lifestyle, which we promote our cardiovascular health. That's why I have this. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Now, next, I move on to the next presentation. Poster, pre poster presentation by Amrita Thakur from Vishwakarma University School of Pharmacy, India, on topic of nutraceuticals in diabetics and blood sugar management. Oh, Amrita ma'am, kindly unmute yourself and speak. Uh, very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Amrita Thakur. I am here to present my poster on nutraceuticals in diabetes and blood sugar management. Uh, this is my first attempt to choose nutraceuticals because uh, it takes my attention that uh, uh, in nowadays we are taking so many medicines and everything. But by this COVID time and everything, we understand the importance of food, that how food is very important, how it increases our immunity how it will help us to regulate a healthier life. So here I'm presenting my poster on nutraceuticals and diabetes and blood sugar management. See, uh, diabetes is nowadays, diabetes is a very uh, common uh, type of disease. Uh, it can be, uh, it is all dependent on the lifestyle modifications. 
most of the times when we are going to doctor they are now asking us to take less medicines and they are asking us to make lifestyle modification all of us do this lifestyle modifications but i guess when we get something in support of our lifestyle modification so whatever changes we are making in our lifestyle it uh, these nutraceuticals will give add ons to that uh, efforts so here herbal medications provide better therapeutic prospects with fewer side effect than the conventional treatment alternatives available as synthetic drugs for treating diabetes botanicals vitamins antioxidants minerals amino acids and fatty acids are all examples of nutraceuticals used to improve health stop disease progression and alleviate symptoms therapeutically nutraceutical compounds have been praised for their potential ability to do everything from preventing disease to treating it to improve health several clinical clinically used nutraceuticals have been found to modify a variety of biochemical and clinical end points including those related to the development of diabetes mellitus metabolic syndrome and its consequences now we all know that nutraceuticals is food or dietary constituents with a medical health benefit including prevention and treatment of disease it refers to natural function a uh, natural function or medical food or bioactive phytochemicals that have health promoting and disease preventing properties so we can have this nutraceuticals and these nutraceuticals basically contains or mainly contains vitamins lipids protein carbohydrate minerals and other necessary nutrients as the name nutraceutical itself is saying that it is related to the nutrients we all eat healthy food we all eat we all try to eat healthy food and everything but because of adulteration and because of number of uh, reasons like uh, uh, ill practices in our farming or use of pesticides and all our food quality has been deteriorated uh, 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 that means they are not that much good as they are uh, they were in our past life so these nutraceuticals will help us to balance that nutrition in our body there are number of nutraceuticals which which we can use for maintaining or for preventing or for managing the blood sugar level and these nutraceuticals can be used by patients suffering from diabetes so categories of nutraceuticals for diabetes are first is nutrients second is herbals then dietary supplements so nutrients which we can take uh, in nutraceuticals the, we can take multivitamins minerals amino acids and fatty acids herbs or botanical products such as concentrates and extract nowadays we listen so much about having kadhas and all even to increase our immunity most of us must have used these kadhas extract concentrates uh, in covid times now we know that what is the uh, importance of being herbal okay so next is dietary supplements reagents derived other sources uh, serving specific functions such as sport nutrition weight loss supplements and mean uh, mean replacement before uh, covid there was a taboo that one should not use supplement or any kind of substitute to fulfill any kind of nutritional deficiency or any kind of vitamin deficiency everyone was telling us that we should have a uh, healthy food and everything but here i am presenting that nutraceuticals are important to take in our diet because they uh, we are having food but these nutraceuticals along with food will help us to increase the nutrients in our body which our freshly cooked or fresh, freshly uh, cropped uh, food material is unable to get here i have presented some nutraceuticals which will help in blood sugar management first is alpha lipoic acid alpha lipoic acid and dihydrolipoic acid contribute to regeneration of other antioxidants such as vitamin c and vitamin e it protects the retina against ischemic reperfusion injury to the retina in consideration to uh, which is considered to be one of the major cause of visual loss and occurs in diabetic retinopathy alpha lipogenic acid lipoic acid increases insulin sensitivity by approximately 18 to 20% in patients with diabetes type 2 diabetes mellitus 
some phytoestrogens phytoestrogens are structurally similar to estradiol and mimic its effect in animal studies soy and phytoestrogens are effective at reducing adipose tissue and improving glucose in uptake adiposity control and regulate glucose metabolism now some antioxidants vitamins which are used for diabetes are vitamin c we have also read about uh, various more advantages of vitamin c see this is the beauty of nutraceuticals that we are taking one nutraceutical but they have a number of advantages vitamin c is a chain breaking antioxidant uh, it help to reduce uh, a, uh, sorry uh, it uh, it can be taken uh, maximum up to 800 mg per day it uh, uh, can be used by patients which are uh, suffering from type 2 diabetes vitamin d most of the patients or most of the person nowadays have this vitamin d deficiency and they are taking uh, every week this vitamin d tablets to <coughs> sorry vitamin d tablets to uh, overcome the deficiency which is caused by vitamin d uh, previously we were knowing that the source of vitamin d is sunlight right now also the pure source of vitamin d is sunlight but we are now able to get vitamin d through this nutraceutical also and we are able to uh, maintain the uh, level of this vitamin d through this nutraceutical so vitamin d may modulate the pathogenesis t of type a diabetes and they can decrease insulin resistance and in increase insulin secretion in our body so we can externally get this vitamin d uh, through this nutraceuticals also vitamin e vitamin e may also have greater non antioxidant requirement due to increase free radical production secondary to hypoglycemia so there are again number of nutraceuticals like coenzyme q10 and protective minerals which are very general minerals or which are very general vitamins or components which we can easily get from our uh, food and everything but these nutraceuticals will help us to uh, get these nutrients in exact quantity and thus they will help in our life they will help in uh, regulating these nutrients in our body so in conclusion i want to say that nutraceuticals are food supplements that have, that have nutritional value and all the nutri nutrition uh, discussed here have exhibited significant clinical and pharmacological activity there is an increased demand by patients for use of natural products with anti diabetic activity because these products uh, give less side effect and more uh, beneficial effect so a uh, well balanced a uh, vegetarian diet choosing to form a variety of food when complemented when com complemented with the other healthy lifestyle practices would significantly de decrease the risk of diabetes mellitus and thus we can easily maintain this blood sugar level in our body and thus diabetic patients can also lead a very uh, healthy life thank you so much thank you that very well explained the nutritional issue in diabetes and blood sugar management uh, i you. hope you will be i hope you will be not only restricting you to do the review you will be doing some research related to this because yes, you have yes, a exhaustive review yeah yes ma'am definitely yeah on the way. thank you thank you thank you so much have a good day thank you all thank you ma'am Now I will move on to next oral presentation by Preeta M from Chetanad School of Pharmaceutical Sciences, India, on topic of marine drugs: an overview of screening method, chemical constituent, and uses. Preeta, am are you there? Hi, ah, yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Ah, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Ah, uh, I'm Preeta. 
pursuing B from fourth year in Chetnad Academy of Research and Education in Chennai, Tamil Nadu. Uh, my topic is uh, marine drug and overview of screening method, chemical constitute and uses. Introduction. Uh, the oceans cover 70% of earth surfaces and contain an extraordinary diversity of life. Marine environment contain countless resources, but research into marine drugs are limited and most of it still remains unexplored. As we all know that uh, there are various uh, resources are available, but the resourcing into marine drugs are very, very less. Marine contains uh, more than 80% of plants and animal species in the world. Marine organisms such as sponges, tunicates, fishes, soft corals, mollusks, echinoderms, these are all contain a very good uh, phytochemical constitute that can uh, code for various uh, properties like anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, anti-fungal and anti-malarial. And these are the, some of the pictures of uh, marine organisms. First picture is of uh, tunicates and second one is uh, codfish. And last, so small two pictures, first one is sponges and next one is soft corals. And next, uh, approved drugs of marine origin. Uh, these drugs are approved by Food and Drug Administration, that is FDA. Uh, so first one is uh, citarabine. It can be, uh, it can be uh, so it, uh, obtained from uh, uh, marine sponge, that is uh, Tetia crypta. And the nucleoside, what, uh, the nucleoside used is uh, arabinosyl cytosine. It is mainly used for uh, different types of leukemias, that is dead cancers. And second one is uh, vitarabin. This is also obtained from uh, Spain species, Tithia crypta. And the uh, nucleoside used is uh, adenos, adenine arabinocytes. And it is code for uh, antiviral. Uh, next one is uh, zinconotide. Uh, it is a mollusk type. It is extracted and purified from venom of snake, conus magus. Uh, the chemical class here used is a peptide and it is uh, used for uh, analgesic. Next one is uh, trabecterin. It can be obtained from uh, tunicate, ectina, cedia, turbinata. The alkaloid here used is a uh, tetrahydroisoprenolin and it is used for uh, ovarian cancer. Uh, next drug is uh, eribulin. It is also obtained from your uh, sponges. Uh, the macro here used is alicondin B and it is used for the, uh, breast cancer. There are still many drugs around research and clinical trials. It, uh, it can be soon, it can be approved by the FDA. Then uh, next is a screening method of compounds. There are several ways for screening the compounds. Uh, they, every organism contains uh, several compounds, but certain compounds only use code for uh, uh, pharmacological actions. This, uh, the chemical and the physical chemical screening is the search for new chemical structure regardless of their biological activity. The chemical and physical chemical properties of separated compounds can be analyzed by using uh, spectroscopic method that is UV, visible, uh, mass spectrophotometer, nuclear magnetic resource. And for obtaining a, uh, detecting a particular compound, we can use a thin layer chromatography. The development of HPLC DADMS system allows the specific detection of single components in a complex mixture. Uh, that's what I said. Uh, if you are detecting a component, it should be in a mixture, but we have to detect a single component, we can use the system. Uh, every method, assay method, it should con all, uh, it contain uh, interpretations. So, so we so we require a careful interpretation because that can provide a lot of information about that product. Uh, in, in vitro test could be done on a molecular or cellular level. Test on molecular level is based on receptor system or enzyme system. Uh, fluorescence based assay technologies, isotopic labeling, calorimetry, chemoluminescence, these are the uh, 
method used for detecting the compounds. So first, uh, I have said that uh, in vitro tests can be done on both the molecular and cellular level, but cellular level is a very complex process compared to the molecular process. And it gives a very physiological relevant, more physiological relevant content. Next, uh, molecular docking in research and discovery of potential marine drugs. So discoveries and development of marine drug and of emotion is a difficult process. But nowadays, uh, molecular docking technology is very used in everywhere, every field. So computer-aided drug design is a computational chemistry method for designing and optimizing late compound by computer simulation, calculation, and prediction of relationship between the drug and the receptor. Uh, any pharmacological action that should that should happen means uh, drug and the receptor should bind and coordinate for that. For this uh, marine drugs, uh, every time we are, we can't able to get it to the sea and taking the resources and then for and then uh, research into it. It was a very difficult one. By using a computer design, we can find we can easily find their drug and what kind of receptor and what uh, what kind of mechanism action it should take place. Everything we should. Uh, See it in your uh, docking studies. Uh, this would be very useful. Uh, by analyzing the interaction between a small molecule, silicon, and receptor biomacromolecule, this method could calculate physical and chemical method to predict the binding force and affinity strength, and then realize structure based drug design which is greater significance to structure prediction of protein ligand complex, targeted drug screening, and mechanism of pharmacological action. This method shows virtual screening of unknown compounds and to greatly improve the speed of the new drug design and discovery. Conclusion. Uh, we should conclude that uh, if there are uh, many researchers that should happen being on the land resources only. We are not at all uh, exploring the marine uh, organisms. Or, uh, as, and uh, we are for screening of the components also nowadays is easy by using a uh, docking studies. Technology development provides an easy way to research and development of new drug products. Molecule docking is a theoretical method of studying interaction and recognition between protein and ligand. Uh, these are my references, and that's it. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, ma'am. Hello. Hello. Yeah. You've collected enough information about the marine drugs, but what are the challenges we face when we are starting about the marine drugs? Ma'am, I can't get you, ma'am. Can you repeat it, ma'am? Yeah. What are the challenges you will face when you are starting about the marine drugs? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, there are... Uh, oh, because if at earlier days, uh, we can't able to... We are, don't have any technologies later type of. For that, uh, you have to get into the ocean and taking the resources, and then only research will take place. But nowadays, it is not like that. Uh, we can using uh, docking studies and all. Uh, we can uh, we can study it uh, using computer. So whatever the information the computer is giving, afterwards only they are getting into the sea and taking the resource and start starting their researches. So compared to earlier studies. Docking studies only will be used to study the protein materials, right? Ah, but yes, not about the identification, authentication, yes, and, and the collection. Ah, yes, ma'am. These are all, uh, that is a major task only, ma'am. So that is why we are, they are all uh, not exploring in, in the marine organisms, ma'am. Mostly they are searching for a land sources only. So I think that would have been included in your review. What are the challenges to be faced? What are the Problem to standardize the uh, uh, product when you get what is the problem facing the isolation? Right.
Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Now, next, I call upon oral presentation by Dr. Vidya R. Naya, Amrita University, India, on a topic of marine resources used in Ayurveda or review. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Okay, yeah, let me share my screen. So, is my screen visible? Yes, it's visible actually. Okay. Namaskar. Good afternoon, all. Uh, myself, Dr. Vidya Arnayo, uh, the regular Victoria Department of Commodore School of Ayurveda. So, my uh, presentation topic is marine resources used in Ayurveda, a review. So, uh, what is a marine pharmacology? The marine pharmacology is a branch uh, of pharmaceutical science which focuses on the substance with active pharmacological property present in marine species of plants and animals. Now, uh, which are the sources of marine drugs? So there are various sources of marine drugs. Uh, some of them are sponges, seaweed, soft corals, stone cakes, echinoderms, etc. And uh, how this marine uh, species is helpful in medicinal purpose? This marine invertebrates as a defense mechanism release toxic compounds to protect from attack of predators, which gave a scope to scientists to study it as secondary metabolite and also to survive in specific habitats of oceans such as temperature, hydrostatic pressure, levels of salinity, etc. Marine organisms have developed different adaptation mechanisms, including the production of specific biomolecules with diverse pharmacological activities like anti cancer, anti diabetic, and anti biotic. The bioactive compounds can be extracted from uh, various species such as marine bacteria, marine fungi, and marine microalgae. And uh, moving to the uh, topic, the uh, Ayurvedic references of marine drugs. What is the Ayurvedic view on uh, marine drugs? Is that uh, in Ayurveda classes, drugs are classified into uh, uh, the drugs that uh, from plant origin, mineral origin, and animal origin. So along with the methods like Rajada and so on. The, uh, that is uh, gold and silver, the marine drugs are uh, grouped under Pathiva group, group of drugs. And this uh, marine drugs used in the list of medicine is uh, mainly calcium compounds like Shanga, Shukti, Varadha, uh, which are the main source of calcium carbonate, uh, and uh, which are the main source of calcium carbonate. And uh, these are the uh, Sudhavarta means uh, groups of calcium containing drug like uh, Shanga Samadhi is included uh, in this group, and the Pravala, that is pearl and coral, is included in Ratna Varga and uh, Varadega Sutra in Sadhana Rasta by uh, various Ajayas. Now, uh, there are so many marine drugs explained in Ayurveda classes, but due to time limit, I'm explaining here only uh, uh, three drugs. The first one is Shanga. So, uh, Shanga is a hard uh, calcareous shell of the species of large predatory sea soil of Terminella Pyram. Rapan Sankas Palam Gastropoda. So uh, these are mostly found in shallow ocean coast with abundant seaweed. And according to Ajarya, there are two types, Dekshnavarta and Vamavarta. And uh, Vamavarta is the one which is used for uh, medicinal purposes. Uh, so uh, these are the references in Nikan Rus about Shanka. And uh, before using this uh, drug uh, into med for medicinal purposes, we have to 
look the properties. Uh, some uh, properties are mentioned should be round, uh, soft in touch, uh, clear like. Uh, this uh, properties uh, uh, is used for medicinal purpose and uh, for purification uh, before administrating to for internal or external application. Purification is necessary and uh, this small piece of shanka is subjected to is where the purpose in Panchika, that is salt rural. And these are the properties uh, mentioned in Ayurveda classes. And its uh, therapeutic uses includes uh, that uh, in uh, dyspepsia, it is uh, given along with the arm leggy chuna, is administrated uh, together. And uh, for uh, for Netra Yoga, that for eye disease, purified shanka is uh, powders applied as a polyrium in uh, polyrium. And for formulations include Shankar Dravaga, Shankar Basma, etc. And this is a research study uh, using um, Shankar Basma. So here, uh, comparison to purification process is compared, uh, such as uh, first one is uh, with the lemon juice and uh, second with the uh, salt driven. So uh, patient with symptoms of uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease is selected and uh, the um, Purification with the lemon juice shows more effect than the uh, purification with the soap glue. So its uh, acid neutralization capacity has enhanced. And this is another study where Shangabasma formulated to Shangabasma tablet and it also shows the neutralization capacity. And these are the some formulations that are available in market. Uh, that Shangabasma and Shangabasma capsules are available. Uh, Chandrodia Varti and Akutumarasa. Uh, Next drug is uh, Samudra Fena, that is cattle fish bone. And these are the references from uh, Ayurveda. So, uh, the physical properties include white brownish, it should be white brownish in color, have bright white surface, and oblong in shape and traveling at times, and very light and fragile. And uh, for purification, it is uh, triturated, the outer surface is scrapped and uh, powdered and triturated with the citrus lemon juice and then it is used for medicinal purposes. Uh, next is uh, the properties explained uh, in uh, Ayurvedic uh, Samhitas and uh, uh, it is Akni Deepaka that, uh, that means it uh, enhance the uh, digestive power and uh, it uh, indications include snapper roca that is eye diseases, ear diseases, skin diseases, etc. And uh, its uh, main formulations include uh, Mahanila Gurika, Varti, and Pravara, uh, Samadhana, and Chana, etc. And uh, uh, this is a study of chronic or uh, separative auditus media, where here uh, Samudra Fena uh, Sona is used, uh, used as Karana Purana uh, and uh, for uh, ear discharge and pain. And uh, a 74 year old uh, woman with complaints of recurrent ear discharge and pain. Uh, and she was treated uh, with the Samadhar Fena Chuna. And the result of the study indicated that Chuna is active in purity uh, uh, discharge. The next drug is Ravala, that is pollen. So these are the physical properties that should be read uh, color like cereal fruit and rounding shape without any irregular surface and heavy in weight. And, uh, uh, purification process includes uh, it is purified uh, by titrating with the uh, amaranthus pinosus uh, juice for three hours and uh, these are the properties and karma includes it's, it is immunomodulatory and uh, it has the digestive capacity and uh, it is good for eye diseases etc. And uh, its important formulation include pravala uh, panchamrita uh, which is uh, indicated for bloating as well. methods and results. Uh, Yes, ma'am. Please go to the method, methodology and results. Oh, which ma'am, this research study. You have taken other research study in this way. Yes, I just reviewed it, ma'am. No, you cannot present like this, no? You, if you want to show, you have, there is a format for writing the research articles. You need to write in that form and you have to say. You cannot just take the screenshot and present like this, ma'am. Mm, sorry. You have given a limited time, right? If you keep on doing like this, the time limit will go, right? I am interested what you have done, not what others done. And you are going to present what you have done, right? To 
if you have done a review, you have to collect and then you have to tell in your opinion. Yes, ma'am, I have uh, reviewed the Samhita's uh, extracts. Yeah, yeah. So what is your conclusion? Please go to the conclusion. Yes. Uh, so uh, these are the therapeutic uses of Marantras, which explained in Ayurveda Samhita. So in Charaka Samhita, it is explained that the Shangha is in uh, bleeding disorders and uh, another is external application of powder of shanka and travala. That scoral is used in uh, blister, uh, skin blisters and travala basna is mentioned in treatment of uh, UTI. And uh, in Susruta Samhita, uh, Leba Yoga is mentioned for boom and uh, Haridala basna and shanka churnam is used. Uh, and for uh, ear pain, uh, the samudal fena is uh, indicated to apply on cheeks and uh, Intake of Shukti Basmam along with milk is indicated in treatment of SRTs. And in Ashtanga Sangra, also the uh, water in which Vaiduria Shanga, etc., and the Amadi Simos, it is uh, indicated to take an acid trick uh, for relief bleeding. And uh, other uh, herbal drugs are uh, uh, Shanga with Dairika, and in combination with other herbal drugs are used as infusion and decoction, uh, is uh, used to stop bleeding and other uh, burning sensation, etc. So uh, these are the, some of the uh, diseases and uh, drugs indicated uh, by uh, Ayurveda Samhitas, in Ayurveda Samhitas. So if for uh, piles, uh, Shanka Basma with Kajinara, uh, that is Bohemia Verigata, and Marshala is used, and for uh, vomiting Shanka Basma with uh, uh, turmeric and Punga is used, and for skin diseases, uh, Samudra, Fena and Shanka for Scraping is used and for Shiloroga Lepana with the uh, Shanga and Chantana is uh, uh, indicated. So, this uh, marine drugs, uh, which are rich in calcium salts, helps in acid neutralization and thus uh, helps in bone uh, remineralization. So, it is highly effective in combating hyperacidity, dyspepsia, and osteoporosis. And uh, the scope and recent ad ad advancement in this. Uh, the chemistry of marine natural product is a relatively new area of potential resource to chemists and the pharmacologists for discovering new therapeutic drugs. So, uh, it, and uh, uh, systematic research during last four years has led to the isolation and identification of several new bioactive compounds of potential therapeutic use. So, uh, brown algae is used for uh, and, and the HIV. It is just found it found that uh, it is uh, as potential in use for anti-HIV virus and the Indian red algae uh, is used in uh, virus, uh, viral diseases, etc. So uh, coming to the limitations of marine drugs, uh, the, some of the limitations of challenges include the availability of sufficient amount of organism and compounds. And uh, uh, we should be care to, should not harm the marine environment by collecting the uh, marine uh, organism and the correct taxonomic determination, determination for further process and drug development is uh, important and uh, for uh, proper screening procedures are there. So moving to the conclusion, uh, marine drugs offers a huge potential in the medical field and mainly used as calcium supplements in current medical practice. So it is uh, astonishing that Ayurveda Ajarya had the knowledge beyond that and however clinical evaluation is to be done and scientific approach is needed in order to transfer innovative discoveries and traditional medicine to active clinical therapeutics. So, uh, thank you. Can you name few bioactive compounds from marine source? Yes, sir. Can you name few bioactive compounds from marine source? Uh, Ma'am, it's from brown algae uh, that uh, egg Cycle uh, titrin is uh, extracted, uh, and it has found that it has it is have uh, action in and the HIV virus. Okay. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Now, our last presentation of our day, poster presentation by Neha Vinayak Mule, 
from Dr. Vishwanath Karad, MIT World Peace University, India, on topic of nicotine-free healthy tobacco. Neha, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I am present for the students. Hello, can you, is my screen visible? Yeah, your screen is visible. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Neha Vinayak Mai from second year B Farm uh, School of Pharmacy, MIT World Peace University. I, along with my colleagues, Ritika Parveshi, Purva Bhatt, Eva Karni, under the guidance of our professor, Professor Dr. Satish Pulsutiva, head of pharmaceutics department, uh, School of Pharmacy at MIT WPU. We are here to present our idea on the nicotine-free healthy tobacco. Well, before I start or during my start, I would like to present a few figures about the current, current statistical data provided by WHO. And it goes on to say that tobacco kills more than 8 million people each year. 7 million of them are direct users, 1.2 million are indirect users exposed to secondhand smoke. Exposed to secondhand smoke meaning they are the passive consumers. Then in, in 2020, 22% of the global population used tobacco. That means 36.7% of all men around the world and 7.8% of world's women consume tobacco and if tobacco is harmful to the health it is also leading to the death 8 million people are killed every year it is not a small figure it's a huge huge number and to control this to control the epidemic according to WHO, the tobacco epidemic they have uh, launched a tobacco control strategy, which is by the mnemonic of Empower. The Empower tobacco control strategy has uh, six, six pillars. M stands for monitor tobacco use and prevention, of prevention policies. So by monitoring, they mean uh, how, where it is cultivated, how it is used, uh, in what forms it is used, in, uh, in what forms it is used, when, and by whom, what age of people are consuming tobaccos and the prevention policies. That stands for the end. P stands for the protect people from the tobacco and smoke. So there are people around, uh, there are people, there are people in the age of uh, around after the 20 to 30 years, 30 to uh, 40 years. And these people are very, very prone to tobacco use. And there are multiple reasons, but such people need to be protected from the tobacco and the smoke. O stands for offer help to quit tobacco use. Then W stands for warn about the dangers of tobacco, spreading awareness, etc. E stands for enforce bans on tobacco advertising, promotion and sponsorship. R stands for raise taxes on tobacco and smoking uh, and smoke and the entire tobacco range products. Now, we here want to offer help to quit tobacco use. Well, let's move on. Uh, then the fact is that tobacco consumption and smoking is addictive more than heroin and cocaine because 
there are certain ingredients in tobacco which gives you certain stimulating hits in into your brain and that is why it is addictive second thing it makes your clothes hair and breath smell bad if i have to tell one of my personal uh, experiences is that the other day i was attending one session few people walked in and i could smell smoke and i could smell tobacco it was not only harmful for their health but it was uncomfortable for me as well so this is another fact uh, then the third fact is it turns your teeth and fingers yellow it increases the risk of stroke and heart attack it increases the risk of developing diabetes and is the most common cause of lung and throat and mouth cancer now what are the reasons why do people consume smoke uh, why do people consume tobacco young people are attracted to the image the image of me consuming tobacco products looks good in the society it it is it, it looks cool according to many people then for men, uh, many of the consumers their family and friends consume it that's why they also start consuming it without taking uh, without considering its harmful effects they start the consumption of tobacco just because they feel better then what are the consumption effects of the tobacco first of it's a multidimensional problem why i am saying it's a multidimensional problem because it affects you mentally it affects you physically it affects you socially it it also affects the environment it's a multidimensional problem now it is also the main culprit behind oral cancer if i if i will also present the statistical data from uh, nih government website it goes on to say that 180000 patients were found in southeast asia within a year or every year they are found and 90% of the cases are related to the tobacco consumption it the oral cancer cases uh, 90% of them are related to tobacco consumption then consumption effects also has a maximum health damage worldwide it is one of the major cause uh, etiological factors of cardiovascular diseases and it causes many more diseases and side effects well this is a depiction of uh, different body parts and different uh, different body parts the tobacco and the tobacco use affects uh here we can see liver we can also see voice box it also has parts of git it all uh, the uh, tobacco consumption has effects on your stomach as well there are cases where ulcerations have been found and moving on do you know what are in cigarettes over 4000 chemicals 60 of which are carcinogenic just imagine if i am consuming tobacco on daily basis this is the amount of chemicals that i will be ingesting every day into my body obviously this will lead to cancer chronic use of tobacco consumption chronic use of tobacco products will will cause cancer in the long run it will be cool it will be nice it will be uh, it will be happy kind of a thing when you are using it in the first stages but in the long run yes it will cause cancer and there are enough studies that prove this now consequences of tobacco uh, and tobacco smoking these are all the, on the left side these are all the toxic chemicals that are present in the tobacco which many of which are carcinogenic then the dangerous effects of uh, tobacco consumption is heart diseases lung cancer throat cancer bladder cancer emphysema stomach cancer stroke etc but what's the solution there is a hope now it will be possible and very easy due to the herbal vida 
herbal vida is the nicotine fr free healthy substitute for tobacco products and free from cancer causing chemical uh, chemicals now how is the invention different from already patented products in the market Men the main objective of this study is to is to formulate a product which has same tasting uh, which has same ta taste and chewing material like tobacco so the materials which we have used are betel white leaf green chili black tea dried lemon gum gum acacia basil leaves sugar and salts lime flavoring agents etc and worldwide there is no healthy substitute which can also serve the acceptable taste as substitute to tobacco thus the proposed intervention aims at providing healthy herbal based material which can be adopted as a substitute in almost all tobacco based products the ingredients which we have used in our formulation are also used in ayurveda they have health benefits and the the chemical reports and analysis state that our product does not have nicotine content in it and is completely safe for use now comparison between a cigarette or the tobacco products available in the market and our products uh, samartha vida on the left side there are some parameters uh, so the marketed tobacco products are made from tobacco plant leaves our product is made from herbal ingredients used in ayurveda and and which are commonly which are commonly used in other products the role of the government in uh, cigarette and other tobacco products demotes the tobacco tobacco cultivation and use and um, our samartha vida and uh, samartha vida product need to promote as new hope to shift cigarette users to a healthy cancer free substitute a healthy and cancer free substitute the ingredients of the reg regular marketed products of uh, tobacco are not known for medical uses except for toothache the majority of ingredients which we have used are known for medical uses for example natural nickel for anti diarrhea and anti blood disease nicotine in raw tobacco is harmful and higher 30 to 55% our product does not have nicotine in it then uh, acetaldehyde is a known ca carcinogen it is present in the marketed product in our product it is completely absent all the analysis reports of our product state that there is no presence of acetaldehyde arsenic formaldehyde benzopyrillium are also present in higher amounts in the marketed tobacco products in our product they are in the limited safe value now we have formed a case study uh, we have uh, actually conducted a case study so on the right this is our product and uh, the case study was done with 500 people and hmm. the case study was conducted on 500 tobacco consuming individuals in any form and shape these individuals are about 20 years of age and were considered for the study these individuals were given the product samartha vida for consumption for 6 months 400 of part participants of this study successfully quit tobacco our product has 80% of the success rate and uh, mostly the success rate comes from the patient compliance and its health benefits the ingredients which we have used also have many of the health benefits that is the reason why the product is successful and it has helped these 400 individuals now specialty of samartha vida and its products herbal tobacco can easily replace two existing dangerous tobacco products then 
it is nicotine free 100 percent protection from cancer then it is a legal food product uh, we have the licenses of from the food administration and uh, the fda of maharashtra then samartha vidya are the substitute they work, they can work as a substitute for psychological withdrawal symptoms of the tobacco after you start quitting tobacco patient usually has uh, withdrawal symptoms they are in different uh, forms i'll come to that but our product also helps in uh, helping with the psychological symptoms then one of the ingredients not the ingredients but the natural nickel from the herbal tobacco works as a medicine for healthy bones dysentery and blood disease now why herbal vida well nicotex is a famous pretty famous brand or a pretty famous product you will be tobacco free after the 6 months use of it you will spend approximately 18000 rupees you will pay for this but the thing is it still contains nicotine after 6 months you quit nico- nicotex and you will still have the urges you will still have the urge to consume tobacco in case of our product herbal vida it does not contain nicotine but it 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 ha it has a very very similar taste to the tobacco that is why it will help you with your will power and it will help you with your cravings as well and in a matter of month you will you will need a maximum one box of samartha herbal and you will be totally be giving up on your addiction now this is one statistical report that we have accumulated and uh, the tobacco product use among high school students well the rates are pretty high here in young age population if a youth starts consuming these products create an and tobacco products in any shape or form we have cigarettes we have cigars e cigars then pipet uh, pipe tobacco hookah and other products any other tobacco products be it the direct consumption of products if us if our youth is consuming such products it is really harmful for the society as i said before it's a multi dimensional problem it will affect you mentally it will affect you physically it will affect you socially it will affect you in uh, it will af- also affect the environment so we we needed a substitute and this is the product we have formulated for this problem well as i said before there are uh, common withdrawal symptoms of uh, uh, tobacco or nicotine so you have the nicotine cravings irritability difficulty concentrating sleep problems anxiety and restlessness appetite and weight gain and one of the major is depression and these nicotine withdrawal symptoms our product will help you with that as well since many of the ingredients have health benefits we claim that it will help with all the withdrawal symptoms now nicotine free tobacco here on the left side there is an actual picture of tobacco and on the right side we have our product samartha vida you can see it has very similar appearance it also has a similar taste and as from the case study which we have shared earlier uh, yes 400 individuals have benefited from this product also one a uh, more thing that i would like to mention here is that the anti cancer properties of the this product are uh, is under the studies regarding the anti cancer properties are underway soon will there will be an update on it and uh, thank you for listening any questions i can say excellent nothing yes. replacing one am i audible hello yes ma'am you are audible yeah so excellent Uh, herbal vida uh, this thing you got any indian patent yes sir now i can see that really it is beneficial to the human being you are working on the replacement 
as well as you are also combating the side effects you are also giving the activities which might cause if they have already taken the drugs and already addicted so it is an excellent invention great very good yes ma'am we aim to towards the nasha mukti but the thing is we want to do it in a healthy way we don't want the pro- like the products available in the market they still have nicotine in it the chemical yeah. reports of this product does not contain it so that is why this product is effective and it's wonderful we will work towards it yeah yeah very good but you are using multi herbs right yes we are using many herbs yes so they are not uh, not having any antagonistic effect uh ma'am antagonistic effects they are all herbal and uh, these are spices mostly so if they are used in uh, to get, if they are used together there are very high chances they won't be there the i mean the ideas won't be there but yes we will work uh, yeah some uh, we some will, kind of we will work on this yeah, I, it is a suggestion uh, maybe on maybe on long term it might affect so that has to be if all are having synergistic effect it's a very good so that other thing also we have to see very good really great thank you thank you uh, any more question Can you stop my screen share? Yeah, sure, please. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Neha. So, for today, I would like to conclude our session. So thank, thank you so much, ma'am. Wonderful. Thank you. So now I would like to conclude our session by a word of thanks on behalf of Association of Pharmaceutical Research (APR) and D.Y. Patel University, Dimitrovi University School of Pharmacy, Navi Mumbai. I would like to express my gratitude to all the speakers for their presence and contribution to making this conference a more informative and interesting session. APR and DY Patel Dimit to be University School of Pharmacy Navi Mumbai extends our sincere gratitude to our speakers and participants to take our time from the busy schedules to grace the event looking forward to meeting you all tomorrow at 9 am and even the regarding certificates will be announced on tomorrow thank you thank you all for joining the session thank you thank you ma'am thank you